That's input and right output here. maxed out <sighs> my mic. Well, I'll do that. I'm going to just alter some of the decibel ranges on the thing. I'm going to pull it to 10 if I can. Oh, hey, the stream started. Hello, people. 75%. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I keep forgetting to do the pre-session luck roll. And maybe it's better you guys roll from here on out. Oh no! <laughs> no. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, better than that one. Oh, that's way too low. No, 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 no! Bring it up! Bring it up! Bring it back! Bring it back! Uh, Why the fuck is it always automatically going with some weird thing? I'm gonna bring you guys to. Because cool. you set up that explosion shit for like the fate stuff, and I don't think you yeah, ever but... took it off. Here's the thing: I have taken it off. Every time I log into Roll20, it sets it back. It's not something I am doing. I don't know. Weird. Is there like a save options thing that no, you didn't No, there is not. There is just the dice roller that's on your left side bar. I'm gonna pull you guys down there. Where you have your uh, draw oh, shape draw. thing. That's yeah. where the dice roller is. <laughs> this is my <laughs> character. Mr. Snuggums doesn't need hands. Ha! You fooled. Artificer cat. Oof. America, is everything okay? No. No. Temperature 76, 86, 936. <laughs> Sounds about <laughs> right. <laughs> and those are three, three consecutive days. Yep, we are literally on fire right now. Well, like a quarter of the country is, yeah. And the other quarter of the country is listening to Donald Trump, so... At least half your country uh, needs to um, evacuate. No, he was being legit. Like, there's he a legit, did. like, on fire. Have, like, I know. Yeah. The smoke is over my house. It, it, the smoke has definitely not gone that far. Yes, it has. It the has. Californian wildfires yeah, are reaching traveled. halfway across Europe. Yeah. Good. You guys needed some smoke. No, we can't. Fuck you. Trying to reduce pollution, I, not create. I, I already have Fuck enough you, this is America, you air is ours. We'll pollute it if we fucking want. We own all the air. We'll pollute it if we fucking do. I think you'll find the Brits a... owned most of it back in the 40s. And then to imagine we're, we're you America. got to this planet is ours. <laughs> Earth has been renamed to America. America. Then to imagine all those fires could have been prevented if stupid gender reveal parties didn't involve fireworks. Yeah, during the driest during period the... of the year. It's, it's like, oof. Mm. Mm. Here's the thing, California is a very cool state, probably a nice place to live in, but Not right now. shit like that happens. Right now it's pretty much a hot state. Not very cool at all. Oh yeah, I'm fairly sure my cousin is on fire right now. Well, I hope you didn't like him in that case. Oh <laughs> uh, no, the sad, part, the sad part is he's my favorite, so oh. he's screwed. Send him a bucket of water. <laughs> Just Amazon him a bottle of water. Heard you're on fire here, hope it helps. <laughs> <laughs> The messed up part is, I'm actually considering doing that now. <laughs> I would legitimately do that. The less I like someone, the more likely it happens. Here's the thing. I guess that's the difference between you and me, Jeeves. You see, I give my best effort to people who I do like. If I hate you, I'm gonna pretend you don't exist. There. Who, who are you? It's too late to hate us now, Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, it's, never, it's never too late to hate somebody. It's never too late, but, you know. 
No, Flan, there are no nat 20 bears yet. You go away with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, uh, this session is gonna be uh, something other than bears. No worries. It's gonna be fish. Dude, it's gonna be another fish that almost one-shots <laughs> two of us. <laughs> yep, it'll be exciting to see which creature knocks out Yoshi this week. I just say, it's been a rough time for a cat man. Na 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 na. I mean, he does it to himself, let's be real. Yeah. No, it's fucking Moo's tables always making me get chased by shit. Ah, uh, blame it on Moo. I'm hoping That's one day you doing. just get chased by werewolves. It's already just... happened. That was campaign two, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Granted, we all got chased by werewolves back then, so. I just ran off. Safe day. I, I, I was the one that instigated the werewolves in campaign 2 because I uh, cut the prince's finger off. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> Still have oh, a reset your part. camera so it works with roll 20. Yep, that was a great way to start the next arc, though. Hey, he wasn't giving me the information I wanted. I felt that I'd play with him a little, stab him a bit. I found Atlas' ship, by the way. Well, it's... Well, it's the same... Oh, well, it's different After kind of... After it's got the flying yeah. upgrade. Yeah, that's definitely with uh, Daron enhancements. Uh-huh. With as many times as our sails were, like, set fire to, yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> 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 yeah, just saying. I believe we might have had the only flying ship taken down by some dickhead with a bow. Uh, canonically, one... Saval's still not been found. Yeah. <laughs> this time will come. Uh, so, whose turn is it to roll weather today? And now, the I'll, weather. I'll do it. I, no, no you won't. Yes. It's Rook's turn. I had it last it's week, sir. So. I rolled the foggy weather. You sure you want me to roll again? Yeah. Foggy okay. weather wasn't rain. You say that now. Oh, I'm rolling a nat 20. That could be a bear. That could be the bear. Great. The bear it's is... still on. I'll see you next uh, week. Yo, why not? <laughs> Alright, All right, Moo. Hey, wait, uh... You are... Wait, if I'm... I'm on a different spot on here. Uh, you guys are there, which is... 20, 40, 60, 80... 100, 120, 110 miles away. Uh, so that determines a certain aspect. Uh, I need a D6 and a D4, please. D6, D4. Okay. Uh, two, right. Uh huh. And another D4, please. It's rain again. Right. That means I need to update. Uh... Any chance we'll ever just get sunshine? No. Rook, did you just roll a forest fire for us? Uh, oh, you wish. I need to go and update Bucket's weather report now. <laughs> so it's not uh, uh, rain or fog. Dude, I hate that roll 20 keeps turning Moose fucking camera. I know, right? It's got something I mean, I can it. see Moose camera right now. You can't see it. I, I can't see, see it for like a minute. And then yeah, Moose wearing really a connect. black shirt and his... Um... It's actually not a black shirt. It's a... Oh, it's a hoodie, okay. Yeah, it's not. It's more like a. I don't know. It's more like a. I, I don't know what this is. It's just very loose and long and toasty, and it's freezing in here. It, it's a, yeah, like Moose wearing like a, just a gray shirt, a. Let's just call it a jacket. Black yeah, jacket. So much, yeah. And a. Um, and his hair kind of uh, curls off in the front. Makes him kind of look like. um. A hipster, really. Uh, I haven't tied my hair back today, so <laughs> I could I could maximize it. 
Crap. J just wait until I incoming. move to Warning. a new house and activate my coming. camera. <laughs> Kenny's gonna hate me. <laughs> eh, that's yeah, fine. Yoshi, if you show up with a man bun, I'm gonna fucking shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make you look like a fucking neo-Nazi hipster. <laughs> Bring it on, motherfucker. <laughs> Although, you're gonna shave his head in a form of swastika? Damn right. He's oh, gonna cute. have a man bun on, I'll replace it. <laughs> oh my god. Good luck. Phew, that was close. Almost had to socialize. I think I've made my, <laughs> my magnum opus of this. This is... so dumb. I need mean, to make these like dumber and dumber every single time. What's the weirdest news report that will ever happen in this campaign? It's already happened. Oh, it's it's going to get turned into a demon. That was about the weirdest you could have got. <laughs> it's only when Bucket speaks. It it's it's the uh the, the, the communication still isn't quite I've figured out what to do in your Thania. It can't get from the red area across the Kagara quite properly. <laughs> so Jesus, I had, to, I had to close oh. his Twitch stream to make it so his camera would work on old money. Uh, and in that case, for some reason, the bitrate you're drawing is too much. Which, you know, your network provider shouldn't have any issues with that. Oh, my internet's fine. It's yeah. it's only roll twenty that this kind of shit ever happens with. Oh, it went away again. Well, open up the the Twitch again. What I'll do is I'll reconnect the camera if it makes it any easier. Oh, yeah. hold up! I found I found the big bad evil guy on Pinterest. <laughs> there you go. Oh, boy. Good lord. <laughs> eat a face. Throw something. On a successful eat a face, that Florida man oh, grapples the Those stats, though. 17, 17, 17, 1, 1, 18. Yeah. Yeah. All right. the, the charisma is tremor sense. It's <laughs> If we're being realistic the about it, you gotta drop that charisma down to about six. No, I think it's more for the basis of intimidation. <laughs> Chaos Incarnate. He rolls for the wild magic people. No, no, no. It's how Florida man thinks his charisma is. Not how the rest of the world thinks it is. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's... If, if, throw something. If no object or person is within reach, Florida man will separate a small alligator for from its biomass and throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! Yeah. Oh, I, told you. No. I found the big bad evil guy. You didn't kill the alligator, did you? <laughs> Remember that? I, see that. I, I can see that working. Like, just have like Florida man followed by like two alligator henchmen. Just uh, and he just as a legendary action on his turn picks up an alligator and chucks it at you. Yay! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something a joke exotic could say. It's not been replaced to paint him a jaw from laughing. <laughs> I've had really bad jaw pain, so if I can't do a specific NPC voice today, that's probably the reason. Or I've just tortured my voice after Bucket, which I should probably get some sort of beverage to uh, resist the pain, but I, I still have time. I can, I can do that. Well, you're a camera now, Moose, so, you know. I'm just gonna walk away sassily. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll be back in like two minutes. I'm gonna go grab a beverage. Because I was spending so much time setting up 55 goddamn tokens. Shit. Uh, guys, can we turn around and go the other way? 
No, we have a person to find. Yeah, yeah might be five tokens is bad news. Well, that depends. If they're all rock tokens, then when I see it, that means I have infinite ammo. Yeah, but all these rock tokens are mimics. Then I have even better you ammo. To, you need to roll. You need to roll a one d hundred to see if the mimic uh, becomes a mimic in your hand or after you fired it. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. Weaponizing mimics is the way to go as an adventure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, why do you think I made Doge and take that piece of armor? Then why did you never use it? Well, I had to gain their trust first by feeding them. And I wanted to use it on that uh, one demon dragon thing, but fucking Jeeves killed it before I got the chance to. No, 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 no. That wasn't Jeeves. Rook or was, was the one that was it you? No, it was Rook. I was with you. <laughs> Me and you were all in on that plan, but Rook. Oh, me. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Rook. <laughs> Even told Rook not to kill it, and he still, like a shit kid, killed it. Because <laughs> it perfectly lined up, like, coming straight down on its head. I was like, hey, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> I remember <laughs> now. <laughs> One time we needed him to just not fucking do anything. He was like, no, I just oh, yeah. damage. Why would I not? I stole so many kills last campaign. I think this this uh, sentence makes sense in this campaign. People think I'm crazy when I talk to my cat. But what am I supposed to do? Just ignore him when he asks me a question? Related. If you fucking tell me what an abstract thought is. No. <laughs> no, not this shit again. <laughs> Dude, all campaign, all fucking campaign. I hope you're ready. Uh, what an integral. One so, day there will be oh, someone who after, right, so, <laughs> after a couple of sessions, Lucius is just gonna go mute. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna create like an item of power that will give him infinite knowledge of every word, like a living thesaurus. <laughs> Say, <I'll take> <laughs> no, 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 only attunable by Lu Lucius. <laughs> Shook in the river. I stand shooketh. He doesn't. He doesn't know that's what the item does. Would be even better. He just seems to know bigger words. Mm -hmm. uh, so we yeah, yeah I'm keeping game. track of uh, what of the new words, even though Yoshi vandalizes them. But I would never. You can't see my face, you know, it's lucky you can't see me, otherwise you'd be seeing my middle finger right now. <laughs> How dare you try to put blame on the rogue. Still waiting for a rogue to show me some of that thermal ferocity that he's got. I'll fucking show you thermal ferocity. <laughs> 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 Booger! Gas fireball! Oh, that would be perfect. Moo, get me some flaming gauntlets. You just name it thermal ferocity. <laughs> Yes. I mean, I there are items in Kagara that are basically wrist straps that go on fire. They are somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't Thermal protect you from the fire, though. They just start burning you. <laughs> oh, they're like the um, God of War chain sort of situation, so they will stick to your skin, but they do catch fire. They are pretty cool. They don't do a lot of damage, but it's still a lot. Just break you to that Spartan rage. Oh wait, I'm a pugilist. I don't actually have rage. Never mind. Oh, okay, I could be, I could be just a dick and then multi-class into barbarian. Well, become a I bonk. Do that. Yeah, sure. Become a bonk. Pugilist, barbarian, just like. If you can't blind them with your brilliance, baffle them with your bullshit. I'm saying because like that's totally. Hey, because that's an option for me. I totally could just like multi-class barbarian, just have you know. Rage and tons of punches. I do I mean, have. I won't because that's cheesy as hell. I mean, but I could. I I can create a very great bit of RP that could spark that. But yeah. You know you want Spitz to be a pugilist slash totem. 
No. 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 That, yeah. It's like, we want a harder campaign. I'm a bear totem barbarian. Ah, uh, yes, my and nemesis. Psychic damage only. <laughs> yeah. Let's make this one. Here's a kicker. Pugilists at higher levels gain resistance to psychic damage. I know, and that's annoyance. <laughs> I know. You're saying for, for sake of a challenging campaign, and so Moo doesn't, you know, jump the shark. Because here's the thing: we get too, we go too high. Moo jumps the shark. He somersaults over that shark. <laughs> I somersault that shark, put a saddle on, and ride it into the sunset. That's what I do. Here's what's gonna happen. We... After that shark does a I... horrible that clean. I go Tonal Barbarian Pugilist and start punching everything with the power of rage and high proficiency bonus. Oh. Here's what's gonna happen. Moo will literally create monsters that don't give a crap about damage resistance, or they'll do like a thousand points per swing anyway. I oh, I'll bring Tovati back if you want. I'll bring Tovati back. <laughs> I. I do not want to become the um, doctrine of our campaign. See, that's the problem, though, is Moo wouldn't have to bring back something that strong to deal with a bear totem pugilist. All he'd have to do is have us fight shades and then permanently nuke down your stats. Because you can be resistant to any type of damage, but you can't be resistant to a shade hitting you and then minusing your strength by four. Well, too bad that's <laughs> the wrong edition for that. No, it's not. They're in five edition. Yeah, they, they drain life. Your hit points, yeah. not All your the, stats. There's the ones that drain stats too. They're just not shades. They're like I, or something. What, I'm telling uh, you, the, 5e has them. Well, have those creatures. I, I did just the Shadow Man with different abilities so the thing that was chasing lucius would have hurt his stats as well as his hp <laughs> so yeah tit for tat in all of that uh, yeah plus once i have enough levels i in fact can punch ghosts yeah well that was six or seven something like that yeah moxie field fist level six basically you can now do damage to things that are normally resistant to, um, you know, non magical non damage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, literally, I could just I could punch ghosts. Once I get to yeah. level 6, I could punch ghosts. Uh, and I can literally kill somebody, wait for them to die, grab their souls, and then punch them again. Ghost, hey, ghost, ghost. Where does uh, where does Henry's parents keep their money stash? Not gonna keep tell you. In a bank? Not gonna tell you. Tell me. <clears throat> no, I'm not gonna tell yeah. you. No. Henry would know you, motherfucker. Now tell me. I wouldn't tell you where the secret stash is. I'll tell you where some of it is. Tell me where the secret stash that the kids know about is. Oh, that. Oh well, it's in the pantry, of course, in the cookie jar. Not the no candy. One... I want to know the money. Yeah, it's in the cookie jar. Is it? Yes. But no one's allowed in the cookie jar. Because there's something in that cookie jar alongside the money. Mimic. It's drugs. That's fine. I just want to know where Henry should... I mean, obviously she's going to keep sending money back if I keep sending money to them. So mm -hmm. next time I'm at the place, I'm just going to sneak money into You could just room. open a bank account in their name. <laughs> yeah, but they'd never use it. I have to force them to take the money without them realizing it, or else they'd just never use it. Mm. They're stubborn parents. Yeah, speaking of the parents, I have something fun on this update today. <laughs> Don't kill off my fucking parents. I'm not gonna kill them off in a recap, are you fucking I like serious? Meadows, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, something bad will happen to them. It's inevitable. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I don't want to make you watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make you watch. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, no, she's not the only one getting. It's it's shoot. just it's just you know. You you yeah. basically sign a contract when you hand me your backstory, and at some point it says execute order sixty six on important people. <laughs> yep, it'll execute happen order sixty six. <laughs> you just think Spitz has parents? 
but he's still mad at them. So I've already, I've already put Spitz's parents somewhere in the world, and there's going to be a oh. potentially interesting interaction that could happen. Oh no! Oh yeah, I take everyone's backstory into consideration. <laughs> Every oh, single one of you. Has no friends or family. There is nobody you can use against him. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, oh, I've gone around Says the lab the and made friends with all these people. <laughs> Says the guy <laughs> who's literally part of your backstory is you have this weird shade motherfucker that just appears in your room from time to time. He's not. He's a. a the fuck's the word? He's a acquaintance. He's a compatriot. Uh huh. And he's just creepy enough as a business compatriot <laughs> that if the rest of the party saw him show look, up, like he look, does for you, sometimes he you attacked. need somebody a little <clears throat> shady to get shit done. It's great because Crow will only appear when everyone else is asleep and make sure they stay asleep by using a spell and then going to Lucius. So That's none of you will ever. Man. None of you will ever see Crow unless they want to be seen. Which is that's, never. That's actually ideal. Except <laughs> for the one time that he's going to show up and put everybody to sleep when me and Spitz are guarding you motherfuckers. And everybody's <laughs> already sleeping and we're out in the middle of the woods. And then your buddy's going to get us killed. Then you just see that horrible, creepy... Jack o' lantern smiles like, yeah, no, we're gonna kill that thing. That thing's scary. <laughs> and then just hits dust. Something bumps in the night. It's Yoshi. <laughs> well, to be honest, to be honest, Yoshi always has a a penchant for having really strange acquaintances for his characters like a blood yeah, god you gave me the idea you gave me dagger moors uh a, an uh a connection to whatever so it became crow i gave you options yoshi you picked a creepy guy of course All you right, picked the look, creepy guy you gave me like two or three options i gave you like right, four options done. i gave you like you a noble the, you want to <laughs> know the real <laughs> truth in all our campaigns in every campaign we've done, including this one now, the only person that has ever had something from their backstory fuck with the rest of the group is Yoshi. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else's backstory stays hey. their fucking backstory or they deal with it themselves. Hey, Yoshi, th that is let not... me bring a blood god into the world that that's is gonna not erase your memories. You... Let me bring a you... dog that eats fucking human souls and bring him to the fucking dinner table. Oh, Dagra Mars? Yoshi, yeah, Dagra's still around, man. Fucking Jesus, dude. <laughs> you guys might end up encountering Dagra Mars at some point in this campaign, because... They like to Fuck show no. up. They like to no, show up. He's on the other side of the world. You keep him. He's a demon. He can show up wherever the fuck he care. wants. Fuck him Dagra and the Wiseman. Oh, Dagro's Wiseman? <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to now consume. Just splits the face open. And... <laughs> I prefer when he only made tea. That's Baliel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Baliel's the only demon in this whole fucking game I like, I think. Baliel I doesn't even look like a like demon, it just looks like... Races. Yeah. Baliel is like basically just a big goat. With bipedal goat, essentially. Kind yeah, of. He's fucking dope. Yeah, he, he creepy. It looks like Baphomet. That's how creepy he is. All hail Baphomet. All hail the Hypnotoad. All hail Bahamut. I'm keeping an eye on my frog. <laughs> All hail Bahama Mama. We're going to the Bahamas? Bahama Mama. <laughs> Bahama Mama Bubblegum. Oh, shit. Right, it is now can time. We, can we not go to the Bahamas until we are absolutely certain that the corona is done? No. I mean, I do need a lot of beers to go to a hot country, so... Yeah. Nah, dumb joke. Don't worry. Ugh. So, how's that weather looking like? Well, I shall begin. So, we run basically on 8% of our, like, comedy are dumb jokes. I know. So, don't go get smart on us now. <sighs> so, are we ready to begin? Let's do it. Okay. Start the recap. 
looked my notes up, so... Time for anchor, it seems. So... I'm here, reporting on the roads of Mitris, and continuing to track the migration of the Anir refugees. I'm here with renowned beekeepers, the Meadows. Can you tell me what you've seen? How do you get in our home? Well, to be as I've been spotted, I can hear the sounds of nails being driven through some form of sandal by the other meadow. I'm now running away from the property. Gabe, we've got a runner! Back you in the studio, Bucket! What's the weather like? The monsters! They're burning in the mist! Run! <laughs> Thank you for that, Bucket. And as always, stay classy, Gagar. Found you, you creepy bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. smart demonic screeching from buckets. <laughs> All right, so Yoshi, you did get the same thing as I did. I yeah. I, Not only did we get demon bucket, but we also got like partially demon anchor man. <laughs> and to top it all off. I don't know. Literally the cherry on top, and you couldn't have even planned this move. Yeah, it just your happened. Camera. No, your camera. The moment that she was like. Ah, I fucking found you, you creepy bastard. Your camera cut off. <laughs> 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 <I was> like... <laughs> like a like an angel's kiss. Perfect timing. <laughs> Too bad it didn't happen for the rest. It was perfect, dude. God damn. Well, I... Me and Yoshi get the best version of Angel Man every time. It's like that's a story in itself. It's not really a recap. It's just something dumb that I wanted to put in. Cause so I was like, yeah, what are the meadows doing, and what would a normal person to react to from a guy just appearing out of nowhere <laughs> just <laughs> Fear well, the slip up. I got you you dirty bastard <laughs> so, just the, the most grotesque fucking sandal with nails through it <laughs> when cat puts the nail through the slipper you know there's trouble <laughs> that's why you don't fuck with mama meadow <laughs> mama meadow Mama! Fuck off! Get the chancla! <laughs> These are my chanclas! So, uh, as a proper recap, you guys had made your way deeper into the Mithril Forest and encountered a few dangerous obstacles in the road and one particularly exhausting encounter of a fish. Your trauma from the bear slowly but surely recovering as you're bandaged up and continue your way further north towards Vatha, encountering some spirit-like entities. And now you've met one last spirit. As we mentioned to you before, the spirit of Boomer, one of the other familiars of Finnegus, who has given you a small task to go find someone that they can bind to in order to return to their original master. This person, apparently ten miles up the road, smelling of death, continues on the path that you are currently on. But you're now at a crossroads of either going past Samakdun or going further north through the forests. Fish OP, please nerf. No. <laughs> so, you guys are literally on a... I do have the map up. Is that weird? It was the weather is because uh, Bucket never really explains it properly. It is dense mist. It is a hot, sticky day, and it's for chance going to rain heavily at night. God damn it! It's always raining. Yeah, you're in the middle of winter, pretty much. Wait, what? If it's middle of winter, why is it hot, hot and what? sticky? Because your town has weird weather. Like, global warming is a thing. Dude, this is Washington. <laughs> this isn't your town. This is Washington State, <laughs> United States of America. I've been here and it sucks. Funny, I was meant to go to America this year in November to go to New York just for a couple of days. <laughs> And then it was like, oh, I guess that's not happening now. Oh, Amsterdam's not happening either? Great. Let's go to Cyprus next year. <laughs> Cyprus Hill? No, like, yeah, just the, the country. Cyprus as well until you've read up on uh, what Turkey and Greece and Italy, France, and Egypt are doing in that region. Yeah. It ain't fun. 
No. I was like, where, what part of Cyprus are we going to? Oh, the Turkish wrong one. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to move my ass over to the map. Boop. So. Chief, did you think on it? Because it's your decision. At yep. The end of the day. You either got yeah, to go but... this way. Oh, you're gonna go straight down this way. Man, you wouldn't think I have a degree in architecture, would you? <laughs> I still support the idea of going through the woods like originally planned. Or I, I did indeed way. think of it. Um, um, going straight may actually be the quicker way, so that whatever danger is in the road, uh, it has fewer options to encounter. Yeah, the Woody. Of course, if the cat leads us astray, then we'll just have to neuter him. The cat doesn't lead. The cat only ever s walks behind the cart or sits on the cart until I throw water at him. <laughs> Thank you, point. Still, if the cat leads us astray, <clears throat> just um, you'll never know cart. until we, until we're lost. Such if decisions. If the cat leads us astray, we failed the moment that we let the cat lead. You failed letting the cat into the party. That's, that's you that's made a... the cat. We didn't have a choice. <laughs> the fuck do you mean? I mean, we did have a choice. We could just uh, tell him to get the fuck off. I mean, that would have been super. And he'd have his own mini campaign within the campaign, and just separated from all the other players. I Endless think... chase scenes with a ball of yarn or something like that. <laughs> How long is a piece of string? Well, the rogue's gonna find out. <laughs> I cast suggestion play with the yarn ball. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Yoshi Rook, what are your thoughts on possible path? Uh I I don't want to go on either one of those paths. <laughs> <laughs> Well, going to Samagdun is going through hilly areas, so yeah, which I haven't set up maps for yet, so I'll get on that, uh, depending on which direction you want to go. I mean, Basically, I wanna... the direction question is, do you want to keep going through the woods, or do you want to cut off to the right, where it's no woods, and then go up around from there? I mean, I, I just want to find the dude. <laughs> if you want to find the dude, you want to find with me, I'm going through the woods. Rook, where are you at? Oh, I mean... Oh, well, Spitz doesn't really care that much which direction we go as long as we're going somewhere. And so when in doubt, he'll side with um, Henry. Yep. Henry. Right it is, then. Quickest route to uh, civilization. Now, another question. What time of day is it, and are we going to long rest soon? Because I still have one hit point from the fish. Oh, you mean short rest. Because um, long resting will literally take a week. Or yeah, short rest. Short rest does take Never a day, I believe. I can't exactly remember how long a short rest is. I know a long rest is a week. A short rest it can be as little as one hour or as long as eight. Essentially, as long as it's not like more than 24 hours, we can like short rest. Yeah, it's up to you guys. <clears throat> Whatever you want to do. I mean, I need to short rest. I don't know what time of day is it? <sighs> Last I recall, it was about mid afternoon, so about 3 p.m. <clears throat> yeah, we can continue a couple more hours before we make <clears throat> a long rest. A uh, short rest. All right. <laughs> we, we can continue until nightfall, right? Just before nightfall. Makes sense. We don't run into anything hostile. You it's might. That's the hope of every adventurer. Where's yeah, your but sense every adventure? Advent you know, it went away with the other 99% of my health. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to pull up my uh, random encounters table, actually, so I'm going to do that right now. 
And in Henry fashion, <laughs> even with one HP, I'm leading the fucking charge, boys. So don't worry. I'll take at least one hit. No, there is no at least one hit. You're taking a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Only because the cat's too weak. I mean, cat has more armor than I do. Yeah, but, but he's still weaker than you. That's do because I? I'm the only one. I'm the only one in the party that has no armor. Yeah. Everyone has higher their armor than me. My AC is 11. Dude. Oh, well, I, I was looking to buy a shield. No. If we had a way to heat up metal enough, uh, to the point that we can melt it, I could probably make you a shield. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know, because I know you specialize in weapons, so I didn't even bother asking. Particularly sharp shield. Listen, if you use it right, a shield is a weapon, okay? I want a shield that's meant to be a shield. There, there is an NPC who uses a shield as a weapon. I'm not gonna lie. Is it called the Juggernaut? No, uh, uh, he's known as the Giant. He's a dwarf. Does he dual wield shields like a fucking Chad or? Is he no, no, he, he's got a big tower shield that's normal sized pretty much to him, and a long halberd, and that is it. I want you to like add somebody that. in the world that do wield shields. Yeah, giants. Wield tower shields. Yeah. Dreadnought giants. <laughs> Dude, to a dreadnought giant is two tower shields just like uh, brute knuckle weapons to them? To, to tower shields to the dreadnought fire giants. They're like the size of like castle doors to you guys. They're huge. Yeah. And they're spiked as well, so they just... They just Dark Souls you with the two doors and... They approve. Excellent. Bing bong! <laughs> the pizza man has cometh. <laughs> oh, Froga is on the move. Where's Bailey going? Sorry, I got distracted by a frog. <laughs> yeah. I really have noticed. <laughs> Bailey's cool, man. Extra sticky. I don't ever need to make sticky notes again. I just stick a bit of paper to Bailey. Bailey, launch it. Blay. Frog. Yes, Flan. I own a frog now. <laughs> he dinky. They dinky. I don't know. I'm, I'm... I don't let the snakes out. Oh no, I'll never let the, the, the snakes out. I'm terrified. Bouncy. Bo bouncy. I'm not males. So, are you guys heading to go find this individual? Yep, we're getting the woody. <laughs> okay, get on the woody. Alright. That's like yesterday. Right. Let's say here. I'm actually going to make a copy of the. Alright, so I'm going to go pull you guys over here. Right to left. Yep. A cha. What cha? Hiya. Yeah. Uh, spicy food was not a good idea. If you had more water, it wouldn't be an issue. No plenty. Cheers. Snakes aren't cuddly, they're nightmare fuel. <laughs> they used to be chill and then they start striking at me. I think it's just me. I give up such a threatening presence. Snakes <laughs> are adorable. No. That's one of my teachers in high school had one. And I held it and it started going up my arm and wanted to go under my shirt. Yeah. Because it's nice and warm up there. The other one doesn't want to do that. But what constrictors are scary. I don't like them. Uh, so. 
you head through the woods in search of the dude. In search of the guy. You're looking for uh, the Lebowski. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I need a survival check to identify any tracks in the road. Actually, you'll be at disadvantage because it's foggy as shit. Who's our survival boy? I don't know. It's me because I have pies <clears> and <throat> two. Yeah, All we right. need someone to specialize in this. Yeah. <clears throat> Lucius, <clears throat> make it happen. Go to road. Right, Pat. Come on, I'm already, I'm already proficient in much other shit. I don't need more. Take the skill, become the master. <laughs> Seven. You watch your cat eyes you're, see. you're feeling around and you're like, oh man, I found it. And then you just accidentally just go Ploop, like that into the mud and just fuck the entire track. Like, uh... right? Yeah, there, there's nothing, no tracks that I've done for finding as late. Really? I see one. The track of a cat's ass that just stood up out of mud. <laughs> With the amount of fog that's going on here, that I have to get down low to see anything. Can't even see you five feet away from me. Just uh, kind of close to Henry and squint. Well, uh, oh. while you two are getting all uh, up close and personal, should we keep our eyes open? Last <laughs> time we saw tracks, well, the bear done near killed both of y'all. I true, Spitz, true. Stop trying to kiss me, a fucking cat. I'll push you away. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah. of perception checks, can we make them if we want? Because I would like to make a perception check. What are you trying to perceive? Sound, taste, touch? Uh, literally any other living beings within a sight range. In sight range, make a perception check at disadvantage. Okay. All right. Okay, I was terrible. Uh, no. I want to see if I can hear anything. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you are not disadvantaged to hear things. <clears throat> oh, there's that. See if I can hear like you know, feet in the grass, breaking of twigs. Sure. Yeah, it's a two. Damn, it's so dark. I can't hear. <laughs> you gotta turn that down. I can't see. <laughs> So yeah, you guys, are, you're like squinting into the fog. You see like maybe like two feet in front of you. And you're like, nah. And you're listening. You just hear like the trees bristling a little bit. Light looks clear yeah. enough to me. Uh, well. <laughs> let's keep going. I'll just pull the cart along. Is this the one that didn't see the bear incoming last from yesterday? Hey, that bear had high ground advantage, okay? Aye, I did see him coming before he came up and ate me. You saw him when he was right behind you. Still saw him? Sorry, I'm looking for uh, tokens. Uh, <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll move the cart with my character. Sure, no worries. Walk it off. Because I can just move them at the same time. Yep. I don't know if I got the right token for these uh, potential creatures that might be your next encounter, so I might have to just improvise. Ducks. Nah, I found it. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. Damn it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, you're traveling along, blind. I'm assuming you just follow the path. If we can see the path, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the intent. Looks like it. You continue on this way. Where the bear is. I know, it's the same map as last time. <laughs> The bear attacked us again already. Fuck, dude. Uh, bear's on the map layer, so I'm gonna get rid of it. There we go. No problem. The Still cart's not you. there, by the way. Ignore the cart. 
All I have for these now. Timer like still on. There's right two now. carts in this map. The one on the ground. The yeah, cars the map the cart. Timer's still there, though. Yeah, I know the timer's still there. And no matter how many times I try to get rid of it, it just comes back. Hold up. <clears throat> Look, I can move it. I know. And I try and get rid of it. I deleted it. I'm that good. Right. So this is perfect. You deleted it by pushing delete on my keyboard? So. I deleted it by pushing delete on my keyboard. Someone give me. An encounter check, please. It is a D10. Alright, cat. You didn't get to do weather, so... Well, Spitz rolled <laughs> it for you. No, uh, I'm not taking that nat one. Give it to I me. need another D10, please. This will be good. Seven. Okay. See, Yoshi, if As you used the dice roller that came with the game, you'd be quicker. <clears throat> As you're... Actually, I would because I have a thumb track ball. Oh. God, no! Can I just be a normal person it's, with a mouse like that with a little scroll ball? Thing. It's hover over and click. You don't need a trackball to do that. So I don't use that shit either, though. So fuck it. So, as you're walking through the dense fog, you start to hear twigs breaking and the trees rustling a little bit more. Through the fog, you start to see a couple of silhouettes appearing. Bring thin silhouettes approaching. Skeletons. Oh, no. Uh, who wants to make the perception check? I will. Sure. I'll make a perception check. Sight uh, or sound based, or both? Uh, it is sight based because you can hear them. It's very audible, so it is a disadvantage. Right. One more Yoshi. <laughs> Okay. Back at a 15. Alright. Out of all of you, the one that's pulling the cart seems to stop and brace against his weapon as he starts to see a little bit more closely the figures that are approaching. These strange, gnarled figures of creatures made what appear to be of twigs approaching. And I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick sound sing uh, signal to Henry and Spitz so we see people. Sure. Uh, These are not that big. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. Druids. Hey. Uh, anyone that's out there? What you wanting? Announce yourselves. You hear nothing back. In that case, uh, let's remain quiet and see if they just pass by. Oh, no, apparently a uh, cart is a creature. They have their own cart, dude. <laughs> They're just <laughs> traders. Let's you pass by. Seven, so boop, boop, boop. Six, seven. Oh, uh, no. And I'm just going to move a few of them here. A few over here. Uh, one here. And uh, move one over here. Where the cart does not exist. Uh, adjusting how the I envision them approaching, like <laughs> the hills have eyes mode. It's a stick up. Do <laughs> any of us have any natural knowledge without making a roll on what these things are? Uh, only if you're a proficient in uh, Arcana or Nature would you know. <laughs> any proficient boys in Arcana or Nature? You're asking the wrong people. <laughs> and the only person that can really see what they are is Coronar, who I don't believe is a proficient in either of those skills. All you just see is these... T they almost move like their body popping, sort of like that jitter. And you just hear snap <laughs> as they move. Over the list. <laughs> oh, look at that twig band! <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing the Mr. Roboto. Um, but yeah, I would not understand. Sure. They just or understand what the fuck they are. So, you know, yeah, I'm holding up my weapon and I'm braced against the cart. Sure. They're... They can do to move forward. 
Alright, mm -hmm. Gornar, uh, what you be wanting here? Probably I'd be out of here, but... Alright, so do you if want to If we see an opening, we both... No? It kind of, you know, it if would they let us be, let surrounded. Them... If they let us be, let them be. But if they become threatening, then we take them out. Let's <coughs> keep moving closer and closer. They're closing in on us. They are closing in on you. Alright, make a hole. Mm -hmm. Alright, and then I'll blast this guy with All right. blast. Alright, before that, roll initiative. You are. Oh, the oh. nat one, baby. Ooh. Good thing I took the action that initiated it all. Hmm. Still get to act. Alright. We One's are up. Oh. To the right, right? Yeah. Alright, so. Eighteen, four, eight, ten, twelve, ten, a uh, natural twenty one. Okay. It's a twig right. blade's turn. And it's well, going to. On. Here's the Eldritch Blast that mm -hmm. kicked off initiative. All right, that Three hits. To hit the boy in the road. Yep. Six damage. You just <laughs> and it splinters off a part of its body, and it's just almost like a crescent body part at this point. But it's holding on. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's a Twig Blight's turn. These are very fun twig bites that I have adapted for ranged combat too. I swear, if we die because this will be our adapted monsters. So. Oh, they're they're just as weak as they normally are. It's going to move within ten feet of Lucius, and it just reaches out its hand, and you see these almost bark-like tendrils shoot out into spikes, and it's going to make an attack roll against. Uh, I keep rolling F because I moved my fucking keyboard. Uh, a six to hit. That's mess. It just, it just, it goes next to your face. That's its turn. Twig blight number 18. And uh, seeing Henry moves a little closer, detecting the pain of its comrade. And just sort of blindly fires these splintering bolts out from its body. You just hear <laughs> things, but it's firing at disadvantage. Yeah. Should I have fired that Eldritch Blast at disadvantage? Is he far enough away that the mist would cause me? You would. You know, should have caused disadvantage, but I'll let it slide. Okay. Just this uh, once. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Cause I didn't think about the weather. It, it misses you completely. The, you just hear darts flying past your head, Henry. Just... <laughs> but that's its turn. Uh, actually, it's going to move a little bit closer. Oh, Fire yeah. fucking splinters at me. Spitz, you're up. You see these figures moving through the mist, and you bolt up, and you just see their almost wooden visage. And they look angry for some reason. Uh, Pace are always angry. Spitz will run up. It'll yeah. give it a real reason to be angry. With a fist to the face. That's a that's a fourteen. Fourteen. You just hit and you just <laughs> clobber it straight in its right. wooden face. It takes four, four points of blood. Oh my god! Why don't you roll once on these d sixes? Okay. <laughs> and you break. You see the the yeah. wood splintering across its face and its. Jittering a little bit, but it's held together still. And then you just finish yeah. off with a, the old one to hit it clean into the sternum and just almost like full on Kali Mai. Just 
and it just crumples into twigs. And one is down. Nice. Okay. This is the rim of a silly. I say we get a move on now, quickly. And, uh, we'll step up. Oh yeah, they don't roll this disadvantage on the mist. Oh shit. I didn't see that bit. Uh, uh fuck it. They wreck on that. You move up and you just see this twiggy face that almost reminds you of a very particular friend. Just... And you're like, ah. <laughs> I got that idea from. Add it Fuck you. Let's see. Normal roll. What are you attacking with? A uh, claw. Your claw? You know. <laughs> Come at it. And you just. <laughs> and you just scrape. Clean across it, and it's you've dug surprisingly deep. The wood sort of rotted, and you just peel through it like thick dirt, almost. But it's still holding on. It doesn't look happy with you at all. You got a bonus action. You got a bonus action to use. Uh, no. Not until next <laughs> level. He doesn't. <laughs> and next level is a few sessions away. <laughs> By a few, I mean quite a lot. Is it? Nobody else is within range, so I can't do sneak attack either. Yeah. Oh, you should have gone for a sneak attack. Yeah. You got for this guy, you got sneak attack. Cause I was there. The twig blight, you can hear it behind you, Spitz, and you just hear and then as it's going to use its uh, branch attack against you. Which, uh, it doesn't get disadvantage because I didn't read their fucking stat block properly. Uh, a six, so you just and it just barely passes your head. You feel it almost scrape against your ear. And then, <laughs> but that is, yeah, it's gonna move up a little bit. I'm gonna move to here. It's range coronar. I get a type of opportunity. It's it's out with five feet. It was in ten feet. Okay. All right. I heard sound coming from up uh, above me. Yeah, you can hear sound around you. Up. Yeah, I'm gonna move up here. Yeah, you grab my great club and swing and miss. As you swing in, you go whoop, and the shadow that you see almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't. I didn't untack the disc. Yeah, I know. As you... Yeah, no, I was reading it. As you run into the mist and swing down at the the misty silhouette as it warps the. Club comes down and parts the mist parcel. You just see the head of the creature crunch down as you strike it. It is still held together, but it looks like it's cracked all the way down. All the bits of bark are falling off its face. It's oh wait, uh, that's right. You have um, you have the two-handed fighting style, um, right? Um, uh, uh, yep. We roll that. Ooh, we roll yeah, the damage. We roll the two. So six total damage instead six of six total oh, damage instead of no, no. Six plus three nine, is nine total damage. My bad. Oh, so that that's a great of a great uh, fighter yeah. from the warrior abilities. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, there is a, a Mac like a code to make it re-roll ones and twos. Yeah, yeah, I need to search that one. And I can find it for you. One of them. There, so it's nine damage instead of four plus. So uh, I'm done. Well, as you, I'll make a rephrase. As you run through the mist and the mist parts through your club, you hit the blight on the head perfectly, and it crumples all the way through. As you, the club was clean through it, it smashes into the ground as you kill it in one hit. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling up the macro what do you think? for Wood your. What doesn't like blunt. What's your um? What's the weapon damage? A D... D8? D8. Uh, let me just two seconds. It's a macro builder for this or something. Uh, no, I can give you it right now. It's the roll with R uh, less than 2. And the, it's pretty much that. That macro there. 
Yeah. Uh, right. R O less than two. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Light number ten. Roll one. Now they become aware of their armor's deaths. Roll one. Just without reach, but it knows which way to go. You're th mm, thirty feet, so it's fine. So it's gonna boo, and then it's gonna branch attacks. You hear the <laughs> as these tendrils shoot out towards you. Plus three. A twelve to hit. Uh twelve misses. Yeah, so you just as your club hits the ground, you hear the twigs passing in the back of your head, and you feel the hair being tugged at by twigs and then retracting as the tendrils rip back into the mist. Uh twig light number four. Four. So let's see who is within range. And it only detects the nearest death. So uh two of you guys. The nearest death is my, uh, my Yeah, I know, but it's like within a radius, <laughs> which is the trouble. So I'm gonna roll a D two. One is Henry, because he's the closest, and then two is Coronar. Come on one. One. Yes. So it gets Real close and personal with Henry, assuming that he's the culprit that killed its ally, and it's going to try. Uh, it grows these almost long wooden stake like claws and just swings down at yourself. Bring it, you fucking bitch. Uh, 20. He hits. Do I have to roll damage or you just go down? Uh, Henry. If, uh, how, what's your maximum possible damage with that guy? Five. Then no, you don't have to roll damage. Okay. The minimum would be two. I was just asking because the only reason you would have to roll damage at that point is if he could hit me for 14 points of damage. He could outright instant kill me. Nah, I, I wasn't going to send that sort of level out for you today. <laughs> That's a news. So they're just... <laughs> And you just feel the, the claws go across as your vision just sinks back and you back you go. And that's the twig light's turn. Henry, death saving throw, please. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 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 <laughs> Yep, because he had some death saves from last time. Oh yeah, oh, he is dead. Is he should have destiny points left. He does. He has fate points, actually. Oh, yeah, my fate, fate points. points. You have fate points, yeah. You can choose to so, use that instead and re-roll it. Well, no. He just stabilizes and miraculously survives. Okay. So, so you're just as unconscious you, dying. Yeah, so I'll describe it in a, a specific way. You feel the claw grind across your face as your consciousness lapses back and you collapse to the ground. And you feel your life... Is draining from you, and you just hear the sound of your mother's voice shouting at you as you were a child. You hear the clap of the slipper against your ass cheek, and it drives you. It spurs you on a little bit, and you can smell the honey in the air, and you just drive yourself from the brink of the queen's grip just that little bit longer so you can send her that little bit of money, and you stabilize. You're unconscious, so roll a d4. By all intents and purposes, he looks dead as fuck. Okay, you're unconscious for an hour. So that is it. By all times, everyone thinks you're died, pretty much, if they see you. Now, you're fucked I up. I have a follow-up question. Yeah. When a fate point is used, does that reset my death saves? While it doesn't say so specifically, I think I it's argue that it should. Uh, by my ruling, I'm going to say yes. You're getting basically anime protag moods. So yeah, it will fully reset your death. Well, I will say, if you're going to use it for death saves, use it when you're going to die. Because that's the only purpose I would do uh, that for. Twig light number 21. Lucius is right next to you. It's still mad at you. It's going to hit you. Try to hit you. Anyway. Why? I couldn't do anything. And it just <laughs> goes to drive in its long, spiky fingers. Uh, 13 to hit. That's a mess. Okay, it just 
You just sort of duck your way out and just feel it almost grinding across your clothes are already tattered and d dirty and worn from dipping your face into mud. Someone can eat? I move my to the uh, general combat area because I'm not like in it. I, I guess I could move what? myself back. Moo, do you plan on attacking me? No. Twig blights don't consider you a threat if you're considered dead. Uh, yeah, I yeeted myself off the battlefield to make no it worries. easier. No worries. Twig Blight, number 18, and sensing a combat scenario and some of those smells that they're making. It's going to go for Lucius. He's going to come around here. Uh, yeah, Twig Blights communicate with each other through smell, would you believe? Well, in my lore, anyway. It's gonna use its tendril attack with a 15 to hit. Fuck, that's a hit. <laughs> and you're like, you duck out of the way of the claws, and then you just get side swiped by some tendrils that just sort of pierce across your body. Uh, it's not a lot of damage. Three points, uh, four points of piercing damage. Well, I'm down. No, you're not. <laughs> you're you're slightly bleeding. Like, oh, cat! You can fall unconscious if you want. Like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Alas, I have been slain. Wow. I would allow it if you're like a bard. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have fallen. Spit your eye. Like, uh, he's more like a real cat than the guy was. Yeah, I can't <laughs> quite like me. get to Henry yet. But could this just help? Oh yeah, like I'm. Um, oh, oh, because a... I'm near Henry. You would know that. Yeah. I guess I'll trust you to get him, and I'll help out Licorice instead. Mm -hmm. Alright, so one fist for the wounded um, Twig Blight. Sure. Uh, 24 hits, you just see it, and you go <laughs> leaping over Lucius's still wounding bodies that tendrils wrap across, and you just <laughs> flying punch it into splintering twigs. <laughs> and now where's the other one? It's still got its tendrils out. And you're just coming in for the second punch. Bonus action punch. You sucker into the side for five points five of bludgeoning damage. damage. It's holding on. You've cracked its twig cage. I don't know. Twig. I don't know. It in vanilla lore they look like humanoids, so I'll assume they look skeletal. So they got bone like twiggy cages. So yeah. Because I can't roll, like, above a 2 for my damage dice. Yeah, it's balancing out the fact you're going to tap twice. <laughs> it's like, ah, he's level 1. Got to balance him out a little bit. So he punches the shit out of some sticky boys. These are literally stick men. With a vengeance. Lucius. You've just been... You've just <laughs> felt the hand of Spitz pressed down and you being speared in the side just hear crunch. Crunch. You just turn, you can see the Spitz is landing that blow into the creature's side, and you turn, see the tendrils still sprouting from your body. You got a clear line of attack, pretty much. With sneak attack. Jeez. So now I was within five feet. Well, you don't, because you're not hidden. You attack normally. Fuck you. I still get advantage. <laughs> You and then just almost go for the grundle shot and go straight through. Uh, you kill it by slicing it almost like perfect sushi. You break it into pieces. So then, let's see, that is five. It's dead, dude! Punch your thunder. No, going for movement. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You did fucking like 13 points of damage. It's dead. It's 15 points of damage. It's dead. You're gonna kill two in one hit. <laughs> they don't have much HP. Sadly, I only get one attack. <laughs> oh, I wonder why. Oh, no. So, they've detected two deaths in the vicinity. So, we have to be within 10 feet of the last death, which is here technically. So, they still have a radius that includes Lucius. <laughs> So it's gonna move its ass up here, and it just goes whoop, 
and then f- fires its darts towards Lucius because he's within range. Uh, rolling the dice, rolling the dice, seven. It's me. And, it, and you just as you duck away past Spit, you just hear. And you're like, fuck. And that is its turn, Coronar. You have twig lights in a triangle around you. Yeah, I just heard one coming near me. Yeah, you you heard it pretty it. damn close. You heard it. So I hit the first one through the head. I'm going to see if I can hit the shoulders with this one. Sure. You. So hit the shoulders. <laughs> you crumble this thing. Just... And shoulders. Next one is knees and the other one is toes. <laughs> This thing just splinters under the weight. You just hear the poof of the great club smashing down on the ground. All right. So I know there's another one coming up behind me. You can hear them. Move. You can see their silhouettes moving. Yeah. I'm going to move closer to it. Okay. And you move closer to it. It sees you. Smell the, the it's almost scent that's lingering on you. And it just tries to attack you. It comes in with its sticky claw hands. For a 19 to hit. Uh, just barely. Just barely? There's five points of damage. I rolled a d20 for some fucking reason. It's still within its limit. Wow. It's, Ouch. it's still within its uh, limit. Yeah. That's its max damage, pretty much. <laughs> I'm hit! But that is its turn. That was Twiggy Blight, number four. Four, and the last one that died was here. Spitz is within range, and so does Coronar. I'm gonna roll D3 because it will use a ranged attack. So one will go from Spitz and it'll work its way towards Coronar. It goes to Spitz. Okay. So it's gonna move. Yeah. We're doing our jobs. This way. And then it's yeah. gonna shoot its tendrils out towards that direction. I don't know why I just don't type upwards. It makes my life easier. An eight to hit. Just bounces off my rock hard abs. Yeah, you hear the sound of the and you just almost somersault back flip over it. Pretty much. Just as meaty as you can. And, and land back where you are and the tendrils retract. I'm not hitting anything. Uh, now it's up to Spitz. Gonna give him the old one two. Twenty hits. Six points of damage. Yeah, and you punch it full, straight through, and rip out whatever keeps that thing standing as it goes down into crumpled pieces of firewood. And ooh, I got enough movement. Go over here. Bonus section. Mm-hmm. Punch. For five points. Yeah. It's still holding. Just, you just turn around, hear Coronar just... Ah! And then... <laughs> punch straight down. Lucius following the leash, seeing Spitz disappear into the fog. Running straight after him. And then just coming around with the claw, and then just... Hitting the fog. Coronar got the way. Coronar, you're up. Your allies are around you, and this one twiggy thing that looks broken as shit is still holding on. It's your good job to finish it off. I'm going to see if I can turn this into firewood. 14 just hits. All right. And it is crushed. It splinters all the way down and turns to nothing more than chips. The danger has passed. And there is no more threat. Hey, we Yay! Now we can finish some ships. Ah ha ha ha! Yep, Spitz is gonna check on Henry. Yeah, sure. From just looking at him, the, the range you can see, he looks dead. Oh, a common I'll sight. Uh, Spitz will um, start panicking, checking his pulse, sure. if he's breathing. Make a his hand, medicine to... check. Oh, a medicine check? Oh, boy. 
You really do like making me roll things I'm not good at. Well, you're like... baby. You're quite used to Henry looking like he's dead, so you just sort of tense the back of your hand under his nose, and you just feel like a... And you're like... Oh. He's just unconscious. Just smack him upside the head. He's up. bloody as shit. He's got, like, big claw marks down him. He's he's bruised as shit. Yeah. He's still yeah, alive. Spitz will, um, yeah, Spitz will pick up Henry and put him back in the cart. And you just... Stick him in the cart. Yeah, well, Henry will be fine, but perhaps we should, uh... Well, he points at the, um, twig creatures. Get us ourselves some firewood and, uh, call it an evening. Wait for him to get up. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly run up, uh, a nearby hill and just give a quick look around to so, see any more of those coming. So you run straight from where you are. Unknowing, because you're looking into mist. Stephen King would be proud of the horrors I will keep in this place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, th this is all flat land? No, it goes uphill. Like, that stream that goes north, up further, is a hill that comes to the a sort of clearing. The whole thing's a hill, though. Oh. It's well, not no, like... Yeah, I'm not I, going he, want, he thought this was the top. Oh, you're going, like, up yeah. that bit? Make a perception check at disadvantage, then. If you're using your sight, or you can use your sound, which is just straight rule. I need to use um, my, my mouth voice instead of my throat voice, which is usual. Hey. And you're like... And you just hear in the distance, you're like, <gasps> out. Well, it sounds like there might be more of those coming, so I suggest we get a move on now. All right, I'll get the cart. Y'all cover me. Let's get out of here. All right, sure. <clears throat> then you want the path? Yeah, we continue. Okay. Yeah. I shall take you to the next location, which is a clearing that has been cut down. So, it will be over this part, my allies. I don't have the cart copied for some fucking reason. Uh, I'm going to go copy this over. So, uh, it's a piece of cake. And then let's go. Boop, and then go. It's a piece of cart. Ha 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 ha! Hilarious! Eat that just a fucking peachy! See, and today I'm not making the buns. Just just want to tell you about that. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse in a Vate Kagara. <laughs> that was all what the Dungeon Master Diary was last time. Because I had watched the. The recording of me practicing <laughs> voices, and I was it's just that bit, it fucking stuck. It just stayed there. I want to make a Gara. <laughs> oh, it's just so fucking stupid. Right, so you come to this clearing, and it looks like the trees have been leveled by some sort of saw. And you see nothing beyond, but in the center, there's a weird orange glow in the mist sort of in the center in, in the middle orange glow or mist in the center mm -hmm. so look for the right token mm -hmm. well nothing for it approach the mist towards it yeah. Okay, you get closer and closer, and then the mist sort of parts around it almost, and it's just a campfire that's slowly burning out. Hmm. Anything special about the campfire? Yeah, it's a campfire. Just wood, sticks, some tinder. Not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing that someone is already camping here or was camping here well uh, actually spitz will look around if anything else like if anything else left behind like you know tent tools 
you know, food stuff that would indicate someone was camping here. Uh, make a perception check. A disadvantage because it's sight. Yeah. Moth to a flame. Yeah, it's just a, a delayed blast fireball. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's either we approach it or we spend the next 10 minutes arguing about it. So, I'm going to just put of action. I yeah. just thought Ten it was very apt. You look around and you see what appears to be the remnants of what was a full campsite. It just seems to have been one person. And you see like remnants of like what appear to be like uh, a wooden bowl that have been split and cracked. And there's a spoon that's sort of just sticking out of the ground. Uh, there's some padded grass that has flattened from being rested upon. And that's about it. Uh, can I make a check to see if I can possibly find out how long ago? That is survival. Ugh, there's that roll again. Yes. Because that's what survival uh, does. Hey! And you check the fire and you check like the ground around it, which is kind of sooty. And judging by it, maybe a couple hours old. Nothing more. So this person came slept for like maybe an hour or at for an hour and then just went didn't even bother to turn out the fires left you do see some footprints slightly leading away from the campfire they humanoid like boots they look like boot marks so a couple of theories firstly this may have been the person that we are looking for, for Boomer. Secondly, mm -hmm. there is potential that the reason that those th walking wood sticks were attacking us was because of this clearing here. Which might have also been why he, this person quickly packed up and left. Have you considered a third option? Is just someone else in this forest walking around? Unrelated. Could could also be an option. Entirely possible. Question is, do we want to set up camp here as well, or keep moving a bit further? It's best we'll like take a look around area. Mm -hmm. You see the trees that have been cut pristinely, a few jagged parts sticking out, some of the foliage still lingering. see a lot of birds flying down to the nest that have come with it. There's nesting and then just fluttering away. Uh, there's some sounds of almost chirruping, similar to that of a cricket, but kind of distant. Can I determine if this is a decent camp spot? Um, just make a man. Eh, I would say survival, but I don't know. What's a campsite check? Uh, well, it's typically survival. But yeah, I'll just say survival. It's based because it's a wisdom based thing. It's about the knowing, not. It's about the experience, I should say. All right. baby some stranger can stay here pretty soundly seems like a good campsite uh, I think this will <laughs> be a pretty good place to set up me it's already prepared for us plenty of place to sit there and uh, put our stuff uh, I'm not too fond of uh, the openness as we have problems we could begin ambushed but otherwise well I doubt we're going to find a much better spot than this round here. I'll do that. So I'll set it up with a bigger campfire for yourselves. And set down a few. You got two tents, right? Yeah. Tent. yeah. I'll set up some tents. If it'll let me. Nice tent over the stump. <laughs> I don't know. You gotta keep up somehow, right? Hmm, good point. Whoa. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, you guys cook usually, so I'll put a little camp, uh, little camp stove over here. Maybe a cooking spit. Uh, apparently not. So is it? That'll do. One fit for an entire man. I am a man with a big cop with a big engine with a penis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that YouTube creator is fucking class. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> oh, what the hell happened there? Okay. Yeah. Set up camp. I'm going to move the cart just a little bit further over here. In the time you've set up camp, uh, I'm assuming you're needing me to determine some things for you for determining the camp DC. Oh yeah, since normally we would roll that ourselves, but since someone already established this camp for us, more or less, mm -hmm. it would be appropriate for you to pick the DC for camp activities here. I will say about DC 12, given the, the mist. Uh, so that'll be it. Okay, I've breaking out the rules, and let's see what camp activities we can do today. Cook. I'm guessing I'll wake up by the time they get here. Yeah, by the time yeah. they've set up camp and that, you will have uh, woken up. Uh, you'll just sit in there, your face all bloody, and you feel just like your head pulsating. You just sit up in the cart, the straw that you've been laid down on, just dripping off. You just see the glowing campfire through the mist, and you see the silhouettes of your comrades just standing there. Oh, welcome back to land of living. I was worried about you. I thought I was fucking dead that time for sure. Uh, I'm glad you're alright. Aye, thank you. It looks like you guys got out of there fine. See uh, yeah, we, uh... Yeah, like fish... Uh, <coughs> yeah, like fish raised his hands, his knuckles are skinned. Yeah. Well, I ain't get hurt none. Well, more than I already am. But yeah, we're gonna take a breather now. Try to get our um, energy back up, martial our strength and all that. I I was hoping to take one earlier, but boss wanted to move on, so we moved on. I'm glad to have a time to rest now. Get back some of my strength. Well, good news is this campsite is was half prepared for us. I we got a we sharing it with somebody then or well, the previous owner already left uh, only a few hours ago. Yes bit shrugs. You think it might have been that guy that uh Boomer was talking about. That's what I'm assuming, hoping. Means we're on the right path then. Aye. Anything left to set up? Uh, yeah. yeah we're pretty much done. Uh, we saved some time not having to build a campfire. Yeah, we should be a fan for now. Just to uh, focus on uh, getting your thing back and uh, getting back to the groove of things. Because uh, that don't look good. And we got plenty of firewood from those things that attacked us. Speaking of which, how long are we staying here? What's the time of day, Mo? It's about 5 p.m. So nearing evening. Well, I doubt we're going to get much more progress uh, moving on now. Granted, all of us can see in the dark, which is always a benefit. But with all this mist around, we ain't going to be seeing much anyway. Yes, it was already a pain during the day. Yep, it'll be worse at night when you can't see not but like 60 feet out from you. Well, I hope tomorrow's weather's better than this. Been a right shit fucking day after day when it comes to weather around here. Yep.
Hey, we got a camp bro set up. Good time to help get a snack, get some water in you, and get and get some rest in. What? What are the camp activities we can do with them? Quite a we few can things. cook food, brew drinks, play music, tell a story, repair an item, craft an item, play a game, or relax in solitude. Also, if there's something you want to do else, you can ask the GM. Mm -hmm. Like in my oh. case, my case, um, Moo, mm -hmm. I want to, um, it's, I want to do a bit of training. Mm -hmm. You know, push ups, crunches. Before we start camp activities, who's standing on watch this time? Because they cannot do them. Yeah, that's true. Well, it was Corner last time, if I remember. Or is it Lucius last time? Yeah. time yet. yeah, it was Corner last time. I would volunteer, but I pretty much need to rest. Yes. Yeah, you need that rest. Well, look, being a little bit stopped from resting, but I stopped from doing every other one, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my plan was either cook or I could be lookout if needs be. My my plan was taking uh, create an item uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's the thing. Um, lookout typically requires a um, intelligence survival check, so I'll be rolling at a minus one. I got a zero for survival. Intelligence survival? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh wait, intelligence survival. I roll at a minus one as well. Never mind. I roll that at a zero. Yeah, I got a zero on that. So Catman. Na 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 Catman. <laughs> what the fuck's with all these net 20s? Beautiful. <laughs> so, Junior, look out. You are attentive as shit. You're like all heckled up. Like, you know, these fucking twig things better come out of here. I'm, I, I'm seeing a pattern up here. Whenever Rook rolls a 20, we need to make Yoshi roll because it's also going to be a 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Parasite. The Lucius is on watch. Mm -hmm. I like to take a bit of time to, you know, train a bit, push ups, mm -hmm. crunches, bit of shadow boxing, okay. clear mm -hmm. the mind, and reinforce the muscles. Okay, make a uh, con check. Okay, it's a straight check. Um, all right, straight check. See if this works out for me. <laughs> You're doing like two finger push ups, like <sighs> just shadow boxing into the mist. Like, I'll cut these twig people. <laughs> yeah, you get some damn good training, and by the end of it, you feel tired, but you feel almost energized, and some of the stresses of the day relieved a little bit more. Yeah, I'd take it inspiration. Yeah. Thank you. I'll let that be. Yoshi, you want to roll that next 20 or? I mean, there's nothing I can do. I'm already on lookout. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll be rolling. I want to um, use some of that string and rope that we purchased to make some snare traps for sure. small game. Sure. Uh, small game. I'll say make a sleight of hand check. All right. Uh, here we go. Well, yeah, you make some pretty decent, not the best snare traps in the world, but they are pretty useful. And they will come in handy when you're trying to hunt down some smaller game. You've got about uh, roll a d4. You made one. Hey, it's a start, right? It's a start. We have plenty of rope, so. Plenty of rope to do it. You've used about one more than what we had. You've used about five feet of rope to do it, so it's quite a long piece. I will adjust the sheet. Hmm? As soon as I rook, it. I have a question. What are the benefits of telling a story? 
Inspiration. Yeah. Perspiring. Is it yep. inspiration to who tells the story or who tells nope. the story? Nope. Success to your list. story is well told and inspires an ally. Choose a party member other than yourself or the lookout. That character gains a point of inspiration. So it'd be Coronar only because Spitz already has. Oh, I can't give it to Yoshi? No. That kind of. Well, he's not at the campsite. He's on lookout. Okay. Alright, I'm back. What happened? Uh, uh, Henry wants to tell I was a story. I wondering what the benefits of tell a story were, but I didn't realize I couldn't give an inspiration to the lookout, which kind of sucks. Tell a story, however, gives you an inspiration. Hey, no, nope. no, choose wait, one this. person. The story so well it inspires an ally. Choose an ally. Choose a part other than yourself or look on that character gains a point of inspiration. Yeah. So it's not part anyone else to be there. You just have to, you know, share it. Yeah, you can still By tell way, a story. And if it goes rules, you can hold up to three inspirations. So you might want to toss one to Coronar or keep it for yeah. Well, I can definitely give it to Coronar, but like the whole purpose of this was to. I was wondering because I thought it was a cool way to like start sharing shit about our characters. I mean, it doesn't stop you telling a story. It just means he doesn't get inspiration. That's it. Will other people at the site be able to hear it? Yes, we will. Yeah. The way the um, activities kind of work, so unless it specifically says that person is not cannot participate, you typically can. Like for example, if you cook the meal, well, anyone can eat it. You don't have to be there to spend your act cooking a meal to also give it to someone else. You just right. do one thing. It's not the most efficient thing, but <clears throat> I want to do it because. <clears throat> I want us to all learn about each other's characters. <coughs> so cool. Sure. Go ahead. And so, so Henry will sit down next to the fire uh -huh. or eating a ration or whatever, break it open a ration. Sure. He'll look around at the camp, see yeah. Coronar getting to work on creating an item, see uh, Lucius keeping a dedicated eye out. See Spitz off training. He'll chuckle to himself a little bit and then I'll look over to Spitz. I well, I guess uh, the rascals weren't wrong when they nicknamed me the Red Shield, were they? It's been getting my ass beat ever since we ever left in here. Well, yep, a kind of a shitty journey. Hey, you're doing fine, so hey, you're doing fine. Most of the other rascals be dead by now, I guarantee you. I did did well to hide behind me though. I suppose Coronar and Lucius neither of you spent long enough time in a near to ever hear it. But uh No, I don't think I know that story. A year or two after I joined the rascals they'd been on a few missions and every mission I always made it a point to keep whoever I was with safe so I always jumped in front of harm's way and got the shit kicked out of me, rightly so that's why Spitz probably isn't too used to seeing me look like I'm half dead or dead completely oh uh, yeah but I do get worried when you go down in part because the other rascals are kinda assholes so I didn't care if they popped it. For you, you're already something different. I uh, yeah, thank you for that. I always want to make sure that you're safe as well too, but you know, you're always fighting alongside of me. So it's not as easy. Yeah. But the way I see it, if you're gonna be this uh, group shield, feel like throw a few punches. I'll be the fist. As it's always been, I... Sounds like a plan. Speaking of red shield, I don't suppose... I know you, you specialize in weapons, but I don't suppose you'd be able to make a shield. I tried to buy one in the last town, but... There's, you know, kind of limited for armor and shields out here. Yep, all them soldier boys are buying all the good stuff. Of course, uh, 
I mean, I wouldn't know what to do with a shield if you gave me one. Well, I can make you a basic one, but uh, to make a metal one, I need to uh, make some uh, ingots turned to sheet metal, and that's going to take a lot more than we can do with the campfire. Hey, okay, okay, if we found some, have to wait. if we find some good wood, maybe I can make you a basic wooden shield. No, the wood around here is no good. Uh, have you seen what we just fought? I'm, I'm not sure, but the, they number uh, about equal to the amount of stumps I'm counting here. I I can wait. It's uh, it's not a matter for today, but. It's good to know that you know how to make one. It shouldn't be that easy. I'm just slamming some boards together, giving a handle. Oh, it's got to be it's, sturdy. It's it's more too. about making sure you have good wood, right? And I don't think this is going to be good wood. I I don't want any of those branchmen turned shields. Exactly. I guess it wasn't much of the story, but it was part of my backstory, and that was the point of it. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll choose Coronar to give an inspiration to it. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. I can't wait to see who uh, who shares part of their character next. Mm -hmm. If you guys decide to tell the story at the campfire. Oh, my backstory is coming after me. No worries. Mm -hmm. Slowly. You're all, you're in the wilderness, so it's kind of hard to track you. You don't say. Yeah. So. I will also be using my hit die to gain back and. Uh, and I need to look. Because I don't remember, I don't think I get lay on hands except for long rests. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so that's spent up. And this is short rest. Alright. All right. This is a short rest, I get second wind back, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. I don't have to spend the hit die to heal. However, I will actually spend the hit die because it makes more sense yep. to him. Hit die come back when you, um, Sleep without being disturbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which might happen. We don't know. But Lucius will. Eventually. Wait, so how do wounds and injuries heal again? AKA my concussion. Oh, that's, um, you're not to get penalties from it right now, but if you get critted, your wounds might open up again. There's a chance. They go away when you long rest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or you see a, like a cleric or something. He can patch you up. So. Uh, healing, sp uh, healing spells will cure injuries instantly. Mm -hmm. Too bad we don't have any of those. Nope. So, Lucius. As the night rolls on and you've ignored Henry's tale because you've disappeared into the mist, you start to see the mist slowly retracting back and you start to see the night sky and you just see over in the distance on the sky are these dark clouds approaching. And I would like you to roll me a d10, please. Okay. 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 So, nothing really bad seems to happen. And you keep a lookout as the mist has retracted slightly. So you do have more vision, but it's still slightly obscured. You see that the twig lights moving through the trees, hunting down something in the distance. You see all the animals rushing through the underbrush. Do other things moving in the shadows. You can't quite put your finger on. They don't seem to disturb you too much. And the night continues on as the clouds get closer and closer. Uh, is there one? 
tends to their sleep. You just hear, and you see the streak of lightning arcing through the clouds. Okay. Oh, that now doesn't it's... look like good weather coming. Nope. And it was Rook that rolled for it. And this is basically right when everybody's going to sleep, right? The people will be asleep for a couple of hours at least. Yeah, I'm still relatively far away, so... Mm -hmm. You can see the campsite. You do have that line of sight, but after that sort of point where the campfire is, you can barely see past that. Yeah, I'll probably just keep my position until the storm is about uh, like one, two hours away. Sure. Uh, make a make a survival check for that to see how well you can judge the time and distance of the storm. It's maybe maybe two hours away at most right now. And it's about eleven p.m. by the time it starts getting close. To that, and the th rumbling sounds of the thunder gets louder. The, <sighs> the lightning arcing. And you just see the almost like the blanket of rain that is falling beneath it, slowly making its way. Yeah, I'll head to one of the. Tense. Uh, yeah, the one the coroner is in. Sure. Hey, coroner, are you are you still awake? I'm gonna slightly shake him a bit. Actually, having been asleep, I wake up. What? 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 Uh, no, no cause for. <laughs> No cause for alarm yet, but there is a rather large storm coming in. Thunder and downpour of rain. Well, we're in the middle of nowhere. There are no buildings nearby. <coughs> what would you like us to do about it? I was just to give a heads up for the possibility that we, well... Yes, we might be getting a bit flooded, laying on the ground like this. Ah, uh, whatever. Need some sleep. It's gonna get wet. It's gonna get wet. Just thought I'd pass on that information. I'll head back out and go back to my post. Sure. I will turn around to go back to sleep. Sure. There's, just, just, uh, there's nothing I can do about this anyway. Uh. Alright. With that little vignette done. Okay, now we need to make our sleeping checks, which mm -hmm. is a constitution saving throw bouncing off the um, camp activity DC, which at the moment is 12. Mm -hmm. However, since we have tents and bed rolls, we roll with advantage. Mm -hmm. You succeed, you regain a hit die. Yep. Denied. Yes. Uh, hmm? Think I'm successful? Mm -hmm. yeah. Henry's just too tired. <laughs> He's like, uh... Man's just unconscious from being exhausted and lacking a significant amount of blood. I need my beauty sleep. Mm. Yep, and remember to clear one level of exhaustion if you have any. Mm. Is the 
Night draws on and comes out in the smaller hours of the morning. I'll assume Lucius goes to sleep before then, so you're not waiting until like midday to move. Yeah, he'll have gone to sleep at some point in the night, but he'll still be at his position. Sure, you just lie down, little bedroll lad. And as you're sleeping, Lucius, in your dream, you start to feel yourself moving through whatever memory that you've plucked out, perhaps the bear, or watching your friends chase a giant fish. But in your dream, you start to feel your legs getting really warm, almost like it's uncomfortable burning, like a sunburn. And it almost shakes you awake. And as you wake up, you look down, and the clothes on your leg are starting to disintegrate from acid rain that is coming right above you. And it's just making its way up. I quickly scramble. <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> and as you're running, the clouds just, <laughs> and more rain comes down. And you start to see pocket holes appearing in the tents. As soon as, it, as soon as I'm within hearing range, I'll yell, Wake up, wake up, wake up, There's, the rain is not regular rain, you will all melt now. The rain is on now. fire! Yeah, the spits will roll out. Like, half hazardly yeah. notice that, well, if stuff's burning... It's melting, that's all. What's going on out there? What's your cat run talking about? Yeah. Acidic rain, get up, otherwise you will die. Yep, supposed to just half my lead, pulling out the tent, dumping things in the cart. I don't suppose anybody made any coffee? <laughs> I don't think it's time for coffee. Rain's yeah, melting us like we're uh, like some witch from a fairy tale. Wrong, Spitz. There's always time for a good cup of coffee. Well, you can go ahead and have your coffee. I'm not staying here much longer. Yes. Yeah, we need to move. Okay. Um, I'll help uh, Spitz get everything situated so we can leave the fuck as fast as possible. I need every one of you to make a survival check to determine how fast you disassemble this. Because it is very important. Because of the cart, because acid damage does more damage to objects. God fucking damn it, mate. My, my, my anvil! Damn it, Spitz. <laughs> Even without coffee. It's, uh, sorry, it should be dexterity survival. Put that out. Ah. Oh, okay. Roll. So that 17 is instead an 18. Dex yeah, yeah, my dice roll remains the same. Right. Dex. Oh. Yeah, it's the same for me. Okay, yeah. so it's, for Lucius, it's... 18. 18. Plus 9, plus 18, plus 6. Take to the four, round it up, 13. Okay, so it takes you 13. 13 hours. <laughs> yeah, no. 13 hours. <laughs> We're fucked, boys. <laughs> we be corpses. <laughs> takes you approximately. I'm gonna roll time. So 13 is 1d10 plus 2. Takes you 8 minutes to disassemble everything. In that time, you all take 8 points of acid damage. What the? I mean, here, here's the thing though it's an acid rain. We can't outrun this. We're going to mm -hmm. take that damage regardless. Yeah. That is for the There's hour you nothing. take that damage. That's your total damage for the hour, pretty much. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. That's not too bad. So I got a question, Lou. Mm -hmm. After this hour is up and we've packed everything up, mm -hmm. can I look and see if the acid rain is burning through, like, the tree? Like, are the trees immune to the acid rain? Make a perception check. You're not at disadvantage anymore because the fog has moved back. 
So you can make a check. You just sort of look at the tree line and the blue mithril leaves, and the rain just sort of deflects off of it. And it's not affected. With that perception check, can I also have... Can I spot a tree that is big enough that we could move everything under it? Yeah, it's not far. You're just in a clearing. You could just move like 40 feet north and there's trees. That, But it looks like they're big enough that we could be under them. Yeah, it's a forest. Right. <laughs> You're in the forest. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big canopy. You can just hide underneath it. The time though. Right, it looks like the trees are uh, aren't affected, so let's get under them right fucking now. Are, I think we're eight minutes. The cart takes. I don't know if it's eight across the hour, but it won't take you an hour to get there. So, and if you move to the trees, so in eight minutes you will all take approximately. Uh, the hour, uh, uh, eight to the sixty, and point one to the ten. So you take one point of acid damage instead if you make your instead way to the trees. Eight. Yes, uh, the uh, cart, however, takes a little bit more damage than that. To the point where one of its wheels has gone a bit funny. So it's sitting at eight HP. It's a little bit funny. I didn't even fucking roll it's that. Time. This is like, hey, let's see what the weather's like. And the, the rain, it burns. Well, it looks like we're not going to get much traveling done today. You're dragging it through the rain. You, <laughs> you make your way into yeah. the tree line. And the rain just sort of pattering off. And you see it sizzling in the ground. But you're unaffected for the rest of the evening. Well, uh, I didn't know that, uh, well, rain could literally, like, turn to acid. And that's some shit. Yeah. I mean, acid rain is quite literal. Yeah, Puma did say that this forest was a very dangerous place. Alright, so, I, for one, vote that we no longer camp in clearings. I second that motion. <clears throat> Same so instead, I idea. want to camp under one of these big motherfucking trees. That sounds mighty fun to me. Mm -hmm. so the rest of the evening, you can rest for the remainder of your sleep and wake up relatively unscathed. The camps does this count hmm? as like a does this count as like another camping thing? No, it's let's just throw down your somewhat melted bed rolls and sleep under the trees. <clears throat> That's all it is. But at least you know no. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. You can we do anything about the cart? You can make a repair check, which would be uh, a smith tools check. I will definitely want to do that. Are you sure? Uh, strength based, right? Uh, yeah. Here we go. 17. You repair the wheel <laughs> enough that will get you a couple of days worth of travel before you have to fix it again. All right. At least two days. So you have two rests pretty much before you have to make another maintenance check. That's about it. Alright, Spitz, come over here. Help me build a fire. I need your help cooking something. It's been a right shit fucking morning. And I think we eat that big fucker that we caught the other day. We haven't had any breakfast yet, and there's no fucking coffee anywhere in most forests, so. Good to hear you've decided not to waste such a fish. I... I suppose... Didn't really matter either way, we got lots of rations. So I wanna cook this fish. Do 
with Spitz help if you need me. <laughs> For breakfast. Oh, what do you think the rooks later? Maybe muted. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Just had to refill my drink. Mm -hmm. Alright, I asked you if you want to help me cook the big fish, because it's been a right shit morning. Do you want to help? Yes, I will. Okay. Alright, what do I roll? Well, because uh, you've got no spices or anything, and you can't really make it fancy, it is a survival check. Or just a straight wisdom roll, whatever one you want to do. It's the same, so I guess I'll do survival. 17? Nine. Well, you just roast it over a somewhat makeshift campsite, as you see beyond where you were camping, that the campsite has melted straight through to the ground. And you're just cooking this on a one pole. Rotisserie? Yeah, pretty much. Slowly grilling it away, and then cut it up and serve it to everyone. Removing as many bones as you can. Yeah. Alright, breakfast ready. Come grab it while it's hot. Yeah. I'll get some. Uh, Spitz is not the greatest fan of fish, but it's fresh meat. How many servings do you eat each? Because there are eight per fish. Oh, there's four of us, so two each. Yourself? Yeah, we can do that. Sure. Yeah, my Zaz just knock out rations for the day, I guess. Okay. Uh, all of you roll 2d4 each. 2d4. Okay. Uh, that is your temporary HP you get from eating a great Iborian salmon. It's flaky meat, tender, almost sweet. Subtle at the same time. Does this nice. mean we are well fed? You are well fed. You have to bear in mind, one serving of Great Arborean Sun is as big as that. It's big. I can't see what you did, but I imagine it's a big, it, it big hand gesture. It's yeah. like T-bone sticks. Like, I could put my Next. glass against the side of my face. That's how big it is. It's big. Uh, did our sleep count as uninterrupted? Oh no, fuck, I failed the check, so I don't... Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. All but right. I do think that since you cooked the fish, would that count as preparing a meal? Yeah, in the morning, yeah. It is a new campsite, but it does count as an activity. So, yeah, there you go. You got another hit. You got your dice back. Excellent. And I'm immediately going to use it, because I have two normal hit points. Damn. Excellent. Did you undo the damage from the acid rain? You only took one instead of eight. Oh wait, we only took one overall. Yeah. It was. This was eight and then yes, one. Because, yeah, no, this because is me. Your perception check uh, made us realize that we just needed to move underneath the trees instead of packing everything and running. Because, which was a lot shorter yeah. overall. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. All right. Well, then I need to give myself back eight. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. The eight points of acid damage was assuming that you were traveling during the storm in an hour. Yeah, we ain't traveling until the storm lets up. The storm was let up by the morning. It, it's traveled further away and it's dissipated. Uh, is temperature fine now? Uh, well, it's a new day, we so I need game. weather rolls. That one By someone who's not me. Yeah, Yoshi's the only one that hasn't rolled. Well, yeah. Yoshi and me haven't rolled. So, D6 for weather. And now the weather. And a D4, please. Okay. Uh, it's not acid rain, it's now purple do, 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 do. rain. Prince starts falling from the sky. Purple it's rain. rain. No, it's it's all right, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna pull you guys to the map because you have moved. Uh, you have now moved up here. And, and 
a d10 as well if you're in a certain area of the forest great okay all right now you're refired until it's your next turn what do you mean i'm refired i mean you were fired and then you got the roll again so now you're fired we don't, we don't even know what i got yet it doesn't matter so, it's bad as you <laughs> wake up uh, and eat your meal and step out of the shade into the almost blinding sunlight that's glaring it's rising up above the horizon line the wind almost blasts you off your feet because it is fucking windy today because yoshi rolled the highest wind level told you <laughs> and there's something weird happening around you as well where the rain had fallen, it's starting to come back up in form of droplets, and they're starting to go back into the sky on their own. The fuck? Yep. The rain is moving into the sky on their own. And you see it everywhere. It's like this mist rising into the almost cloudless sky. Then as like, Spitz watches the rain go back up, uh, Henry, that might explain why it's always raining around here all the time. Rain falls to the ground and then goes right back up to fall down again. Anyone proficient yes. with Arcana Bullshit. would know what it is. Right. Hey, uh, Lucius. Uh, before you ask, that is not normal. I, I already know it's not normal. I'm not that fucking dumb. <laughs> what I was gonna ask, though was uh who the fuck decided to ever settle down here after crossing this shithole because that's a man that i want to talk with and understand why he's fucking insane this place fucking sucks he decided to starve in this place well, hopefully we can come across him quickly because that would interest me as well because as you as you very well put it Fuck this place. Uh, that sounds yeah. about right. If it weren't for the fact that I near was getting eaten by a shadow monster, I think this would be the worst place I ever lived. Or visited, rather. I, I'll take upside down acid rain or for the whatever the fuck that was. Right. Anyone proficient in Arcana will know what that rain is. I don't know. I think. Gee, hey, too bad we're too bad we're not educated. I don't think anyone in this party is proficient in Arcana. We are not educated, okay? I'm smirt. We're a cast. Earn a wizard. Very good. Hello. door open on its own. Magic must be good. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of you're a wizard, Harry Potter. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? <laughs> you're a wizard, Harry asshole. <laughs> McGonagall, you wrinkly bitch. <laughs> it's <a> classic. <laughs> Right, so you've made your way into the clearing and you're experiencing rain rise, which is something weird that happens in the world sometimes. Yep. Yeah. We're making very certain to stay away from puddles of the shit on the ground so that we don't get rid I mean, of rain. I mean, the rain is trickling up your bodies and leaving. It doesn't hurt you, it's just water. All the acid has diluted itself because it's at a base. In the water table. I oh. do believe now this is what I call a reverse shower. That's better than a golden shower. I can feel my sweat rolling up my legs instead of down my legs. I mean, yeah, in this in this environment, any sweat you do have, it does go upwards. Any what does, what's a fucking golden shower, Lucius? Oh god, I knew that was coming. <laughs> 
Uh, it's when you're extremely rich in Scrooge McDuck things. I don't know who Scrooge McDuck is, and I can't hear the GM's voice right now. <laughs> is there something on the wind? Can you hear me now? A golden shower is something that very wealthy and disturbed individuals do. I will not explain exactly what it is, because I do not partake in it, nor will I ever, and that is all you need to know. So, I, moving I on... I didn't say you had to admit it to me. I just assumed that you did it. I don't know what it is, but, I mean, you seem like that sort. Cue the transmutation wizard prankster. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, you're now back in the clearing, and the day is bright and nice and shiny. Windy as fuck. Very windy. Question, is this wind strong enough to hinder our movement? If you're walking into it, yeah. Are we going... It, you're you're track tail track. winding, so you are going faster. Okay, you're that's good. <laughs> Yeah, like so a cuss with a boot in the square of your back. We're drifting. Quick, I got a couple of hundred boots, like fuck. <laughs> Quick, someone make a sail and put it on the cart. We'll ride this bitch to the end. Dude, the most majestic bitch just rides into a battlefield on a cart. This, this thing got us from point A to point B and damn if you're gonna be Zed. <laughs> and we take out Takes the off. EG by just opening up the back of the cart and dropping the anvil. Is he gonna act me <laughs> everything? We can do that. Shh, boom. Hey, I'm just saying, if we use the anvil as a weapon, that technically counts as a the whatever fucking spits is for him. Improvised weapon. Yeah. Just anvils on his knuckles. Just throw the anvil <laughs> off the cart. That motherfucker. Catapult. Boom. Can't catch catapult at ninth level. What? <laughs> Alright, so what time of day is it now? It's about 8 uh, a.m. Keep the car until the end of the campaign. If you keep this car intact the whole campaign, I will make it a fucking gilded chariot. <laughs> Worthy of the gods. This thing is a rickety piece of shit that costs like five silver. That's all it's cost. Accepted. I'm gonna have to make an uh, an upgrade tree for the fucking car, aren't I? <laughs> it's gonna be like spikes on the wheels. <laughs> you weren't going battle. To have to, and then you made it so you have to. battle chariot, battle cart. <laughs> you know what? I'm okay with this. It's like the yeah. combat wheelchair, but a cart. Yep. I'm down. Hey, let's do it. We gotta make this cart last all campaign, <laughs> which probably means oh. like three years. Oh. Uh, Mo, since I did some repairs on the cart, how much hit points does it have right now? Uh, you have managed to bring it back to ten, so it is operating. It is rickety, but it'll hold. And every yeah, successful attempt, you will add two to its HP. Nice. All right. All right. Do you want to? Do you want to repair up the wagon some more, or are we gonna finish wrapping everything and get to moving on? I mean, let's get moving. In my opinion. Henry will grab the cart and start moving it. Okay. Let's get a move in. So, you continue onwards to the path. Uh, I'm assuming you're still tracking said individual, so I need another survival check from Lucius, seeing as how he's your front man. Yep, he's our front man walking in the rear. Okay. You do start to find some tracks that are more akin to the boots that you've seen. And then they start to almost trail off and sort of wind and then the steps get wider. 
and then they just get closer again as if they stumbled and then uh, they continue to a normal walking pace for about three miles and as you make your way further down the road I don't really have any good images that could demonstrate where you're heading so uh, I will just throw up a nice pretty picture of a town why not um, so you make your way you have about three miles in and you spot someone stumbling on the road and in the distance you just kind of glimpse sort of blue cloak just sort of floating as they're sort of stumbling Oh. You think that's the fellow? Uh, could be, I'm not entirely sure. It seems a bit more stumbly than I anticipated from Boomer's description. Hey, wasn't the description just that he's not like that though? That it was, but again, that has nothing to do with how he, how the person walks or holds themselves. Well, uh, maybe he's dying. You tend to stumble if you're dying. That is true. Well, there's nothing for it but to get closer to him and, I suppose, take a leaf. Alright, well, you got the best nose about us. Go for it. Walk up to the guy. Sure. As you get closer, you start to almost recognize a symbol on the back of the cloak, which is a golden bird. And you get almost round, and you do see their face. It seems to be uh, an adult male, uh, hair tied back in a wolf's tail, uh, sort of thick beard it's kind of patchy he scars down the face and you do recognize the person as being bright the outsider but you look in the eyes and there's no blue light ah it's you ah yeah the person just sort of looks at you and says, who the fuck are you it's Sincerest uh, apologies. I seem to have mistaken you for an old friend of mine. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, that seems to be a problem that I've run across a lot lately. Uh, can I possibly help you? You seem to be having problems with orientating yourself. Um. Make a medicine check. Just from observing. Uh, too many windows open. Stop having so many tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> I say that. I've got on my other screen, I have eight tabs open, which is quite a lot for me. I use like three and then a new window. Eight. Look at the person. They look kind of pallid. Don't really notice anything else. Their eyes are kind of yellowed, but that's it. They exhibiting any similar symptoms to the three from Anir? No, this person looks like just by looking at them, they look like they've been badly injured by something. Walking like someone's attacked them, or they've been beaten with maybe a blunt object. So they're just stumbling about, disorientated. Get closer to him and try to, like, get under his arm. Uh, you tr his get closer, you just hear the sound of a knife coming out of a sheath as you see his hand reaching down. E easy there, I'm just trying to help, because you seem to have taken a bit of a beating from the looks of you. And you're here to finish the job. And rob me. I don't think so, Catman. 
You have nothing of value that I would want, and I am a, I am an emissary. So, if you know anything about us, we are travelers that go from kingdom to kingdom. Yeah, and burn so, everything in your wake. Yeah, I'm familiar. Why the hell would I believe you? You're on the road covered in mud. Your clothes are burnt to shit. Just keep well, stumbling. Acid rain that we just endured. Yeah, I didn't see any acid rain. <sighs> Stumbling along, and then just stumbles and face first down. Idiots, all of them. I'll walk up to him and kind of turn his head, look at his face. Yeah, there's blood coming out of his eye. There's something not right with this person. You don't say. Has he been uh, standing smoking acid rain too much? No, he's Anything just... Down? Injuries are catching up. Injuries, well... Is he still lucky. breathing? Make a medicine check. It's shallow and rattly as if... Maybe there's maybe a collapse along or two. I'll turn back to the others. So, do we take him or leave him? Uh, wouldn't be that big a problem to take him, but uh, what you gonna do with him? Because I don't know what the hell he's got going on, but. Uh, Ain't nothing I can do nothing about. Well, any information that he would be able to provide for us is useful. Whether it's about Bright, who he was possessed by, or about this forest, how he ended up here, anything that he might remember. Alright, well, I mean, I don't, I don't right think we're the type of people who just leave someone dying on the side of the road, so... He seems to be going at least the same direction that we are at the moment. We don't know if this is the, the guy Boomer was talking about or not. So why don't we put him in the cart, make sure you strip all his weapons off of him. You know, yep, just for I, safety's sake, and then... I was already planning on Yeah, because uh, if he hurts anybody, well, he ain't gonna have time to get to a doctor. Yes, he already tried to pull a knife on me when I got close. So, uh, not for more reason. That. And then if, uh, I suppose, Spitz, is, how's the healer kit looking? Do we need to save his life, or? Uh, we got, uh, two more charges left. How bad's he looking over there, Lucius? Uh, he's taking a hell of a beating. It seems to have... I assume it's probably a collapsed lung or something. He's not breathing very well. Alright, well I don't know what a collapsed lung is, but uh, sure, bring him over here and I guess heal him. <coughs> well, actually, hold on. Technically, that healer kit is Coronar's. Coronar, what you want to do? I have no idea. I repel weapons, not people. He's got a point. <laughs> Alright, well he's still the boss though. Do you want us to use a healer's kit? I mean, if you can save him, do it, but otherwise it seems like a waste. It, isn't it healer's kit basically just for outside wounds and such? Yeah. It stabilizes people that are dying, which this person is. Do we? The question is though, do we want to use something as precious as a healer kit on this person just for a bit of information? Well, if you keep asking the question instead of using the healer's kit, we won't have to make the choice. Do you keep on discussing the breathing is getting very shallow and rattly. <laughs> you know what? 
Just do it, Lucius. We'll deal the consequences later. I will buy another healer's kit for the next opportunity. Hell yeah. I'll take the healer's kit and do my best and try and stabilize. You take some of the tools out of the healer's kit, some utensils, and you just sort of start trying to patch them up and bandage up what open wounds you can see and stabilize them, and he just sort of breathes a little bit better. And you sort of you know a little bit about medicine, that collapsed lung, you just need to relieve the pressure a little bit. You just take his own knife and just jam it into the second intercostal space in his rib and just... And, you're, and you just keep the knife in there. And you yeah, just sort of... Keep that there and search him for any other weapons and such that he has. Make an investigation check. Did you see that, Spitz? You told him to go heal him and he fucking stabbed him. <laughs> Finishing the job. <laughs> uh, uh, on a twenty, I should, say, I should say that I'm very glad it was me who tended to you and said a uh, cat man over there. I, you never let that furry bastard near me if I'm unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking knife <clears throat> on top of it. As you investigate the the body, you find like basically. Like, a bandolier almost of knives up the forearm that seem to be throwing knives two swords eight daggers crossbow bolts but no crossbow and a few journals that's about it and a pouch of coins I'll be taking all of this thin and I'll start stripping him of all the yeah. he is still knives. conscious by the way he's looking at you robbing him shit. yeah he's got a knife in his side he's just like looking at you like, you fucking stab me <coughs> I had to relieve pressure from your lung otherwise you would not no. be able to believe uh, now you're fucking robbing me <laughs> you try to pull a knife on me I'm making sure I, I was in the right you're fucking robbing me <coughs> <laughs> Stab him out with his own knife, you I'll, fucking I'll, I'll, animal! I'll look, I'll look to Henry. Do, do you perhaps have a rag or something? You're fucking kidnapping me! No. <laughs> I, I do, but. Uh, I think he had the right I'm intent to pull it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you pulled it out. I'm going to stab you with it. I just said take the man's weapons. I see you talking away books and j Did you even leave him with a coin purse? Yes. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just taking <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of siding with the guy that just stuck a knife in. He's just staring so at Lucius. I... <laughs> so far, all I have done is made sure he is able to breathe and live. <laughs> and confiscated him of his weapon so he does not try to kill me again. Hey! I'll fucking take this knife out and stick you one cat! <laughs> if, if you pull that knife out, then you'll only kill yourself. It needs to stay in there, otherwise you will die. I'll take you with oh, me! Henry, about that rag? I, I, I'll set down the front of the cart and walk over and just rip a chunk off of my shirt and hand it to him. Yeah, I'll kind of ball. I'll kind of ball it up and just stuff it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding his side with a knife. He's like... <laughs> now, uh, Lucius, how is a stab it? I'm supposed to make him, you know, better. All that's left is for them to tie him up. That's it. <laughs> the knife in his side is to relieve pressure from his lung, otherwise he would not be able to breathe right now. And the, well, cloth, the cloth in his mouth is to keep him from complaining. So I, I say it's not needy as well. well I'm not going to pretend I'm a doctor any, of any kind, but figure since he has energy with a knife in his guts to howl and whine and bitch, I guess he must be fine. <laughs> Yes, until he tries to pull that knife out, in which case he will die in a matter of a couple of minutes. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I hit pretty hard. <laughs> so you're just getting abuse shouting in muffles. 
Yes, yeah, so that's why I gagged him. Cause... <laughs> Henry's just going to kind of like raise an eyebrow and kind of squat down next to the guy. And I want to check his pulse. <laughs> sure, make a medicine check. He just looks at you and like, <laughs> This has taken a fucking <laughs> turn. He, you're feeling for a pulse, and all you feel is very aggressive pulsing from a very angry man who's just been robbed. <laughs> yeah, I think he's fine. <laughs> right, well, in my professional medical opinion... You just... I, uh, when when you say right. that, I just look at you like, what professional <laughs> medical opinion? <laughs> it was obviously said in irony. He just reaches his hand out to clasp Henry on the face. <laughs> just to push him away, but it's the weakest ass push. This guy has no energy left. He's just so angry. I, I'm not the one that stopped you. Right? I just <laughs> <the stop> wound <laughs> wasn't killing you. <laughs> you anyway, just don't... <laughs> you know anything about two spirit dogs? <laughs> <laughs> this is the right, most not... sus thing that you guys have ever done. Right, <laughs> well, some dude I'll, in the ask room. Again, I'll ask you again when you calm down. I'll grab quiet. his shoulders. You still have your journals and your gold. <laughs> Not giving you your weapons because you already already tried to pull a knife on me. <laughs> I stopped talking to him and somebody grab his feet so he can jump on the car. <laughs> I'm not putting this guy up easy. <laughs> Anyone that tries to drag him, you can even make an athletic versus him trying to kick you. The DC's quite low because he is dying pretty much. But... All right. I will assist. Because I want to. All right, <laughs> Henry. You, yeah. All right, Henry, you go for the middle. I'll get his legs. Anybody have core for? I I I need <laughs> to. I need to make a highlight of this for the stream. Just like the gang kidnaps a dude off the <laughs> fucking road. I'm, I'm just Everybody, trying to. It just takes a fucking turn. <laughs> Everybody, hold on before you be getting. This this session needs to be renamed again. <laughs> I'm, yeah, no I'm wonder. A, I'm gonna walk no, up to him and yeah. squat down next to him again. He just stares at you with like anger just bleeding from his eyes. Hello. Right. So <clears throat> listen up. <clears throat> this is how it's gonna go. <clears throat> now, either you're gonna let us put you on the cart so you can heal while we move in the direction that we were both headed, or I'm gonna crack you across the head with this club. You're gonna get put in the cart whether you like it or not. <laughs> and I, I want to roll an intimidation check to try to get him to wait. Like Spitz follow will, along with what I'm. Yeah, Spitz will crack his knuckles behind him. Sure, make an intimidation check at advantage. I was gonna say probably get advantage anyway because I fucking stabbed him in the side. You just sort of just keep leaning down, and he just <laughs> looks at you. And his eyes don't even falter. He's not afraid of any of you. He is pissed. This guy has fought more than you guys have ever done. But this is the worst thing that's ever happened to him today. Just... No, man, this is not <clears throat> kidnapping. This is... This is, this, this is kidnapping. All that's missing is some <laughs> rope to tie him up. That's it. This is forced healing. All right? forced, forced healing. healing. <laughs> this is a cult. It's like, we will bring you with us and heal you. <laughs> and after that, Henry's gonna grab him by the shoulders and say, All right, lift him up. <clears throat> yep. All right. Lift, lift make, him up. make a straight athletics check. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys beat, beat the DC by like five. He, he's nice. kicking and struggling against you. And you're just holding him stable. Like legs over the shoulder, arms over the bands. <laughs> and the knife is just dangling there, and he's just like. <laughs> now you sit in the now sit in the car, all nice and quiet, like. Now go back up to the front, pick it up. 
You just throw him in the cart, just leaning up against the things. He's just staring at you with almost bloodlust in his eyes. <laughs> Beside the car where he's leaned up against. Yeah, he's looking at you, he looks just with murderous intent. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't quite what I had imagined when I said we should help him out. Dying by the roadside. To, to, to be perfectly honest, I was not expecting it to turn out this way at all. <laughs> he tries to grab at Lucius, but the side of the cart stops him, so his arms just go straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, perfectly, my man. Been better off uh, letting him, well, die. Well, we used the healer's kit on him, so let's not let that go to waste. Might as well keep him alive now. Yeah, we only have one stupid. charge left. He just starts making a really loud noise, like a... I think he wants to say something. You want to take that cloth out of his mouth? Oh hell no, I'm not taking that out. <laughs> and I'm ripping my vocal cords for you guys doing this, so... <laughs> Go on, cat. You're the one that puts it down his throat. Now dig it back out. So... I'll, I'll just keep facing forward while I'm walking next to him the whole time. So, we can do it... One of a couple of ways. The first way is you... I guess the proper word would be cooperate <laughs> and talk like a normal person and not throw obscenities. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, as I said before, that knife in your side is to keep you breathing. If you would like me to pull it out, I will gladly do so and leave you for dead on the side of the road. That is the other option. Now, stop screaming if you want me to take that rag out of your mouth. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'll pull it out. Just put hold it. It does a 19 to bite you. Did you. <coughs> does he hit? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Prove it. No. Uh, takes seven points of piercing damage. <laughs> bites oh, in your fingers. I thought bites only did one point of damage. Oh, uh, this. Yeah, yeah, he's got sharp teeth. There's something not quite right about this guy. Can well, I lean over? Now um, the cat has a werewolf. Face? I mean, that's, that's there are no bystanders, flat. They're in the middle yeah, of the forest. Still got your fingers there, licorice. And they're bleeding. <laughs> it's not, not much different than the five finger filet game that we played. It still hurts, but at least he doesn't seem to be screaming at the moment. He just spits your blood out. I'll get you next Did time. This is DD, but most want the hell want to go. I wonder why. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm gonna heal you. Stab. Look, he pulled a knife on me. X, you thought you was gonna you were gonna I rob him and um uh, yeah, you he was no, fucking close. I'm starving him because he pulled a fucking knife on me. So, so he pulled name. a knife on you and you put the knife back into him. Hmm. Coincidence? Karma. So been a strange day. Uh, how are you feeling? Any better? He just turns away from all of you and just sits. Alright. The silent treatment is better than the yelling treatment for sure. You can talk when you're ready. He just seems to be looking about the cart in particular. By the way, you reach for anything as a weapon and spits will probably kill you before you can use it. And starts looking at the tree line. 
looking in the darker corners of the forest. And he just falls unconscious. (laughs) And there goes that. Aye, there's a good lad. I figured he might be tired. It's nap time. Yeah. So you continue to make your way through the forest. Kidnapped man in tow. (laughs) Yeah, the guy that you promised specifically that you weren't going to kidnap (laughs) and rob. Immediately, <laughs> I even typed trust that issues well, right there. He isn't far off, and then immediately afterwards, all right, stab you in the fucking chest and give first, me all your shit. Firstly, <laughs> he never said anything about kidnapping. Se- <laughs> Secondly, I wasn't going to <sighs> stab him, but it was to keep him breathing, and he pulled a knife on me. So I have two good reasons. He pulled, for he pulled a knife on you because he thought you were gonna rob him. Because there's fucking four oh, meaty, d- there's the three meaty you dudes. Him and stabbed him. All I wanted was some information to help him figure out who he was or where he was. I, I think he's very aware of where he moment. is. I just want everybody to take a moment. Everyone, did you, to hear what the cat just said <laughs> i just wanted some information this is the guy that we decided when we were making characters was gonna be our group's diplomat <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> mess with a caddy you get the stabby choice so far <laughs> i gotta say we are destined for greatness you know right from the start <laughs> Make that tongue Lucy or meet the noosey. <laughs> <laughs> so you continue to make your way. I'm going to take you back to the map. This poor fucking guy. Honestly. <laughs> Look, it's his own fault. And you've made your way a little bit further up towards near the hills. Uh, so you do see the clearing and the, the rolling hills. Stretching off for about quite a distance up to the horizon line. <laughs> Tongue it loose. Meet the noose. <laughs> ah, I love the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, this is the German Inquisition? Led by a cat? <laughs> Sorry, They'll I mean never we will expect it. <laughs> They'll never expect it. We will counter invade Novaria. <laughs> they'll never see it coming. You know what they'll never expect <clears throat> when you invade Russia in the winter. Hold up, let me load up the EU four and figure out where Novaria is again. It's right between Iceland and Greenland. It's where oh, yeah. the acid rain is. <laughs> Africa. Yeah. Okay, Toto. Look, those rains weren't fucking <laughs> blessed. Not by anyone I want <laughs> blessing shit. Nah, they cast Bane. <laughs> I mean, hold up. This was acid rain. Yes. So, you know, all those drug users be be blessed in Africa. Yeah, with no lungs, because it real shit. Um, I, mean, <clears throat> I love hydrofluoric acid in my lungs. Uh, it's the kill you asset, not the ooh woo happy fun time. Just fucking yeah. taking a fat rep like, why is it spicy? Did you say Spicy water. <laughs> so you continue to make your way unimpeded by anything. Uh, I need to roll on this guy. He wakes up in an hour, so by the time you reach the clearing towards the hills, uh, the uh, uh, I don't have them listed anymore, so I'll need to refer to my Google Doc, because I never put them on the map. Uh, you are in... Oh, it's just the hills of Tiberton. That's, that's the expanse of hills towards Tiberton. <clears throat> so, he wakes up. Oh, yeah. 
this for us. He wakes up. He just doesn't seem to pay any of you any attention. He just sort of wakes up and goes, <sighs> Are you feeling better now? Fuck you. Alright, I'll take that as a yes. He's still got a knife in his side. <laughs> just rattling along. He's gonna have one hell of a trip over these hills because it's bumpy. <clears throat> All right. uh, do yeah, I think he could remove that knife uh, from his sight there, Lucius. Or does he still need it to breathe? I still don't understand how the knife makes him breathe. Well, think yeah, of it this it. way his lungs have a hole in them that is not supposed to be there. Aye, it's from the knife you stuck in him. No, the I knife is not that far. Thing. The hole in his lung was al already there before we got to him. Alright, so you put a se second hole in it, and now you can breathe. I put a hole in his side so that oxygen from the outside can get in his lung instead of just blood rushing in. Right. Still don't understand it, but I'll take your word for it. Can you remove it though? <clears throat> It's probably right painful. Well, I'm not a professional doctor, but at this point I suppose it probably be safe enough to do so. Bandage it bandage it up. Would you be fine if we did that? Or are you gonna like struggle or something if he tries to help you with He just looks at you and just pulls a knife out. Not even a wince of pain, just and wipes it. And sticks it in the, right. the base of the cart and just stays back. Well, it appears he made his decision for us. He is not happy. <laughs> He's so annoying. Fair. I mean, yeah, you did just rob the man. <laughs> This is good. I'm going to forever highlight this in the stream. It will be a separate clip on our channel of the gang kidnaps a strange dude on the road. No, no, it's not kidnaps, it's helps in quotations. I need, I'm going to wrap I'm going to wrap the trip. It, this is gonna this is gonna turn to a moo guilt trip. Watch. No, no, I'm I'm currently looking for a map that's for the hills. You can't, you can't be guilt tripped if you don't have any guilt. So my name is Henry. Do y'all want to tell me what yours is? No. All right. Catman, did you have some questions that you wanted to ask the man? Uh. Firstly, would you be willing to accept my help to bandage you up? I can do it problem. myself. Very well. I'll toss him just a couple bandages. It takes him just. Uh, I can't really roll this stat right now because I'm in the middle of setting up a potential combat map, just in case. Okay, kill the man so we can avoid move making that combat map. I take it you are probably not willing to share with us what you remember. I don't want to talk to you, cat. Figured as much. I will say I do know that you were relatively recently possessed by something. I know. You know who or what it was? Yeah. Nanya. Hey, I know that place. That's close to business, isn't it? Yeah. Goes <laughs> back down. 
I want to know where you guys are. You should come up from this bit. <clears throat> I don't have a token for the guy yet. So I'm going to set up a sheet just in case he survived. I wasn't anticipating you to save him in such a weird way. <laughs> okay. I'm not entirely well, sure. Well, Boo, said. here's the thing. You set this up. You suggested that as part of the script, you mentioned you put the knife in him as part of the um, yeah. operation thing. Because High Madison that Shack was... would understand that there is pressure building in his chest cavity, and to relieve it, you put a knife in. But a normal person that doesn't understand medicine would think you've just stabbed them. Yeah. I... Yep. Hey, you're the one who set that up. So yeah. it's not entirely Yoshi's fault. Yeah, but it's the kidnapping thing. It was the kidnapping <laughs> thing that threw me off. I'm like, I get... Do you know what? Instead of just talking his way out and being like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to persuade and this dude. And immediate robbery when he said he wasn't going to rob Yeah, him. that was the other thing. <laughs> I'm not going to rob you. We're not about that. I'm just going to rob you. Comes back, robs him. Turns yeah, out just... we were about that. I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> Fucking... I mean, the plan <laughs> was to rob him. We could have just waited a few minutes. He'd have dropped dead. Mm -hmm. I'll take robbing over grave looting. Or corpse looting. I guess in this <laughs> scenario. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've done both of them already. Probably. Absolutely, actually, yeah. <laughs> Stop taking the guy's side flag. Dude, every I think we all took the guy's side except you. You're still <laughs> yeah. the only one on the not the side of the guy. So, uh, you're on this road. But here's the point. Oh. Now we need to know this guy's name. Yeah. It's it's mandatory now. We've stabbed him. We've healed him. We've we healed him by stabbing him. <laughs> it's not okay. kidnapping. It's party adoption. <laughs> this is the hazing process, good sir. We stab you. Make you beg for your life, let you shout profanities at us, and if you survive the night, you're a part of us. <laughs> He's like, one of us. One of us. If you die in the process, oh well. You're headed, I don't suppose you're headed to Bath. Uh, you could say that much at least, since we're continuing on the way. Stares at you. Well, I guess I am now. You're not a prisoner, we just didn't want to leave you dying on the side of the road. way I see it. One hell of a yeah. show. Well, oh, can you walk? He stands up and you know, cracks his neck and his knuckles and pulls a knife out, puts it up on his chest sheath and hops out, starts walking. Got a little bit of a limp. He's still injured, but he's making pace. He's moving well, about 20 ways, feet. And that's it. Ways that sees it, if he can walk. Give him his, uh, give him his shit back and we can just let him die. I don't care anymore. Aye, we did our part. Saw him dying. Saved his life. As far as I'm yep. concerned. Your life's in your own hands off. now. You can just head off if you want. Go ahead and give him his weapons back. He could stab you right now if he wanted to anyways. So you might as well give the rest of his stab tools back. Yes, I suppose he is going to be continue to be unwilling to provide any information, being as stubborn as he is. I'll just start handing him most of his stuff back. He snaps it out of your hand. What do you mean most? What are you keeping, sir? Okay, fine, all of his stuff. Okay. Takes all the stuff and suits up and just cloak back yeah, on mine, if i, 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 I like the look of that armband the tag. <laughs> mm -hmm. all right mr tall dark and dying i wish you luck but i think you're an asshole touche before you head off if that's what you're doing i don't mind if you walk with us uh do you happen to know anything about those spirit dogs? Because we were told to, you know, there was somebody up ahead of us that might be able to help them. 
we are curious about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, can I insight that? Yeah, yeah. I'll do the same. Everybody insight. I mean, I'm proficient, so... Oh, baby! Yeah, he's lying. His body language, it's negative. But there's just something in his eyes. It, he just sort of has a weird tell. That you just notice his eye twitches a little bit. Right. Well, I can tell that you're lying about it. But, like I said, you're not a, you're not a prisoner here. If you don't want to tell him, you don't have to tell him. I wish you luck. Heaven's blessing upon you. May the road be swift and the wind in your favor. And he just keeps walking along. And then proceeds to just... Collapse. In the middle of the road. Right. Alright, Spitz will strike this test. Well, he made this choice on his own. Let's keep walking. I mean, some people you just can't help. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so party kidnap stranger, because <laughs> Lucius is bet stranger. I'll put in, I'll put in um, parentheses. Luce, yeah. Lucy is bad at communicating. <laughs> oh, fuck. This I, just, <laughs> I just Yo, like stranger. the fact that Please. if you really Pass. look at it, Really, from an outside view of what happened, we came up to a guy. We said we weren't going to rob him. Proceeded to stab him, rob him, put him in the cart, under duress. Hightailed it, moved him a few, like, hours worth of a journey. And now we're going to leave him dying on the road. <laughs> With his shit back. We're not even taking his shit. Yep. He made his choice. I love hey, it, dude. I'm just going to... We, we may be at, at times we may be thieves, but we only steal for one person at once. <laughs> I'm more accurate, we're all. Or I should, I should put this in Spitz's opinion. He just thinks he's so. St in Spitz's opinion, he's either too stubborn to die, or he's, still, or he's so stubborn he should die. Either way, we did what we could. Henry will do one thing for him, though, before we move the cart around and then go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over to him. Uh, is he still conscious? or? You have to check him by turning right, him well, over. I'm going to turn him over. Sure. To see if he's all right. Okay. Turn him over. He... he doesn't look like anything. He just looks still. Yeah, I guess we do what I did earlier and check for breathing. Actually, I was just gonna give him like a drink of water and then leave a ration with him and then go back to the cart. It's up to you. If you want to check and see if he's breathing, Yoshi, go for it. But I'm just gonna pour some water down his gullet and then leave a ration. And probably okay. drown him. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll lean him up when I'm doing it. It won't. Sure, you tilt his head up and pour water down his throat, and just as you finish up, the hand just shoots up to your face, and you see the burning blue eyes. Just, and I need an intelligence save, please. From just him or both of us? Just Henry, who was touching him. Some people That's, just can't. That is cruel. No, just... oh, that's, a, that's a check, not a save. Oh. Yeah. It's a save. Intelligent save. Yes. Not much better. Yeah. <laughs> better. The hand just touched you and it's burning cold like you've just stuck on deep freeze and it's just that horrible feeling. You just feel yourself seizing up a little bit and there's something weird. Because uh, you guys just see Henry standing still but in Henry's mind time is whizzing by you in a very dark, foggy, sort of plane of nothingness, and then it stops as, as the hand pulls as away. I, yeah, I was gonna say, as soon as I see that hand shoot up 
towards him out of basically from the guy that had no strength a minute ago. Uh, as soon as I see that, I want to want to try and to push it away. Can you make an athletics check. Oh fuck! <laughs> Why athletics? Yeah, Spitz is gonna head over to Henry. I'm sure he's over. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> and the hand is almost magnetized to the side of Henry's face. So you just, and nothing happens. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, do I see a blue glow in um, Henry's eye as they're, like, doing this thing? Is, like, are, is there any physical signs of what's happening to Henry showing on his face or body? Yeah, his eyes are burning blue as well. Nope, Spitz is going to stop that. He's going to, you know, rip the hand away. Sure, make an athletics check. Uh, I it was already over. But... Yeah, but they're running in to try and stop it before it ends. Uh, I, I, I 23. You beat the DC by three, oh, and you shit. just, and the hand rips away. I'm about to roll some psychic damage on Henry. Because <laughs> you just disrupted something. Uh, the eight, seven points of psychic damage. It's just like a tss. You shake awake and your eyes, your vision's all almost warbling and then it just focuses up and the hand is being thrown away and you see spits pushing it away and the hand just retracts back and you see what did I, uh, so what did i see while that hand was attached to me again um well unfortunately you would have known if they hadn't disrupted it so i need a history check a disadvantage to recall any information you might have learned <laughs> the pain is searing through your head feels like veins are pulsing in your temples and it feels like your brain's about to break out of its case and you can't remember anything that you've seen Kenny ain't gonna like you guys anymore you just fucked up uh, his lore <laughs> yes oh wait no Uh, so Henry's just, gonna, <laughs> Henry's just gonna stand up and, like, set, like, toss the ration down and just fucking kind of shake his head. Uh, Alright, not talking about that. Let's go. I uh, don't think there's much use for that ration on him anymore. He is dead. Picks up the ration and just unravels it and just... <laughs> well... Right, so you shouldn't be cool to seeing anyone medically, I don't know. You stab somebody and then you call him dead and... Look. No, 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 he stabbed Are your eyes and called right? healed and now he called someone dead that just ate a ration. Get it right. I hear what he said. I'm just gonna kneel down, like, get my... Get myself the same level as him. Mm -hmm. Keep a bit of a distance so he can't immediately do what he did to Henry and just look him in the eyes. Mm -hmm. You see the blue glint? Lucius. Hello again. Uh, I was wondering if you are still in there or not. Yes. Uh, uh... Mind telling me what that just was with Henry? Uh, it's, uh, the host okay. fighting back. So he regained control for a bit. He had regained control for quite a while. And then he started screaming for my help, as you'd stabbed him, quite rightfully. Bright just stands up, just almost like a... Ver oh. The food was quite nice. Are, are you sure that you're even able to... Keep this, well, 
body as it currently is. It seems to have taken a rather severe beating. That's why, without me, he'd be dead. I'm keeping his bones intact for now. And the bleeding in his brain. As little as I can. He's getting very aggressive. I've noticed. Yes, he was once a kind man. But, uh... Something bad happened in the near, and I just so happened to be nearby. Well, I suppose this does make it much easier now that you have you have regained control. <laughs> Henry's just fucking leaving with the cart. I was moving it back because I went back to the cart. I mean, you guys are you guys are heading. That way. Well, a boomer mentioned someone that reeks of death, which I assumed was you, since you are currently the only person that we have come across, and you are literally on the verge of death's door. It just was. I did try to bathe. Hmm. Guess that doesn't help rotting flesh. Oh well. I am familiar with the dog you call Boomer. Good friend. I've quite enjoyed his company myself. Hmm. But he said that you might have something that would help us in binding him and Wiseman to a person to bring them back to Finnegus. Uh, I uh, think it's some sort of uh, amulet I once had on my real body and if only I could remember where it was um, but uh I don't know. Could have tried something. I could see what I can do. Maybe near midnight. And the moon is hanging high as possible. I'll try something. This is all happening in front of us, right? Yeah. This dead guy is speaking. to explain what's going on here or... just turns and looks at you hello Henry apologies for my hosts transgression there I don't really know what he was doing nor do I that it hurt. probably suppose I better acquaint myself. I am what your friend Lucius calls Bright the Outsider, as many of you will know of me from the Bright House, as it were. Oh, so it was uh, your fault all them, uh, well, blue-eyed folk came round the shop. I was looking for something. I don't know what. From what I understand, not particularly <clears throat> his fault more that he is caught up in all of this himself. Yes. Something is wrong in Amir. And now that things are moving outwards, I am being thrown to the wolves, as it were. And, uh, and how are you... How are you alive? I'm are not. I am a spirit that has taken control of this body. It was in better shape. It has been in better shape. But maybe with the right attention, I might be able to get it back to its full strength again and be able to separate from it. 
Henry just kind of like glances over to Spitz. <laughs> he's very confused and like not sure if he's all right with the situation that's transpired the past like half a day. <laughs> yeah, Spitz gives you a look that's been described as. Uh, so, uh, Farsan is right. You're uh, possessing that guy. That's uh, a way to say it, yes. But uh, I like to think of it as mutualistic parasite relationships. He gives I, a well, I don't know. Uh, I ain't exactly sure what that means. But uh, uh, what you gonna do with uh, with him? Don't much care where he lives or dies, but uh. I intend to get him back to full health eventually, once I find someone that can patch this bleed that is occurring in his mind right now. It is making him extremely aggressive and tired. So uh, he's not just an asshole? No. As far as I know, he was a kind man. A soldier. That fought a long time ago. I think. I can't recall. I, I don't know much about it myself. Uh, it's sort of a recent thing. But when I when I pray to hell, uh, sometimes she heals. Maybe I could give a try at it. But uh, it's been a, a real shit week so far. I'm kind of tired. I don't think I could could pull it off right now. Where is it that you are heading? What? Where are you heading? Vath. Ah, oh, Vath. What a nice place. I will help you on the road if needs be. Oh, that is the plan. Can I ask that you won't, uh, you know, possess me if are you happens? Are you dead? Or are you dying? Well, you know, I'm sort of unconscious a lot, but either way, you know, dead or alive, I'd rather you just not, you know, enter my body. I have no interest in your form anyway. not enter Spitz body either. He is neither dead nor dying and seems in perfectly good health. I have no need for that. Alright, that's what I'd like to hear. I try to keep him that way. You're yeah, right. Spitz <laughs> knows when you say that. It's funny how you don't trust me as much as this man does not trust you. But it's not I... really a matter of, it's not like a matter of trust or anything. It's, it's just sort of like I don't want another spirit in, inside of me, you know. It just kind of seems like <coughs> a little too intimate. Well, it, yep, it is a matter of I trust. It, ways I see it, if your boy starts trouble, I can deal with that. However... Spirit, don't know what it could do, especially considering them uh, children types worship one. And I'm pretty sure there was a spirit that went and ate up half on here anyway. Ah, uh, yes, I mean, the shadow man. I mean, uh, men are men. You know, you can fight a man. Don't know if you can fight a spirit, though. You can, the right tools or skills. Suppose I shall head to Vatha. They might have someone that can fix this soul. Get him back to full strength. And he starts heading in the direction you're heading. I mean, I yes. just shrug at that point and just start moving the cart. 
Uh, spirit or not, at least it's a bright person and an asshole. Uh, so sad. He would have been able to tell you what Boomer needed to do the ritual if the ritual wasn't interrupted. <laughs> so sad. Oh well. Sorry. Oh well, well it'll have to be figured out another way. Yep, sucks for Boomer. Uh, but hey, this is like, you know, organic roleplay. Sometimes you fail a quest because you do what you think is the mm -hmm. right thing. I will move fast. Derek, the player wanted to sit back and see what would happen. Yeah. But Spitz, the character, would not leave um, his best friend to be, well, all, blight -eye, all bright eyed and crazy. Uh -huh. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. So, continue onward. Uh, I'll have to move you back. To... If this was the road, he'd take notes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a position is happening. Let's take notes. The search for coffee continues. Can you make your way through? It's called Cafe. The hills. Cafe. <laughs> uh, the night falls by the time it, you can just see the glinting kind of light of Tiberton in the distance. Not too far from you seems to be a small little home or cottage that's smoking away peacefully. Um, do we knock on the door of their home to see if they're... You're about ten miles away from it. Still. Oh, never mind. Nope. Yeah. That's way too far. One more days, half a day's travel. Yeah. Half a day until civilization. I guess we'll uh, set the camp then. Yeah. It's fine enough. I'll just, I'll just pull you back to the same map as uh, last, because it's the only hilly map I have, really. Now, in these hills, are there trees? Yeah. Do the hills have eyes? Trees. Sure. The trees don't have the blue leaves. They are green. Henry isn't smart enough to know that it is a specific type of tree. He knows a tree stopped acid rain, so he's down to always be into trees now. Okay. So. Would you like to set up uh, camp? When we start or when we uh, stop to start setting up camp, does Blight continue walking or does he stop with us? Blight just stops. Seems he's waiting on you. Alright. He's standing, he's not doing anything, he's just staring into the distance. Well, it's getting late in the day, so. Uh... Alright, let's get to work then. Let's right. we'll go and gather some dead wood. I'll make my camping check with athletics. Can I get? Some, can I find and get some decent wood? Oh, I should have asked about camping conditions. Like, what's the DC for a camping check? 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20, or higher. Hills, forest. Types of danger. Not in a dangerous area, not near Summer Dun. Uh, hills, exposure, time, wetness, not too high. Uh, I'm going to say about a, maybe a 10. Just judging, just calculating all the things in my head. Like, yeah, this place ain't too dangerous. It's not too hard to make a camp. And I just barely make it. That's one, okay, that's one success. We need one for each of y'all so we can determine the DC of camp activities. Okay. Alright. This is gonna be Henry setting up the tents. Oh, just missed it. That's one failure. Uh, so... Oh, remind me of what you guys were doing. Henry set up tents? I set up yep, tents. Spitz is getting firewood. Now I'll check the perimeter. Mm -hmm. In that case, I'll try to make a, a meal for okay. everyone. Oh, first, we need the um, base camping check. Ah. Yeah. Alright, you need to beat a DC of 10. Camping's easier when you're higher level. Remind me what I can do to help the base check. 
Well, all good. right. I got the rules right here. Now, the standard, air quote, check would be um, wisdom, strength, intelligence, or wisdom survival. But you can use other skills that could reasonably help, like athletics, nature, or animal handling. Mm -hmm. Huh. Don't know that's bad. Um, uh, well, in that case, I'll try an athletics to assist with setting up tents. Sure. Okay. I'm in. Okay, that okay. is two failures, which means, yeah, our activity checks are going to be at a DC 15. Our campsite sucks. It's a 15 with two passes and two fails. Well, the passes don't really count for anything. It's just matter. Fails. It's the fails. It's the first disapproval I have ever clicked on. Oh no. Oh no no no. Oh no no. So Bright disapproves of us stopping to no, get some rest. No, he's just disappointed in your bad camping skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no no. Back because, when I was well, alive, I could do much better. Well, he ain't well in that. fairness, in fairness, we're, we're basically city folk. Yeah. The fact that we're still alive at all is a miracle. Yeah. And I will you, make a you, note to find you, some opportunity to gain proficiency in survival. Yeah. I mean, Bright is kind of neutral with you, so you're okay at the moment. He's not hostile. <laughs> They're not hostile, I should say. Yeah. And I suppose uh, Henry will volunteer to do watch. <clears throat> All right. You could All just right. <laughs> you could ask Bright if you wanted. Uh, I mean, honestly, Henry's not really too comfortable to walk up and talk to a corpse, dude. So okay. he's just gonna assume. Sure. And decide to take watch. All right. And what are the rest of you guys doing? I would like to make repairs on that cart if at all possible. Sure. And the rest of you? Guess I'll uh, get to cooking. Okay. And Spitz. No. Right. Spitz is going to. What do I need to do here at the camp? What do you do? What do you get when you guzzle down sweets? Lay down shit, tap doop, tap beers. Baby shark, doo 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 doo. Yeah, Spitz will definitely set up those hunting traps. Alright, so from Henry, I'll need a perception check. Uh, Smith's tools check from Coronar. Lucius will need, uh, depends on what he's cooking. He's going to spices, so it will be wisdom based. This is a straight wisdom roll, unfortunately. And for Spitz, uh, I'm going to say a survival check. So it's a trap. Pretty much. All right. Okay. Just shakes out. Eh. Not the best food. So, Henry's on. On the lookout, and he's, you're not seeing much. You're just seeing the, the distant goal, not too far away. Uh, Ooh. For so the hunting traps worked yeah. out pretty well. Yeah, they did. You I set them up pretty yeah. well. So that would that like create a ration? Uh, like I, there's a chance. There's a yeah. There will be a chance. So like during the night, we might end up with like a few extra rations. Okay. Actually, gonna roll see how successful it is. Uh, yes. Yeah. That is successful. Were you rolling? Yeah, was it, was it cool to roll under my result? Yeah. You're in the foothills. <sighs> if you're in the forest, it's anything above 20. But you're in the you're in the hills, so it's, it's less than. So yeah, if you manage to catch something in the morning, it will be there. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Coronar successfully oh. maintains the... The cart and it gains two HP. Hip hip hooray! Uh, All right. Lucius cooks something. It's bland, but it will do the job, keeping you full. 
Okay, I'll mark down the ration. Mm -hmm. Oh, if... we can't cross any water. Uh, there's maybe a few puddles. Then no. All right, so I'm at two waters, two waters left right now, mm -hmm. and two rations. How okay. many left in the card, Jeeves? Uh, the rations in the card. We have eight rations box, uh, ration boxes. So eight uh, days. We also we have, have uh, rations worth a uh, bear and the cow. The bear's probably eaten by now. Yeah, you, you've ate the bear and the cow. Yeah, bear uh, and cow are eaten. Yeah, because they were okay, going well. Then, in that case, I'll replace my current ration box with another one in the cart. Um, so we have one ration box with two rations left. Uh, what I'm going to do is an adjustment to the cooking rule is if you want to cook for everyone, then burn up the amount of rations it would take to feed that person. So if you're cooking for four, use four. If you're cooking for one, use one. There's an adjustment. It makes sense because it's a day's worth of rations is for one person. <laughs> Well, what cook food actually does is you can cook um, fresh ingredients to turn them into new basic food rations. Mm -hmm. You could also use the skill to stretch out rations. Mm -hmm. You can turn one basic enough to feed two people, so two which, rations. if you succeed, gives you 1d4 plus 1 hit points once per day. Or you can cook a hot meal using one ration or a substitute per person. If cooked successfully, they get a hit die back. So no need to make an adjustment to the rules. They're already in there. Look at that. Giviglyph knows exactly how to do adjustments. I mean, yeah, that's what I've been assuming every time someone cooks food for me. Yeah. I've been just taking, taking down my rations. All right. It's a great way to do it. All right. So your night really goes without a hitch. There's no immediate danger. I mean, there's that alcove, which is pretty much where I assume you set up camp. I mean, take that partial ration box and mix it, merge it with mine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, while I'm cooking, I'll have asked if uh, Bright or anything to eat, because we saw him eat the ration earlier. Mm -hmm. So turns almost lifelessly, just like a robot, just I'll imbibe. Just walks over and goes, I will not imbibe. Just walks away. <laughs> Back to where he's stopping. <laughs> I'll just look at him like, uh, it's not that bad. I'm getting the, the meme like that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Lucius, did you use the holy water again for these rations? Taste a bit, yeah, funny. No, it's the lack of spices. There's not much out here that I can just pluck from the wilderness. Then you should have made sure there were some. Yeah, it's best we'll shrug and keep it will eat anyway. Yeah. It's so it's okay. easy. Food is food. And I know that on the streets often ain't enough of this. Mm -hmm. The fact is is that we were back in on there. There'd be a bunch of urchins trying to steal the food we got now. Oh yeah. Henry's still full from the two rations that he ate at breakfast so he wouldn't have to eat another ration today. Yeah. Well, Spitz eats more because, well, you gotta have calories to maintain peak performance. Also, Spitz is still a growing boy. <laughs> I, that he is, is. yeah. He'll be a great lad once he gets all the way grown. Yeah, true. Uh, Only the growth is more. Well, I have, well, first off, I am an adult. I'm not a child. Don't talk to me like I'm one. Growing boy in my ass. <laughs> I, I'd love to see you guys like encounter the Kaivin tribe, who are like old school orcs, like, proper tribe people. Like great, so he spits in amongst the people that are genetically whole, as it were. Core not being uh, amongst people that are genetically whole. Hmm? I mean, Spitz's mom was like a tribe of orcs, so. Okay, so your your mother was the orc. Yep, sure. Yes. It's in my backstory. I'm okay. sure I'll be that clear. Yeah. I, mean, I, haven't, I, haven't, okay. I haven't read yeah. your guys' backstories in a little while. I might do that uh, as light reading yeah, during the phylactery tomorrow, because um, we're going over them tomorrow. So, Yep. Born to human father and orcish mother. Yep. So you will, yeah. you, will, you will have your 
father's physique and your mother's features. So you will have a slightly more defined orcish features than human or whatever your uh, father's main appearance is. You've got the build of a human, but more like brawny, like an orc, with strong female features. With more like um, aggressive. And more, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a weird thing I like, thought about. <laughs> I was like, what happens yeah, if get... you have these? Yeah, like, yeah. Spitz's mom is um yeah tribal orc. She yeah. she decided to marry human. And part of the reason, and part of the reason I have like behind the scenes, we'll, we'll talk about more when Flactory opens up. But part of the yeah. idea is yeah. that part of the reason why, suppose he has such a, a break with um well most of his family. Is a part because I imagine orcs are just a bit different than humans are. Depends on which tribe they come from. If they came from a tribe at all, if she was a uh, someone that came a well, she is tribal. So on the uh, if she is a tribal orc, I'm not sure which tribe. On account that um, there's quite a well, few. First off, yeah, right. we didn't talk about it at the time I was making the character. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Two, we'll sort it out. I imagine it's not the kind of detail Spitz would internalize anyway. But as a player and DM, it's kind of useful. It means you might encounter other people of the same tribe, which would be good. So we'll talk about it tomorrow during the, the podcast. Yeah, or. yeah so. sounds fine. If there are orcs that are brown like tree bark, there you go. Yep. Because that's kind of um, what Spitz's uh, skin color is. Most be... orcs are green. He's more like a he's more like a tree bark brown. You are very far away from those orcs, then. They uh, they're very far north. They're near the reach. Uh, they are. But yeah. yeah. Unless uh, you camp for the night. Uh, the food's kind of basic. Lucius definitely isn't a cook. He's definitely used to having people cook for him. Uh, Henry's uh, just taking a. Uh, I don't know where Henry will be standing on lookout. Probably up on a hill. I'm assuming. Far away uh, from bright. <laughs> is it on this map? Yeah. So, uh, what I my guess, assumption uh, is that you continue onward, and then you just sort of turn back a bit, uh, go into this alcove to set up a like, couple of tents. Got like up on this hill or something. Yeah. On one of these cliffs yeah. on either side. Yeah, it's not hard to get up on them. You just climb up a shallow part and get to the top. You can see over the the rolling hills. You can see Tiber and they see a ancient fort in the distance stands out amongst giant mountains. Do I know what fort it is? Uh, make a history check. That's enough. It is the fort of Samak Dun in the distance. An ancient fort that has withstood at least nine civil wars in Matris. Wait, I remember that one from the map. Yep. So Must I, be dwarven built. Uh, as far as you know, it's elven built. God damn it, those elves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those motherfuckers. Mitras is an elven state. <laughs> it's always been. Dirty bastards. You fucking live here, dude. <laughs> Long-eared motherfuckers should move. All right. <laughs> yeah, short folk. Yeah. Uh, anyone? So I'm assuming Henry's just keeping his eyes out, staying as far away from Bright as possible. Well, he's not like afraid of Bright or anything. He was just asking to make sure that if he died, he wouldn't like invade his body because it's fucked up thing to like henry's just it's just already he's already having to deal with the fact that they are now traveling with like a revenant moving corpse yeah yeah so he's just like look if you just don't fucking possess me all right <laughs> don't possess me or spitz my little bro and then you could fucking anything else you're cool with it. yeah but it's not like a hate thing he's not really wary of him or anything he's just like fucking weirded out by the whole situation. I mean, it is a very don't strange thing. Your, don't possess me or spades. Corn or you can possess it all you want. Lucius, Lucius is free game. Yeah. <laughs> so he can do that weird mind thing and just do scanners on him. Just Turn his face into 
an explosion. Uh, yeah, over the night, you guys just settle in. Bright does not really move from the spot that he's standing up on the hill, looking in a different direction, looking towards uh, a different area of the hills, as it were. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I guess the bits will help us all pack up and. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. Gonna spend my hit dice. You guys gotta do your sleep rolls. Yep. yep. And oh. whoever's trying to roll the weather HP rolls. Gone, but I'm at full regular HP. <laughs> and now, yep. Kenny's right. Sleep rolls. Yep. Our yep. camp DC is 15, so. Yeah, it's gonna this be, will be challenging. Rough. The ground is pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> So yep. it's a... DC 15 con save. You have ah. advantage because, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we have like bedrolls and such. You have bedrolls. That's nice. All right. I sleep fine. Nice. <laughs> nope. Lucius is like, like I cannot believe this ground is more uncomfortable than a meeting with an elf. What the fuck? Do I Kornar sleeps like a rock. He's just. If you got a bedroll, you make it, you make <laughs> it with advantage, mm -hmm. typically. Well, I was asking because as a lookout, I obviously get less sleep than you guys. So, do I make the Let's see. sleep? When roll? you attempt to sleep, you make, make a sleeping roll, yeah. check against the camp activity DC. Um, no, no, as lookout, he's got his own uh, rule. Uh, he rolls a disadvantage due to having only a short sleep. He sleeps while we are doing our camp uh, tasks. Uh, if he has like, a bedroll, though, it will negate that and make it straight. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just a straight roll for Henry. There you Hell go. Hell yeah. Uh, you just... Cornar's sleeping like a rock, though. He's just... Yeah, yeah. imagine, like, Lucius just kept up all night. Lucius is just, just like... like uh, and he's just, like, thinking, I could be murdered in my sleep by a revenant. <laughs> this guy might come for me. <laughs> Or perhaps uh, Lucius is just awake cool. because... Right. Yeah. I yeah, I imagine either that or Lucius is just not used to the fact that I imagine... Well, Spitz definitely snores. I'm pretty sure Henry does. Yeah. It's just oh, uncomfortable absolutely. ground. So Lucius is... He's doing like the 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 kneading thing at Cats. And he's like... Oh, <laughs> Lucius does not make biscuits, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's making biscuits. He's just like... Let me... Come on. Just so you guys know, for like canon purposes, there is no possibility of doing a stealth in camp place anywhere if Henry's going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Definitely, you can hear Henry. I know one way to make it stealthy. And fucking gag you. Yeah, and then you wake up and club your ass, and then Eldritch blast you when you tried to run. You you would have to be careful, though, because if he inhales and snores, it'll look like one of those magic tricks where you just keep pulling the cloth out. <laughs> hey, infinite storage. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, lady in the tramp it. <laughs> it's like a dog, he oh, can't yeah. get stuff out of the mouth. Just... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Spence definitely snores when he sleeps. Maybe not as loud as Henry, but he definitely does. Cool. Because I imagine, because I imagine with the leaky, creaky building, you gotta learn, learn to sleep through anything. Yep. Yeah. That's guys. probably how we originally like met, too. It's mm -hmm. when because I saw when you were getting into the the gang, but like when we went on a mission, we probably got room together because we're the two loudest fucking snorers. <laughs> it's like, like, where's the two camp over there? So like, you right? fuckers <laughs> sleep in the basement where it's sealed. <laughs> just, oh, just sounds like ghosts. I was like, there's a ghost down here? No, it's just snoring. Oh, is it Darth Vader? <laughs> Your lack sounds of like faith fucking disturbs train me. is coming through town. <laughs> Choo -choo. I mean, trains do exist. Henry's never seen one. No, there is only one. And that's it. And it's never been shown because it's not technically built yet. Not yet. Come on, Daron. No, it's not. <laughs> Daron's building a flying machine in like a couple of years, canonically. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 
Whose turn is it to roll weather? Yeah, he will. Here's the thing. If you here's the thing, Duron will include a middle finger extension in that um in the play just for any more questions like that. Yodi, trigger it's... offense protocol. <laughs> it's just a big silhouette. They just calls you like a piece of shit in like eight different languages. Figure one of them should make sense to you. <laughs> hey, if you're I have my name. Hey, the pilot if you're of this... very smart, you'll be offended multiple times. The pilot of this aircraft has told you to fuck off. <laughs> um... It is Jeeves' turn to roll. Yeah. yeah. This is hillside, oh, so it's divided. Weather, sir. It's a d6 for the weather. We have a 6. Okay, uh, roll me a d4, please. We have a 1. Okay, and another d4. A 1. Okay. You wake up and you get that blinding winter sunlight and the clouds are scattered. And the sky's blue. It's not windy. It's not warm. It's just kind of cold. But no bad weather. Shit. We need to roll a six to get a sunny day. No, it's six is clouds. It determines how cloudy it is. And then the rest of those rolls determine other parts of the weather. Uh, the last D4 was for sun. In other words... To get a sunny day with no problems, we need a one, a one, and another one. Uh, no, you need a four, a one, and a one. Uh, Let's not jinx it. This is the nicest day we've had. Yeah. We might actually make decent time today. Six one one. What's your weather? It's gonna be warm. <laughs> okay. We can see the bandits coming from miles away, so you know at least we can be prepared. Start to pack up. Bright is still standing. Where they were last night, just still staring out into nothingness, and just uh, sort of realizes. So uh, uh, bright that we're uh, moving on. Nope, not me. I find them a uh, rather discomforting. So I'd like to. No, it's otherworldly, not for me. Fine, I'll do it. Sure. You yeah. have. There in the space now we're uh, moving on just sort of almost tones you out and just sort of be, is feeling the edge of their ears which you can see are very badly scarred around the like the back like something's been cut just, uh, sorry uh, uh i'm on my way you just know we're heading down. into town right um yeah i'm fully aware I, for one, wouldn't mind. And the town getting ourselves a real warm meal and a nice cold beer. That does sound pleasant. Aye. Bright continues walking. Uh, which way do you guys want to head? Do you want to head to the small cottage? Or do you want to head to straight to Tiberton? Oh my Thank gosh! You. Wait, the owner? Yo. Just going straight to Tiberton. So it's just on the edge of your daily travel. Uh, I don't think I've got any more like foothill maps. So I'm going to have to improvise with uh, just a road uh, for a random encounter. So let's pull up for... There's a Charge! New kid. New kid with a cat. Okay. Yeah, ignore the spirits. <laughs> oh, the Theranian spirits in the background. Great. Uh, as you're traveling along this sort of winding hillside, you encounter what appears to be just a very tall figure, kind of broad-shouldered, Grain skin, very intricate tattoos running down the back of the neck, with uh, just a simple jerkin and sort of a cotton pant, uh, carrying a stick and four large mastiffs at their side, and there's a fuckload of sheep in front of them.
Yeah, we're gonna probably have to stand still until those sheep are gone. Yep, that'll well, only take a minute. They're traveling down the same route as you are. Like coming our way or like no, coming no. our direction? They're going in your direction. They seem to be heading towards the cottage, which is still a couple of miles in front of you. In that case, we can just continue on. You can go around yeah. them. The road isn't too rocky that you can't just circumnavigate. Yep, go around them and then keep going to Tabberton, I guess. We should be able to make it there within the day. Start curling around and the dogs just sort of perk up and the slobbery faded. <clears throat> and the shepherd just looks at you and this tall, strong, goliath woman just looks at you. Good day. Morning. Howdy. Hello. Greetings. Nice weather for it, isn't it? Hi, first day in a while. Hmm. I haven't noticed the change. Oh, we might finally be out of shit weather territory, boys. That sounds like a great time. We don't want to jinx it, though. Now oh, you want jinx it near Tiberton? The weather is always nice in Tiberton. That must be because you have the forest blocking all the ships. All the bad weather. Oh, the druid. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. You know. So, taps her stick and the dogs start moving amongst the sheep and shoving them along faster in a single file just to get them a bit more narrow so she's allowing you to pass. Are you? Thank you. Perhaps I will see you in Tiberton. It'd be a pleasure. Hmm. You continue on. Yeah. Thought I would add a little pleasant encounter for a change. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. The As... only one for the entire campaign. <laughs> After that, it's uh, ghouls, ghosts, goblins, and pissed off bears. Now, and guys, just... wait. Extra... Don't be fooled. It's a peaceful encounter this time. In before, that's the BBEG, and we gotta fight her at the end of the campaign. She's a swarm keeper ranger, and her swarm is sheep. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. And they explode. <laughs> Hellhounds and fucking all kinds of shit, dude. We're bad as sheep. They all turn out of their wild shaping like ah ah. Oh. Is that they're all druids in disguise? <laughs> no, all, all the sheep just come together into one mass and form like. I'm just <laughs> saying. The why why are you kicking Wulu? Hunting a, a terrifying thing to do in D and D. Because one of these days, you will shoot a druid on accident, and they'll kick your ass. It's like, oh, oops, and then they just turn it on Earth all night, and you're like, I am not the high enough level for this shit. It was him. <laughs> I mean, if you choose to wild shape into a deer in a haunted forest, it's kind of on you. It's open season, bitch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can do your onwards straight to Tiberton. Uh, I don't have a map for Tiberton, so I'm just going to use that nice, pretty little town. Uh, same, I'll give you Dude, a... I like the Hobbit city. Uh, I think this is actually what Tiberton's actually meant to look like, if I remember. Uh, yeah, that is actually I'm... Tiberton. <laughs> I forget. I'm, I'm looking at... I'm going to look and just double check. I commented on this town map earlier. This is picture. Yeah, this is Tiberton. The person that made this town must have been tripping on acid rain. Uh, D&D file 3, uh, no also, uh, images, that is Tiberton, that is the actual picture of Tiberton, a nice peaceful like little it. town. So, you, it looks like half the town is falling apart, but the top half that so is. You enter into Tiberton through this small path that transitions from dirt and mud and rocks to cobbles and the cart is still not fully repaired it's kind of uh, as you're pulling it along people that you can smell like a uh, fresh bread and deli meats strong floral smells from the apothecars 
see people just enjoying the life kids throwing a very heavy looking leather ball in a, like a sort of netted uh, sort of cup that they all hold like a basket uh, it, pretty much yeah that's what I got a vibe from you see the aqueducts that have disintegrated over time and they've got new ones in to cross over a bridge into the middle of the town for a very tall post stands in the middle with directions to every location nearby and it's a very busy little little town and you better believe it i'm gonna make those stairs a part of the chase scene and that cart is coming with you <laughs> it's just it's just my cabbages <laughs> Honestly, at that point, I think me and Spitz should just both roll athletics to see if we can carry the cart up the stairs. At, at least we don't have to deal with having a chase scene at the broken aqueducts at the top of the city. There better be a town like Bossing Say that has the mail delivery system. <laughs> uh, that wasn't Bossing Say. That or, would be. Uh, I, I know exactly what town you mean, but that was not Bassing. No, Sing. that was yeah. uh, uh, no Bassing. Say is there is no war in Bassing. Say and it's, yeah. it has the best episode. And Iroh still makes me cry. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just open a tea shop, bro. <laughs> but uh, if you're looking for a town similar to that, it would be uh, it'd be Dragon's Crest, the city, out in uh, Aelnoth. So frozen shoots of ice that travel uh, up and forward. Pretty much. Omashu, that's the one. Omashu. Yeah, yeah, Omashu. Bless you. Fuck you. <laughs> so, yeah, you. Man, that, that city was great. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, you're in the middle of Tiberton. What would you like to do? Plenty of... I suppose we ought to look for an inn yeah. to drop our things off at. There are a few... I want to find the nearest person I can stab in the side. <laughs> Bright just stares at you like you can heal. You're not getting the heal of The nearest person that I wanna just ask some questions. <laughs> Promise not yeah. to rob you. Uh, yeah. Is there an inn? And if so, what's the name of it for my notes? I am having uh well, you have a few. Uh there is a kind of a you there are signposts pretty much all over the town, so you know pretty much where to find things. Yeah, they're mostly symbols to represent things, and it has pretty much uh, a very pictorial uh, display, kind of uh, relating to illiteracy. But uh, from the symbols, you notice that down below the bridges where the arches are, there is a uh, a small tavern called the the last drop there is another one called the where is it uh, uh, what the fuck uh, the bloom and rose there is another one called the uh, Drunken Paladin. And one last one is the, where it's got, I'm in the wrong fucking town, go up. And up uh, the Cobblestone Inn is the other one. What's in the difference out. between the three? Uh, price. The one below the bridge, cheap as it, all hell. And then, the Cobblestone Inn is more refined. It's on the higher side of uh, the, the town, up near the top. And the Blooming Rose is somewhere in between. The Blooming Rose is when you come into the town, there's like the center square, and then there's a path that winds up the hill, and it sits right in the middle of between the top and the center of town. So it's in the middle. And it, yeah, can we afford that with no income? Uh, you don't know? No, you're in, how much money do you have saved away? Also, are you paying little... us still? We only get paid when there are sales. There were no sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and pulling up the document for the Blooming Rose in case you want to go there. That said, usually I'm the one to pay for the money you see here. Your expenses are, ba uh, expenses are basically nothing. Except for the fire to get money. Oh, wait, I've been removing all of that from my money. I've been removing that money from the uh, total treasury. Alright, meals too, or? Yeah, meals and nights. Excessive drinking, no. Alright, then I need to give myself back, like, I don't know. Five gold. Eight gold. silver or something? Five gold. Or Probably. Yeah, same here. <laughs> do, do it like a fucking cologne ad, just warm sheets. <laughs> it is. Give me all the warm sheets. Chicken permission. <laughs> yeah, chicken, chicken. chicken permission. Uh, we can probably afford the blooming rose if it's middle price. Bench, you haven't gone in. I mean, there's nothing that says you can't go in and just like price check. Yeah, you can haggle. Much of the room. True, we can. Yeah, we and haggle. Yeah, haggle the price. Actually, if you want to haggle, you should probably let me know because I'm, I'm I'm proficient in persuasion. Uh, let's have a look. I am also pers proficient in persuasion, but I have a negative modifier, charisma. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just checking something. Hey, I got a high persuasion. I mean, if Bright is with you, you have disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea it's why. Like, we're Bright, you stand out outside. Freaking walking zombie. Yeah, he is a walking yeah, zombie. Body falling apart. Yeah, How you're right. Letting us in. In that case, we're probably better off just um leaving him be. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, like the blooming rose is um. What's the price for blooming rose? You don't know. You've not been in. At least find out how much it's gonna cost us first, huh? Because that's like the middle of the road in, right? Yeah. Let's find out what it's gonna cost us first. Okay. See if it's like a big deal or not. Yeah. I'll send one of you guys in to have a look at the pricing. Probably Lucius. Yeah, you know. send the cat after he disarms himself so he doesn't stab anybody in there. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to stab anybody. Sure. Yeah, he's got claws. So he'll scratch him instead. Plausible deniability if he stabs someone when we were never here. If you run out of that inn with the entire inn chasing you, we're leaving you with the undead guy. We're going to go find a different inn. Exactly. Yeah, I have no problem traveling with Bright. See, there's an issue there. <laughs> Why was there an issue? <laughs> the issue is you're not very bright. Yeah, sure. I'm looking for the barkeep's name. Hey, right. we got some advertisements. What? What? Check it Twitch chat. That's yeah. Um, no. Unfortunately, I don't have the power. <laughs> no. Um, like as much as I hate to say, I don't think like we're, we'll we'll never make it big. We're just like a bunch of dumbass guys just playing D D as we've always done it. It's a fucking wildfire that I'm trying to spray out with a wrong fucking extinguisher and making a bigger fire. <laughs> yeah, that is true, Mib, but remember, we have standards. Mm -hmm. So, give the bot the boot and so, give, the, I, I give would, the bot a boot and call it a night. I mm -hmm. would recommend uh, that everyone clicks that name and reports that name for botting and or spamming, and then attempts to scam other community members. Yep, but uh, I can't do it right now because it will kick me out of the stream and it could end it, so I'm going to have to wait until after the fact. So I and, and I and I watch Twitch on my Xbox, so I can't do shit. Uh, oh yeah. There we go. 
And now I've also blocked it. So fuck that. So, I'll give you a description of the tavern on the outside. A very humble stone structure with a cobbled base stands proudly tall at three stories high. The facade, beautifully plastered with a lime white color, and a small, perfectly maintained sign that says the Blooming Rose, and it has a rose painted on it. It's just slightly green at the top and a little bit of red popping out. The door is an iron uh, reinforced wooden door. Uh, it appears to be unlocked and easy to access. You see several windows up that are, have a lead bars running across it to reinforce them. And you can easily walk straight on in through up a couple of big stone steps. Yep, make my way in. Guess the bone as well. And you walk in. And there's a small vestibule. There's a very dark oak structure on the inside and the very fine flagstone floors. And you see the hearth burning just off to the side. And you walk in. As you come through, the wall sort of fades past you. And you see the barkeep standing at a very beautifully kept wooden bar with several benches along it. And this barkeep is probably genetically related to you in some way. Stands at six feet tall and has broad shoulders and a large lion's mane that drapes all the way back. Built like shit and just slowly pouring a ball of wine into a glass. The room is well lit, warm, smells of fresh food and cold, cold beer. You see several patrons on the ground floor and up on the mezzanine that sits just halfway up the first floor, looking down onto the hearth and the bar. A few waiters are darting about, handing orders over, taking glasses away and cleaning up. And there's a cloakroom, if you want to hand in your stuff. There is a sign on the door, just as you're about to enter. And it has rules on it. No fighting, weapons are to be handed to the cloakroom, and all familiars must show ID. <laughs> familiars with ID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my familiar doesn't. Oh wait, Lucius, you have an ID, right? I'm not familiar. I mean, in Mitras, the legal drinking age is sixteen. In human years. How old am I? I don't know. How old are you? Yeah, old enough. Mentally, seven. Criminally, up there with the greats. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Ah, oh, just yesterday I kidnapped this dude and now he's a zombie and he's following us everywhere. What's the social age though? Because I have a feeling it fluctuates a lot. It depends who I'm talking to. With Henry, probably like one. With Henry, it's teacher. Reluctant teacher. Reluctant supply no, with, teacher. No, with Henry, it's just fuck off, stop talking to me. With Henry, it's about 60. Mm -hmm. Uh, what if not with Henry? What if with random stranger on the road trying to heal him? Um, uh, Lucius, make a perception check for me. Uh, a, uh, so, well, allow me to give you a little bit more in-depth. That is perfect. I'll give you a bit more in-depth description of whatever you want. So I can give you any description of anything in this room. With a 13 is fine. I can describe the bar more in depth, I can describe the hearth, the cloakroom, or the people floating around. Uh, the bar is that much Yeah, the bar and the people floating around. I'll give you the bar. I'll give you one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one. Okay. So, yeah, bar. so the bar is a beautifully kept oak varnished desk with benches that line across it, curve round to the other side where another barkeep is currently tending to food orders. Behind the bar are several optics that line the walls along with several bottles that go straight back to the hard stone exterior. You just notice right above the bar there's a wooden panel almost reaching a false ceiling and along it is a large blade that is hung up and it just has a sign next to it. You can just make out it says in case of emergency. Break glass. 
Now, it doesn't say break glass. It just says in case of emergency. Uh, Barkeep has a very distinct tattoo on the left shoulder as you walk in, and it just has a heart that says Mum on it. <laughs> of course it does. Yeah. Uh, several people line the stools at the bar and serve these relatively large tankards and steins and flagons. The wine glasses are almost fit for a king. And the person serving food seems to know a thing or two about cooking. Excellent. That's it. Yeah, I'll walk up to the uh, barkeep that seems to be of the same genetic pool as myself. Yeah. The laying in? Sure. You, do you sit at the, the bar or you just stand? Because there is a little part you can stand at if you want. I'll just stand for the time sure. being. You stand. There's a porn. Looks at you. Holds up a finger. It's glass down. Takes money. Turns to me and leans down. What can I do you for? Greetings. Uh, my compatriots and I are well, new in town and we are searching for a place to stay. We were wondering about your prices. Can't quite get this fucking voice right. <clears throat> I well, understood uh, none of that. <laughs> well, uh, we're looking for a room. We got a few uh, ready if you're wanting. Uh, what's your sort of uh, price range? Uh, how much did we pay for the last inn we were at? A couple of copper each. We also need uh, storage for the cart, too. Yeah. I, I would say uh, up to about a silver for a room or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that as well. That's, that's the upper reaches that we've ever paid for a room per person. Uh, with our current situation, I'd say probably at most a silver or two for a room. We would also if possible, need a place to store our cart. Well, um... How many of you are there? Oh, uh, well... Four, potentially five. No, four. <laughs> You're not in here with me. I know, so I'm not speaking. Four, potentially stuff. five. Alright. Seeing as how you're, uh... Somewhat related, I should say. Never seen a pantheran around these parts. And you have a very strange accent. Clothes would suggest a noble, but uh, the way they are, you've seen better days. I'm sure, and your friends are pretty much in the same boat as you. Yes, I'll cut you a deal. For lack of a better term, a shit show the past couple of days well now you're here now you're in my tavern some place to keep warm i suppose i'll uh cut you a deal sort of looks behind him just don't tell uh don't tell the missus i'll let you have uh the attic room say two silver for that assuming it's individual rooms are you sharing uh, I'd say two two rooms would probably be good. Two rooms, all right. Attic room will do for two of you, along with some personal storage. I'll set up another two rooms for you for the other potential three. Two, if you're only bringing four in, I'll bring you back about uh, six silver total. As for storing a uh, card, I don't have any storage in here, but go uh, and talk to uh, Barkley down in the, the square. She'll help you out. Nice lady. Knows her way around a horse or two. Uh, actually, do not have a horse, just the wooden cart with, with supplies. How the hell you get that here? Two very strong individuals. Oh, 
Oh, three actually. They uh, they ain't prone to fighting, are they? Uh, Sorry, not really so much. Prone to, they they are able to behave themselves. I I can make sure to that. All right. So if they want to start throwing fists in my tavern. I'm gonna send them down to the fighting pits, and they can just juke it out there. I don't care. That might actually be good for them. Could like blow off some steam. Potentially. We well, you say you're uh, new in town. Perhaps uh, either myself or the the missus will help you out. Or uh, well, I'll say the missus. It's really my mother, but uh, people keep mistaking her for it, so I'm just not gonna mention that. Uh, wait, what is he helping me out with? At least he'll give you a tour of the town. Oh, a tour of the town. Uh, that would actually be greatly appreciated. Alright. Don't want to take up too much of your time, though. Oh, I can get cover easily enough. People know not to mess with my uh, bar while I'm away. And I'm sure uh, Mother over there won't, uh, let that happen. She's handy with a sword, as anyone else is. There we go. I'll, before we go and do that though, I'll quickly check with my compatriots, see if they're fine with the accommodations that you are willing to provide for us. You better mention to them that that cost covers breakfast and a bath, and you certainly look like you need it. But, uh, yes, that's... If there is a uh, different services you're after, you better go down to the Red Lantern District and a couple of gold there if you're looking for some warm sheets. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. You didn't hear that from me. Let's have a little chuckle. And he just turns around and just Keep an eye out on the, the woman. It's kind of elderly, tabaxi, just slowly putting out food, like a, a like I don't know what's that, like a babushka, <laughs> the old cow. Babushka. She's that sort of old. She's definitely worn out in her age. But, uh, well, I can promise you, my lips are sealed. Better be. I'm gonna just smack them off. And you just, and that's how it's, I don't know, I can't do it without sounding like Seth Rogen's laugh. I can do it. <laughs> 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 that sort of guttural laugh. <laughs> I'll let you get on. And, uh, well, I shall return shortly then. Very well. Turn around, head, head back outside of the others. Sure. I do have an image of this barkeep somewhere. So, there is no storage for our card here. For that, we'd have to speak with a Barclay in the square. But a room will cost two silver per room, comes with breakfast and a bath. Well, I suppose it can be done. If you're waiting for Rook, um, he's AFK. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Alright, well, are you gonna be wanting uh, the stuff stored up in the rooms then, or with this Barkley for an hour? Let's talk with this Barkley guy. A uh, uh, woman, actually, from the way he spoke. This is part of the person. And then, uh... Alright. And then, uh, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. so. if, if we can safely store our belongings there, and then just leave them there. If not, in up our rooms, it goes. So, you had to go find Barkley in the town square. Yeah. Yep. 
you head down with the cart in tow. Bright is still just lingering around, and people are scared, and he's like trying to approach with a hand out. Pleasure to meet you. And people are like, what the fuck? And just running away, and the guards are just staring at this guy and starting to approach him, and they just drag Bright away. He doesn't even resist. He's just like, I'll see you all later. <laughs> I'll turn around, hold a finger up, like I want to say something to guards, then just slump my shoulders and uh, forget it. Turn back around. Lucius, let your sister go. You head down uh, into the town square and it's hustle and bustle. You know, people selling bread and meats, flowers, spices, some alchemical herbs. Uh, and then you spot a lot of people bringing horses and mules into what seems to be a quite a large stable house. And there's just a very kind of above average height dwarven woman uh, wearing quite a fine cotton shirt with a very thick leather apron over and some big gloves. Just taking money and handing out like a card and just having someone write down the best they can on the ticket and taking it back and taking some gold with it, depending. And, uh, Sees you all turning up with a cart with just a half orc and a dwarf. Welcome. Uh, hi. Hello. I'm looking to um, store our cart for as long as we're in the city. Is this possible? Uh, I'm told to check in with you. It sort of looks. Where's your horse? Well, uh, we have a pre-work horse and a cat. Does that count? Just out of curiosity. This is a hand cart. This is not a carriage. Oh. Don't need a horse. We got muscles. She just looks you all up and down how muddy and worn out you all look. Yeah, you definitely can't afford a horse, can you? But, uh, never mind. Uh, well, it's, uh... Two copper per night. Depends on how long you want to stay here. Not a lot of people want to leave Tiberton. We're quite a nice little place. Uh, we're unsure yet how long we'll be in town. Oh, there's welcome to stay in Tiberton. But uh, I'll, I'll check it up for you. Any belongings that are of value. If they go missing in the night, that is not my responsibility. So... Anything of value? People will think about you. Fall off with an anvil. Well, the chances are quite l few. Crime here is quite low. The guards are very well trained in Tiberton, and I'm glad for that. A lot of horse thieves used to run around. Now those thieves are missing a few fingers, so that's fine. That makes them uh, more easily detected. Pretty much. For every it's crime, the it's a finger. repeat offend. Well, you can only offend ten times before they take off your hands. So. <laughs> ah, but they can only offend eight times before they're lacking fingers. Well, sort of holds a thumb. So the thumb is a finger. But uh, yeah, but if there's only one thumb on each hand, stealing is quite difficult. You'd be surprised. I, I, I would be surprised. I've never seen someone try it. You ain't seen some people. But nonetheless, I will shack it up as long as possible. Just hands out a big like stable card and hands it over with a like a, an inked quill. You just write down your name and where to find you, just in case. Alright. Uh, I'll, I'll give her my name. But my name is Coronar. Mm -hmm. And we think of staying at the Blooming Rose. Oh, Verkan sent you my way, did he? That's... I don't know, the cat talked to them inside. Oh, strapping man he is. Very kind to his mother. You definitely get a pleasant stay there. Just writes it down and puts it away in her pocket. That's two copper for the night. Any supplies you want to take there? Feel free to take it now and we'll get it stored away. 
All right. Um, I think we can leave the camping supplies. But we take. Uh, actually. Most of this there stuff that we have, the, the most valuable things are actually metals. None of it's smelted yet. Most of it is. Uh, there are ingots. Oh yeah, they're, never mind. You did smelt everything. Yeah, they're in ingot form. I think that if we tarp it all off uh, securely, we could probably leave it behind. Probably. If crime is as uh, she says it is. She also made the city sound much like a cult, so... The town, not a city. <laughs> yeah, but that's... You know... I would be... Okay. I think that we'd be safe leaving stuff in the cart. Yeah. Okay. It's up to you. I'd probably take the bear pelt so we can try to sell it though. Alright, well, if that's what you wanna take, I'll grab it. Mm -hmm. Go up and, and then grab the bear pelts off the back. Alright. You gonna take all the bear pelts off the back? They have flies buzzing around them, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best one. And you haven't tanned them either, so they're just rotting skin. Yeah. So, yeah. Barkley shacks everything up for you. That's takes why your... I settled for the fang. And then you. She takes your two copper for the night, or how much you want to pay for per night. Or you just come by every day and pay it. Just store it. Uh, I'll ask before we leave. Is it okay that uh, after tonight we build up a tab and pay at the end? Pay before leaving? She just takes your car back out or and just puts a little cross on a box and puts it back in. I will rally up a tab for you. And uh, right. enjoy Tiberton. It's a nice piece of city. I'll oh, pay up the first night, so, you know. No, she, she always takes the first night payment as a down yeah. payment. And then we'll run up the tap for the rest. Yeah. There we go. Okay. She takes your money and hands you a receipt. Yep. Don't lose that. I'll take that receipt and store it properly. Don't get it wet either. I'll do my best. Okay. If someone's going to throw buckets of water, you know, that's little I can do. I'll just avoid the... Just keep an eye out up above you when you're walking below a tall building. Some of us don't have plumbing. All right. All right. Enjoy, Tiberton, and I will see you back when you come to collect. We will. Good day. Bernard, uh, Chip. it smells like our, our cat's friend. Uh, you want to get rid of this skin? Yeah, we need to sell this quick before going to the tavern. Mm hmm Okay. So. Is there, a, is there a tanner or something in town? Something There's quite a few. Supplies? There's a, few, a lot of tradespeople in the in the town square. Uh, peppered across. You will you will find a hunter's sort of shack. Pretty much like a little stall where you see like a tanning rack and some pelts and some made clothes that are made out of pelts very elderly female half elf it looks to be about maybe a half wood elf or somewhere in between that and a high elf hmm. holding a knife just slowly peeling back the membranes at the back just looking at you with this fly ridden bear pelt <laughs> first time hunting Uh, kind of ambushed by the bear. Mm. Wasn't quite left of when we were done with it. Impressive for your first time to take out a bear. Yeah. Pelts aren't exactly exquisite quality. They are rotten. You have to sell that on. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's been a couple of days. 
Looks to be a lot more than a couple of days. But uh, I'll give you four copper for the lot. I'll take it. I have no problems with that. All right. She just hands you four copper and takes the rotting pelts and just sort of bats them again and all these flies zip off of it. Puts it down, dunks it into a smelly solution of something. Just leaves yep. it. Anything else I can do you for? Supplies? <clears throat> Clothes? Actually, um, if this will turn around, he'll say, you got a hand drill or something. Because this will pull out the bear's fang. I'll, uh... I'm assuming you're going to turn that into a charm. How does it do? And she just holds out her hand. Yeah, I'll hand her the thing. Right. Any sort of accessory with it? Kind of chain or a rope or any cappings? You want? Uh, just a cord. Just Something a cord. Uh, brown that'll, you know, look nice on my skin. All right. Just puts it down and looks it over. Just dunk it into a weird sort of resin almost and shakes it off. Just pulls out a small hand drill and just starts cranking it away. Sort of judging your neck size a bit longer. And the shears and then ties it up and hands you it over. Thank you, Kanye. Yeah, simple enough. After all, every hunt needs a reward. Yeah, so that's what we'll put on the bear fang necklace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Hi. You happen to know anybody uh, that makes armor, like hide armor, or something like that in town? Well, there, there's a few um, leather workers in town, some armorers, some blacksmiths. I can help you out. Depends on where you want to go. Well, uh, I don't think I've ever been to Hydarmor, so I guess it's a recommendation. Mm. Depends. And she's just sort of eyeing you all up with your ragged ass clothes. And just... What's your budget? Oh, right. The utmost, you know, try to stay as low on that as possible. Okay, okay. Well, she just sort of strokes her face. And... Preferably yeah. a place that maybe makes shields too. Because, uh, you know, I'd like to pick up a shield if possible. I would go speak to uh, Kaza. She'll help you out. She certainly helped me make a lot of arrows. She does some leather work. Doesn't necessarily do shields, but I'm sure you could ask her. She could outsource. I, uh, where, whereabouts is she? She points straight across the square and there's a small blacksmith just puffing away. Alright, thank you very much. I'll just tell her that uh, uh, the Huntress has sent you and uh, she'll uh, give you a little bit of a, a discount. Maybe, if you treat her nice. Aye, I'll let her know. Coronar uh, spits in recent developments. Uh, I think I'm going to go buy me some armor. So, I'll be back. I'll meet you at the end. All right, make sure you pick something that'll fit you well and, and protect you. If you're a little short, I'll spot you some, all right? Hey, I'll let you know. Hmm. Okay, so you head to uh, Kaz's. I'm sure if you want to know how to spell it. So you spell her name. It's Kaz. 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 Kaz de Mama. Yes, a de gelato. 
pizza. Pipra V. Marcello, aglio da foglia di pistol. Pipra V. Pipra V. Pipra V. Pipra V. Pipra V. Pipra V. Pipra Forgetting, and because I'm an idiot, that D and D Beyond uses uh, American spelling. <laughs> Just take the U out of everything. I know. Dude, I, I add the U to all as an American. Like color, armor, I always spell it. Yes. Yeah, it's it's force out for me, and I'm like, oh well, might as well adjust it. It's good, nice. I'm just pulling up. Uh, what kind of armor is it you're after? This website needs an uh, EU variant. I mean, I plan on doing a little bit of bartering since I have persuasion skill, but ideally I want a medium armor. Are you saying I start murdering human beings? Medium, medium armor. armor. Yeah, <laughs> until I can save up enough for plate, but I certainly don't have 1500 gold on me. But so I want just like a medium armor. Sure. So That's what she, I'm be going for. you enter this... Uh, Blacksmith, and as you open the door, this blast of hot air just ripples out with little small bits of smoke and ash. Something that you're quite used to. You walk in, there's this very sweaty, very fully built orc woman just <laughs> building this big sword on an anvil. It's about as big as a dwarf lying down. <laughs> Sort of stops and hears the door creak and open, feeling the cold air and welcome in. Uh, what can I do for you? Hey, hello. Uh, sent over here by the huntress across the way because I asked her if she knew anybody that did armor, and she uh, gave me your name. Well, that is nice of her. Uh, what is it you are after in particular for armor? I, well, I was hoping that, uh, you might have some, some hide armor. Or... I have some hides, yes. Maybe a chain shirt, but I, I, you know, I'm thinking chain might be a bit out of my budget. I don't have many tools to make chain, uh, and if I did, it would be expensive. It takes a lot of time to make chain mail. But I can, I... I can make a... Piece of hide armor out of uh, some furs and pelts from the huntress herself, if that would please you. I I'd, I'd appreciate it. How uh, how much would that run? Would you say? Judging by the time, the the huntress recommending you, and because you look down on your luck, quite a few bad scars that are fresh. It's been a shit couple of days. Eight gold pieces. Aye, I'm happy with that. I'll hand over uh, eight gold. Yeah. She takes it and counts it and checks it, the mint on them just to make sure. I always like to make sure. I have no problem. I wouldn't believe the amount of people that try to trick the orc lady, thinking I am stupid. Just pockets the coins in her large thick apron hey, come back in a few days and I will have it ready all right uh, do you happen to sell shields as well hey. I was hoping that I might pick up a shield in home I don't have anything in that line I'm not a a full-fledged armorer I make things out of mostly leather or pelts Would you happen to know anybody in town that uh, might make our, uh, shields? The, the only person I would know of that it springs to mind would be the Knight Armorer. Uh, she is very much probably out with your budget. But if you want the best shield in this part of uh, Mitris, she will have the perfect thing for you. 
Well, it might not hurt to, you know, go check just in case. You will find her at the top of the hill. It's a very large smithy with the storefront. Yeah. You'll see it a mile away. It's definitely not as grand as uh, my humble little home. But she does good work. I, I, I mean, personally, I tend to prefer the humble forges, places mm. like this. Yeah. Tend to find good craftsmen work here. It is always the nicest place, but I do have dreams to expand my trade to some apprentices. Show them the way of developing diagrams to craft. Perhaps even rivaling even the good rains. But that will never happen. Big dreams for a small town girl. I say small. It doesn't hurt to, it doesn't hurt to dream. You no. Know, you work towards it. You never know what you might accomplish. I never dream too big. But I'll let you go. I will get onto your armor once I finish this sword. Alright, I'll see you then. I wish you the best of luck in achieving your dreams. Well, I hope for you to have a good time in your life as well. And Henry will start heading towards the door and stop just before opening. I One more question. Uh, there doesn't happen to be anybody that sells maps in town. And she just sort of smiles with that sort of paying look. Just like, I think maps are very much out of your price range, my friend. But if you want to speak to them, they are on the top of the hill. Uh, I do not know their name, but I know there is a map maker in town. Well, thank you very much. I'll go and... I don't even know how much maps go for normally, but I'll go and check. It doesn't hurt. Very well. And then uh, I'll open the door and head out. Yeah. And you close the door and the, the cold air just sort of sweeps that heat away from you for a bit. It's like, whew. Yeah. So do you head to the tavern or heading elsewhere? Uh, are they still, I don't know. While I was doing that, are they still across the way? Because if they're across the way, I'll probably just go let them know that I'm going to go up the hill and I'll meet them in the end. Like. Mm -hmm. okay. I will return shortly. Meet your calls. Too soon. Would you guys have stayed there or would you guys have taken off? No, we probably would have waited outside. Or at least I would have. But no. Yeah, we'll give you a few minutes. Alright, well, I'll come back to you guys then and say, uh, yeah. alright, well, in a couple of days I gotta pick up armor, but it's bought and be a bit more protected then. And there's a shop, there are a couple of shops up on top of the hill that I'd like to go visit. Said there's a map maker in town, might be nice to try to get a hold of a map, build a, you know, keep you in their expenses. And uh, there's a, a sh somebody that makes shields. I'd like to get a shield, or at least see how much they're going for. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah, should be fun. Are you both, uh, or all three of you, are you headed back to the inn? Should I meet you just back? That yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, at least some of the fatigue from the journey off us. Besides, I got thinking to do. Alright. Well, I'll catch up with you later then. Oh! Spitz. I don't... By the way, I don't know... Uh, actually, before you even say this. Does Henry know what kind of girls you're in? <laughs> does she know what kind of girls Spitz likes, huh? Do I know? This hasn't shown that much interest in women, but he does see, but he does um like women who are you know tough. 
Okay. So yeah, I will tell you that. A bit like Bruiser Jane, but less scary. Spitz? Yeah, you know, at some point, you should go inside the... Go over to that shop. There's a fine looking orcish woman in there. Might be just your type. Uh, I keep my eye out for her, but uh, I ain't looking for her, nothing right now. I ain't got the result moon through like half of the continent. Well, I figured I'd just let you know, you know? Yep, I appreciate you looking out for me, Henry. But for now. I think I'll be going, uh, I'll be going stag for a while. Hey, probably the same. <laughs> so, the rest of you head to the Blooming Rose, I'm assuming? Bar Henry yep. and Bright, who's now in mm. uh, a jail cell. Yeah, I'll help you right. Lighten up. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure. So you all enter into this very comfortable establishment, and you see the hulking Leonin and the elderly Tabaxi Babushka uh, at the bar. Do you hand in your weapons to the cloakroom? Mm. Oh, so they ask for our weapons. Yeah, yep. you know all that. If it's just to reduce the chance of fighting. You are handed yeah, a as token. Soon, as soon yeah. as we walk, I'll point to the rules that are hanging there. I suppose I'll look up with it and nod. They can have his knuckle dusters and his dagger. Got Spitz nose, the best weapons in the world. Ugh. Are attached to his arms. Hmm. They'll take them too if needs be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get a cleric to fix you right up. He's just sitting over stumps. <laughs> uh... Good news is if you are at any point itching for a fight, there is a fighting pit somewhere near the square. Yes, but well, I'm not. Uh, that might be a scene we're checking out one of these days. Depends how long we're here, though. Because we're leaving tomorrow or the day after. Might have broke my time. Even then. I get myself back into fighting shape. Well, it definitely seems like a nice and respectful town. Yeah, the place is nice and, um... Yeah, it's a uh, nice enough here. It's nice and orderly. It makes me wonder what the fires are gonna look like though, because uh, the best fires down the pit and I near are, are mean cusses. Now you not sure you can get much of this round here. We'll see. Okay. I'm sure that you'll find someone to your standards. Be that romantically or combat. <laughs> I demand romance by combat. Dude, I can't wait until you walk in and then she's your first opponent. And I'm like, it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> kiss, well, kiss, fall like in love. Well, before I start pitching <laughs> out of character, I would like to at least make it to level 2 so that I have some moxie to work with. But it's good to note that there's one here because we can come back to them. That's, yeah. The town is the town is designed to bring you to the next level. By the way, wink. To what? Right, I right. Hear you. This town is designed to bring you to the next level. What, what was that? Did you guys hear something on the wind? Ah, <sighs> bitches. By uh, the way, while we're here, again, our affairs in order, and getting some rest. Should keep an eye out for other opportunities. Unless y'all want to join me in a five bits. That'd be a good way to spend the evening at least. I might come down and watch you fight at one point. Firstly, I'd like to rinse myself of this smock and hopefully get myself some new clothes. See, vacuum. Just a bath or bathing. 
Yeah, I think after the acid rain, I could use some new threads. There's like little like Espitz will like look down at like his um dark common clothes. Yeah, there's like holes in them now and like. Yeah. Well, at least it didn't ruin my jerking. Oh, by the way, what I wanted to ask earlier, are we... Do we all want separate rooms, or are we doing two rooms split again? I have no problem with shared rooms. Do you? I had no problems last time. <coughs> yeah, no Sorry. reason not to share rooms then. Save us a bit of money, cause... Well, we don't know how much that we'll need to set up. A lot two more than we have right now. There's a two silver per room. I assume for night as well. Then it's a... Uh... <laughs> it's best we go uh, split rooms. Uh, same as usual, you and Karn are in one, me and Henry in the other. Seems reasonable. No questions for me. Alright, looks like we uh, got a plan. Mm -hmm. It'll be a few days for uh, Henry's ar for Henry's armor is done, so... Might as well enjoy a little bit of time out of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, let's we'll, uh, find a table. Sure, there's plenty of tables. Depends on where you want to go. You can go up onto the mezzanine, or you can go stay on the ground floor near the bar. Probably the ground floor near the bar for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, that's less walking. And number two, bar. Spit. <laughs> I imagine Spitz is very much. Spitz is the kind of person who prefers um more. He's used to more communal, like you know. Drinking and eating. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So, Rowing I'm, elbows. I'm assuming Lucius is the one approaching Vankin? Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. See him just cracking an egg into a large tankard of beer and just sliding it to someone that's looking kind of wobbly. <laughs> just taking their money from them and they're just sort of drunkenly left. <laughs> Turn. Well, you're back. Yes, my compatriots have uh, taken to the idea of uh, getting two rooms here. Right. Because we will probably be here for at, at least a few days. Mm hmm. Well, let's uh, do silver a room for a night. Uh, we do do a little, little offer. A week is just a gold instead of gold and four silver. So if you want to stay for a little bit longer. Well, I'm not entirely sure how long we want to stay or if we want to get back on the road as quickly as possible. Because our current plan is to make it to Bathy. Oh, you haven't heard the news? The news? Yeah. Must have been on the road for some time. Or well, the news just hasn't made it down to you guys yet. Uh, we, we spent the last few days or so in the forest. Right. Well, as far as I've heard on the grapevine, uh, sort of, I've heard that uh, Novarians have been spotted on the border near Vatha, coming down the Eyeball River. On a boat. So, I'll stay clear there just in case. Uh, definitely news. You're telling me. That's not far away from here. Yes, means the war is getting ever closer. Yeah. I don't want my tavern going up in flames because of some hoity toity emperor man. No offense. 
It been taken. I I have no hand in any of this. Damn, hope not. I kicked you out ages ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Two rooms for just a night from now. We'll pay when you come back. I'll go ahead and pay for our two nights. All right. That's uh, that's eight silver. Yep. Give me eight silver. All right. Take eight silver. It's just down. You hear a safe just clicking away. Two brass keys handed out to you. The rooms are up in the attic, so just take the stairs all the way up to the top. And the next room is just right below it. Can't miss it. Thank you very much. Anything else I can do you for? A meal, a drink? Uh, yes, I'd say that I can pay to it, and I'd probably do good with a meal and a, a nice strong drink. Well, I can do you strong. Depends on what kind of meal you're after. I'll look back over my shoulder towards uh, Spits and Corner. Uh, what kind of meals are you wanting? Well, I prefer something. Uh, actually, what time of day is it now? It's about middle of the afternoon, give or take. Um, yeah, I'd be hungry by now. If we got some heavy, I'd be down for that. Something filling. Right. Something heavy. Something filling. And for yourself. Uh, I'll, I'll go with whatever you suggest. Alright. You did say you were coming here with four to five people. Was the other one... Held up by something? Uh, one of them is currently going to check out a store for a shield and something else. I cannot recall. Alright. He just turns around and says, Hey, Ma! Whip him up that boy or something good. And she just turns around. Will do. And heads around in the, the back. And maybe about 20 minutes later, she comes back with a platter it's quite wide and slides it across the side of the desk and a servant pretty much picks it up and takes it over to your table puts it down opens it up and there are three big plates of food that look to be made out of meat potatoes uh, brown gravy onions there's some peas uh, lots of like roasted vegetables and then uh Whatever drinks you want served, will be served alongside it. All right, that's beer. Um, what kind of vegetables? Mostly parsnips, carrots. You got some uh, uh, aubergine, I suppose you would say, eggplant, pretty much. Uh, yep, I'm just checking my minutia list here. And asparagus. Are they all? Are they all root vegetables? I should say this: Are any of them leaf vegetables? Leaf vegetables? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think aubergine is a leaf vegetable. It's not like lettuce or spinach. Oh, good then. Spitz will clean his plate. Because, yes, you Spitz would... does not like leaf vegetables. You would hurt old Babushka's... So no lettuce or spinach. <laughs> so no lettuce or spinach for him. Root no. vegetables, you will eat. On part because, well, I imagine you don't have much choice on the streets. And two... Well, I like root vegetables. So, in terms of beverage, you can get us one. I'll go for beer. What kind of beer? Half orcs. They don't get carded at bars. Hey, yes, sir. He just. <laughs> Vankin just looks at him and goes, you know what, I'm going to send you over a nice little selection. 
my personal choice. And just pulls out some bottles and they just drip with condensation. They're super cold, slice of wood. And uh, you, the rest of you. Uh, I'll take just a simple glass of wine, please. Alright, we've got some Sancerre Reserve from 1548. That's quite an expensive bottle. We got Sancerre Port. We got some. Uh, we got some other things. We've got some El Nathian Frost wine. We got um, got some Anirian. Uh, they call bog wine. It's actually all right. It's not too bad. And we've got some Elysian rye wine. It's orange, not red, which is weird. And uh, got the house plunk. I'll tie the house plunk. All right. Your face scrunches up. It's probably because it turned to vinegar. I'm not a brewer by any stretch of the imagination. Well, it's got to be uh, better than fish wine. Oh, no, you've not been monitored, have you? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, that tar drink all that stuff. That's the nasty. And he just pulls out this big goblet. <laughs> and he's like, you need to just tell me when. And just and it keeps filling and filling and filling. <laughs> it gets yeah, about half in and it keeps going. I'll, I'll tell him to stop when it's about like a quarter full. Yeah, yeah. and you tell him to stop and it keeps going. He just keeps looking at you. I need to get rid of it somehow. <laughs> he fills it almost to the top. At least like maybe a tiny amount at the top. Just hands it to you. And for your uh, little friend over there, the half orc, it's not been given a boatload of beer. I I ordered the beer. What kind of beer you want? You just want a selection to? Nah, just off the top. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess I'll think of some. <clears throat> He just walks to like the five taps he has of beer. He's like, he just mix everything together. Fuck you. I'll tell you the truth. I uh, have no idea what Amy's brands are. Exactly. You just sort of. Just uh, pour me your favorite. All right. So as you won. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, about a flag at birth. <laughs> I got two kinds of flagons. I've got a dwarf size flagon, or I've got a, the biggest one. The gut buster, we call it. Dwarf size. Excuse me for a minute while Spitz makes a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> How big? I get the gut buster. Alright, so uh, dwarven size and a gut buster. Right. Pours. Tanker, it's already foaming and like well he puts it and he goes around the back and comes out with one that's about the size of a shotgun. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be here a while. About five minutes later he goes and he's like, Oh I'm just pouring out air now, so I need to go change the barrel. And he puts it down and you don't even see the head, and if you look down it, it's only halfway full. The back of the minute disappears and you use your comes back on after a few a couple of minutes and he just goes right. with that big of a flag and wouldn't it be easier to just take one of the barrels and put a straw in it the hell's a straw I'm not gonna put some cereal plant inside my barrel you man and finishes off but Five minutes of pouring. <laughs> yeah, like a Spitz looks at uh, Lucius confused. Why'd you want to put a hay into a do a drink? Not, See, this man gets not, it. Not not straw as in hay. A straw is a cylindrical tube that you put in certain drinks to. Like. He certainly Spitz is the fancy man, yeah, isn't he? Spitz eyes wide for recognition. Oh, you're talking, uh, them drinking straws. Yeah, Rudrick used to use those sometimes. 
We definitely ain't from the same town, are we? And it slides this behemoth of a flag next to the... In comparison, like... That's the size of a dwarven flag. And the other one's maybe a little bit bigger. <laughs> as, as he slides at the table, just tilts. Yeah, it's, it's a four foot tall flagon. It's big. <laughs> Fuck you, Kenny. <laughs> a hail as a cylinder. It's, looks at you all. Well, yeah. what I'm going to say, uh, my half orc friend, is. You finish that whole gutbuster, or I'll, I'll fucking give you two for free. If you can finish it. Without dying, of course. The last person to die, I'd have to sign the death certificate. So. Good luck. Yep. Spitz yep. has been challenged. Wisdom saving throw. The challenge shuck. He, he, uh, he, do he doesn't take the bait. Ah, uh, doesn't take it. Oh, well, it's going to be a hell of an expensive fucking beer. <laughs> do, do you have a sort of hall of fame for this drink? I do, actually. We hang it up under the mezzanine over there. You can't quite see it. We cover it with a curtain just to make sure people don't uh, hunt down the others that beat it and try to learn their secrets. God damn it. P people are definitely hey, competitive. Hey, let's hold strong. He will, yep, he'll just, um, <laughs> he'll ignore the promise of easy glory, and he'll down the whole thing. I mean, he just sort of <laughs> turns... Wait, then you're doing it. Wait, he's doing it? Well, he's not uh, trying to, well, I should say he is... He's not trying to finish the whole thing. Essentially, work his way through it over, like, the better part of a day. Uh, All right, yeah, that's He's not going to go... Well, you said then, chug, then chug, you're going to down it, and I was like, oh, shit, he's doing it. All right. Nah. Nah, well, if, see, if he did that, he'd die, because that's a see, lot of food. When it comes to challenges that are, like, risky or stupid, I have Spitz make wisdom saving throws. Yeah, the just, DC is 15. You just see Spitz slowly tanking it down. Well, that's 50 gold. I'm saving. Wait, right. 50? Yeah, 50. Wow. That's how much that drink costs. You don't know that. <laughs> well, good thing I'm not paying that. Yeah. I think he's scrubbing the plates. Right? Well, uh, sorry, yeah, my Spitz, cat yeah, friend. Spitz You're Spitz the like, head ten. Spitz stops for a minute. I wish he had told me that earlier. Well, I thought the hell you would want to finish it. Sorry, repeat that, uh, Bill. Thought you were gonna damn finish it. If you can afford it. I got a few jobs that you can do to pay it all. I'm sure you're a bunch of handy fellows. You've made it through the wilderness. Got a couple of jobs that could pay it all. Yeah, Spitz in response will just reach his coin purse. Pull up 25 gold. Just put on the counter. You surprised the hell out of me. But I can cover it. Yes, sir. But you were talking jobs now, so uh, might as well talk with me. Run around, and takes the 25 and checks the mint on it, and all right. Well, uh, depends on what side of job you want to do. Got a couple of handy things, a couple of more problematic things, or uh, just a simple clean the damn place up kind of job. What are these problematic, bleh, problematic things? Well, uh, we've been running out of uh, supplies recently. Seems that someone's after our prized possession of a very particular supply of wine that we get from the Sancerre Vineyard, and just up north in Elysia. Someone's been hijacking it, making me lose a lot of goddamn money. We we'll find out who's doing it. Can you put a stop to it? No. I'll pay you in any bottle of wine you damn want. Uh, wine's more a uh, licorice thing. Well, you don't have to drink it. You can sell it on for about a hundred gold. Uh, now I'm paying attention. Yeah, I saw your uh, tusks perk up when I said that. <laughs> tusks perk up. <laughs> Makes my whiskers tingle too. Every single one of those cards contains a hundred bottles. 
I ain't losing any more of that. All right, since you're tossing, <clears throat> since you're tossing us our way, you got a plan, or you just want us to do our thing? You look like a bunch of guys that can handle themselves. I've not hung up the sword a long time ago, so whatever the new thing is to do now, I don't know, kidnap, breaking some people's knees for information, I don't care. Just make sure no one traces back to me. Yeah, I just like looked this. around at his mother. <laughs> it's like she didn't hear. It. She's deaf anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so it gives like a Lucius a uh, look. A uh, licorice sounds a. Uh, that sounds mighty good to me. Got to track down a couple of thieves. Eh, not unusual with the, well, with the finger around. The hell you talking you about see? a finger? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's a uh, little politics. Don't matter now. Yeah, I don't give a damn about politics. Mm. It goes to go serve other people. Plus you to be. What do you think, licorice? It's a lot of money. Well, simply for finding out who's the cause behind this is, doesn't seem too difficult. Especially for a couple of bottles of wines that we can sell for a very nice amount of money. Yeah, but we make some money. You just gotta work that uh, brain and silver tongue of yours. And don't worry, if one of them gets fresh, I'll take care of that. Well, me and Henry will take care of that. I'll try and get him in on it. How about you, boss? <coughs> I might be able to help. Not sure entirely how. We'll figure something out as we're looking into. Make some money. And uh, I won't get suckered again by another 25 gold drink. Oh, is the beer at least good, Mil? It's fantastic beer. It's the best beer you've ever had. It's not just Without warm, that. flat beer from yeah. Gertrude's. Yeah, like that he that he just like opens his big thing and keeps drinking from it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, maybe I wasn't getting tricked. This is fantastic. Yeah, better damn be up at a damn fortune for every barrel. Place makes good money. Maybe you boys should move into the tavern business if you get the chance. Good money to be made. Speaking of which, how's the wine? Well, I always wanted to learn how to brew. Well, at least it teaches something, but I ain't. The best. Uh, you need to talk to a master vintner or brewer like that. Uh, the wine, that's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm out, yeah, that's something I have to add to the list of things I gotta learn. Uh, definitely point you in the direction of some pretty damn good masters of the craft. If it needs to be. Yeah, that's what I'll give that a nod. Alright. I'll let you, I'll give you yep. that information if you get the job done. Alongside your payment of a fine bottle of wine. Yeah, the, the drink, you said, the drink was 25 gold, right, man? It was 50. Okay, I have, wow, okay, I can 25 from my pocket then. Well, I, I did it, buddy. You, now I'm broke. You paid half of it. At least. Any? Oh, I'm about to lose half do? of it. I mean, well, it sucks, you know but do? you know. There you go. Yeah, man. I do chalk it up to um. Yep. Hey, I'll chalk it up to Spitz. Just like, hey, Spitz will know better to ask for the damn price next time. I mean, as soon as you pulled out the dagger, Cause... you should have went. Can I afford that? <laughs> yep. Next time he'll learn. Thankfully, this time he could afford it. Yeah. This but time. next time he'll know. I had sixty gold. I had sixty one gold. Now I have eleven. And if you cut a few silvers. The wine isn't sour, it's not sweet. It's just dry wine. It doesn't have much flavor. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's nothing great. It's kind of fruity. Really? It's just not flavorful at all. It's just wine. 
he did say he wasn't. He wasn't expert. No, he's not <laughs> yeah. a, a master of vintner. Uh, it, yeah. After a couple of sips or so, when there's a bit more of a gap, I'll just pour a little bit of the amber wine that I have, mix it in with it. Okay. Give it a bit more flavor. So you're gonna ruin the amber wine. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Hey, he does notice you're doing it. It's not so. <laughs> no, you could just ask for another glass of wine. You don't feel like it's gonna hurt my feelings or anything. No, no, I, I paid for the wine. I'm going to drink the wine. All right. Uh, that's the spirit. As as Fitz continues working through this big ass, like. Oh, yeah, how far am I down it by now? Maybe about a tenth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll be nursing it for like... When you get to half, it'll be a con save. <laughs> so throughout the night, as you're plowing through this thing, I'll need a con save at some point, just to hold the liquid. Yeah, yeah I'm pouring more of my one. wine, and I'm just like, I, Spitz, I'm also here for your moral support at this point. <laughs> No, you don't have to finish it, but you did pay a lot of money for it, so. Yeah, it's fantastic beer, but if I pay 50 gold for this, I'm going to finish it. I yeah. don't care if they stuff it in, uh, stuff it in half the uh, water skins I got in that cart over there. I will finish this darn thing. Well, I respect your tenacity. Well, no. I gotta go serve other people, and I'll speak to you boys later about the job, as far as I know. Yeah. And I'll wait for your friend. Yeah. You better show up before uh, Mother closes up the kitchen, otherwise he ain't getting fed until the morning. And you pencil. off. So, Henry, you're making your way up to the top of the town. Alright. You come to a very nice open sort of circle at the top and you see large buildings decorated around they're nicely painted some of them are a little bit different like sort of bluish uh sort of uh, aqua colored oh, right. uh, the uh, you see a few signs you see a large smithy that's about three stories tall with a shop front you see a tall tower that's uh, hexagonal in shape that teeters off to the top and sort of juts out makes a bigger head there's a large barracks uh, quite a few homes that are full of pretty wealthy people you definitely look out of your element here uh she what'd she say to look for for the shop for the blacksmith the shop front yeah. I see it anywhere yeah it's pretty big it's three stories tall with a big shop front that's very well decorated and has an anvil sign just hanging excellent i will walk in okay uh, you walk in and you're greeted to several fully plate armored knights who just sort of turn their head and look at you through their visors and then a woman just sort of comes in, she's got tape around her neck and a few needles and nails, and she's like, Come in, come in! And she looks at you. Well, aren't you kind of thin? What can I do you for? I... Well, I was wondering if uh, you sold shields. I was looking to buy a shield. Ah, yes, come, come, come. How was along? She is a, a elderly halfling, sort of elderly, she's so middle age. Uh, totally not based off of Edna Mode from Incredibles. Excellent. <laughs> no capes. No capes. No capes on the shield. All right. No. None of these knights have capes. They don't even have drapery. <laughs> no capes. And she shows. She just pulls back a very grandiose curtain, and you see a, walls of armor. Shields and beautiful weaponry. Come take your pig, dear. Aye, it's all fine. 
Crops didn't work. Yeah, it's yeah. Come, come, pick your favorite. What coat of arms do you serve? Oh, I'm not a knight. Then why are you here? I was told that you sold shields. Yes, I do for knights. I'm the knight's armorer. in town. I didn't know you only sold the knights. Well, they're the ones that can afford my work. And then the last come, I'll show you anyway. It just takes you a, a wall of shields that she has made and some that she has acquired that are very different and very cultural uh, designs from different walks of life. What is it you're after in particular? I don't, as much as I'd like, uh, you know, a fine shield. I think in my current price range, I'm just looking for more a simple metal shield. Help me on my journeys. Do you happen to have one that maybe someone sold to you? Something along those lines. She just sort of stares at you and... Ooh. I'd appreciate it very much. And uh, you offended her. Can I do a persuasion check? Yeah, you can make a persuasion check at disadvantage. Because you're not meant to be here. You know, the life. Well, eight's not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, she ain't no Tybal Brim. She doesn't welcome people that don't belong. <laughs> she just looks at you. I will take a look around the back. If I don't find it, I expect you out of here. All right, I got no problem with that. Next time, come if you've got a damn knighthood. Heads around the back and comes out with a metal dinner plate. There we go. Like, all right, what kind of metal dinner plate, though? Like, one that's enough to cover your face. <laughs> so, like, a buckler? No, like, just a plate. It's not got any straps around it. It's just a dinner plate. Like, it, it's what to eat food off of. It gets hit once you're... It's broken. Uh, well, are you sure that'll work as a shield? Again, some things, yes. Otherwise, just eat your food off of it. And how much is it? Five gold. All right, well, I'll be back if I become a knight. Well, you better. I'll go. Thank Shoo. you for your time. Shoo. And Henry will head out. Uh, and look for the cartographer. It's the big tower that's got a big map sign on it. All right, I'll head inside. And it stares all the way to the top. Ship. Well, let's get started. Yeah, I'll start climbing the it. stairs. You start climbing the stairs and you keep going, keep going, and you feel like you're Your walking. Your thighs are going to be amazing. You keep feeling like you're walking up and walking up, and you can see almost like the sun setting in the distance, and you feel like you're not getting any closer to the top. The skyline of the town has not moved up or down. You're just walking in place. It's the fucking Mario 64 Bowser level stairs. If I look down, does it look it's like I've made it. progress? You look down, and you're about 10 steps from the front door. <laughs> All right. I'll look around then. Make a perception check. It's not really hard. There is a big bell that says ring for service. I'll walk back down those ten just, steps that I spent like ten minutes walking up. He just and then ring the bell. He just, ding, ding. And you just hear like a very distinct sound uh, coming from a brick in the wall, and it's, it sounds kind of like this. And just, just, what the fucking hell is that? Hello. He he hello. Hello? 
And I'm upstairs. Right. Are you talking to me then? Magic? Makes sense to me, I suppose. Uh, do you happen to be the cartographer that settles maps? Well, I damn hope so. I've been doing it for 40 years. Come, come I... upstairs. So, come look at the maps. And you see the stairs start to move on their own. They're like almost like an escalator. <laughs> rotating. Oh, that would have made that so much easier. Yeah, because when someone doesn't ring the bell, walks up, it moves downwards <laughs> to stop you. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll see you eventually. Seeing a few. Step onto the stairs. You step on and you just start moving up on your own. And you get up there in about two minutes. And it's a, a door that just sort of opens up like a trap door. And you're just pulled up straight onto the, the main platform and push slightly forward. And the trap door closes. And you hear gears moving the stairs back down. And in front of you is a sort of middle aged wood elf. You know, like a you know, long, wispy, dark beard, and the hair's pulled back with a widow's peak. It's starting to appear slightly. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Turns around, big goggles on, there, multiple <laughs> magnifiers. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> How do you do? I'm assuming you're the one that rang. I am the one that rang. Uh, how do I mean, you do? Honestly, the past couple of days have been kind of shit, but it's a nice city. And, I've, you know, we just arrived. I've liked oh. it so far. Good, good. There's a strange woman selling only to knights that tried to sell me a dinner plate. Oh. That was interesting. Oh, she's a waste of time. Don't bother yourself with her unless you're a knight. So that's her, that's her niche, I suppose. And I sell maps, one and all, but uh, you don't look like the sort of person that usually comes here for a map. Can you read one? I uh, know how to, you know, generally look around a map. I'm sure I'm not quite as skilled at reading one as, you know, you, who spent quite a bit of time making them. I spent a lot of time making them, indeed. Now, it depends. What sort of map are you after? Well, I don't really, uh, I don't really need one that's, you know, too, too detailed. Just kind of a general map of the area with, you know, maybe a few of the bigger cities marked on it to, you know, help as I move around. Something that, you know, has space that I could maybe mark a few locations on if I come across something interesting. And so... Let's see what I have. And starts fishing through these barrels of maps. And just, no, no. Just pulls this curtain. There's a massive map on the back wall. It's wall to wall, ceiling to floor. Definitely not that. that how long did it even take you? Ten years, actually. Not great. That's very impressive, though. Well, if you're wanting to buy it, the wall costs 16,000 gold if you're wanting it. <laughs> not in, uh, you know, I'm not into buying walls. Or That's just a little bit out of my budget. Looking. Do you have a finance option? <laughs> Can I pay you in pity? <laughs> Can I just point out that a wall would make for a great shield? Yeah, if you could lift it. <laughs> I have that would be a wall I would be afraid to get hit, because that map is expensive. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a map of Gagar, it's a map of the known world, so it's got Novaria as well, and all of the Empire's colonies. <laughs> it's huge. It doesn't have Andral or anything, because they haven't been spotted yet. Or Novaris hasn't discovered them yet. So. Not mainstream. No, because it will never be mainstream knowledge. Excellent. Andral is basically hidden. Yeah. Now, let's all move to Andral so that we never have to worry about Navarian army. 
you'll never be able to get there unless you hit an arcane storm it takes you there uh... Yoshi roll some more weather <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how that works he, he sort of fishes about for a few maps he pulls one out and he goes this might do and he unfurls it and it's a map of Kagara and it's beautifully detailed very well painted as well with all the cities and roads and forests mapped and this is the cheapest one I sell unfortunately how much is it? it's a thousand gold alright well I definitely don't have that yes I uh, apologize it's not usual I have to make such general maps well that's alright I don't suppose, uh, well, I'm sure you're quite busy, but I don't suppose it might be a bit cheaper. Could I, like, hire you to make a very plain map? Depends on what areas you're wanting to cover. L you know, like I said, just very general Kagara, you know, general outline of it, where the mountains are, the forest in the middle, and then a couple of the, the bigger cities. Like Tyberton or Vath and the Neil. Besides right. that, I don't need much else. I plan on, you know, marking a few locations. I like yeah. to mine, so it's good to find and mark good places. Well, I need to know what your price range is. Uh, well, at the <laughs> well, at the moment, uh, the most that I could do right now is maybe 10, 12 gold. And he just sort of looks at you and he, there's almost a pained look, but it's more out of like sympathy. He's like, <laughs> get the fuck out of my shop. <laughs> I, I can make you something. It won't be fantastic, but it'll be enough to tell you where you need to go. So if there's only a few locations you want marked, I will easily hand you a blank map and you can chart it yourself. Aye, it sounds perfect. Very well. Come back here in a week and I will have it ready. What scale do you want it to? Uh, well, I don't know much about map scaling. But... Well, I'm assuming it will not be a wall sized or carved into a table. So I'll make no, it... Something that, I, something that I could, you know, unfurl and look at on the road. You know, while I'm traveling, maybe. Oh, very well. And what's the name? All of the map, I don't know. Of you! <laughs> oh! <laughs> and my name's Henry. Pleasure to meet you. Henry... what? Henry Dalvis. Pleasure. I'm Othlim. I don't have a last name. But... Pleasure. And he sort of writes down your name on the back of the bit of parchment. It's about yay big. That would do. Well, maybe one day when you come into a little bit of money, you come back to me. I'm probably the only map maker around right now. After all, the rest of us have been hired to go to the wars. I, if I tend to make some money along the way, which, you know, is a goal. I'll definitely come back if I'd be needing a, any maps. Hmm? Keeps the business I, alive. Who knows, if I get enough, I might come back to buy that wall of yours. I really, it is quite an impressive map. I'd be more confused as how you're going to ship it out, but... Oh. Handcart. <laughs> he just turns and looks at you. Excuse me? <laughs> Hold on, I need a sec. You <laughs> <laughs> legit need some minute. Alright. Calm blue it, ocean. We uh, got this. A uh, hand cart. I said hand cart. Aye. That's how we got all this shit from near to here. Like, as in a, 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 days through the woods. a wooden handcart used for tra traipsing around hay barrels? 
Oh, it's quite a sturdy cart, you might be surprised. We got anvils and ore, you, all kinds of shit in you, there. You'd be essentially traipsing around someone that's fit for the throne on a cart full of dung. What the hell? No, well, the cart would be empty, of course. Uh, I, uh, you got a fit a wall in it, I can't have other I things. will see you in a week. Mr. Dalvis, <laughs> and he just clicks his fingers, and you just feel like yourself being pulled down the stairs. Wait, I haven't paid yet. How much was it? It's gonna be twelve gold. And you do see, like, somehow, as you've traveled down, you see that the stone has manifested almost like a tube at the bottom, like a little stopper at the bottom, so the map will just shoot down, saving you coming all the way back up. When I get down there, I guess I'll... Uh, <laughs> Show up it! <laughs> when, when I get down to the bottom, I'll just... I guess, like, look around the room and kind of, like, try to talk out. I don't know if the, the brick still talks back. Be like, are you... Should I just put the money in the tube, then? You just hear it rumbling through the tube. Good day, Mr. Dalvis! <laughs> <laughs> but do you want the money in the tube? I see. You'll pay me when it's finished, Mr. Dalvis. Please go. All right. Let's see. I know we can all walk out. This door, in, as soon as the door closes, you're... <laughs> What's about make your name? Othlum. Oh, I can't spell his fucking name. Othlum. Sorry. Strange people living in a city. <laughs> At this point, it's not because he needs a week to make the map, he needs a week to just gather himself. Oh, I <laughs> yep. fucking spelt his name wrong. He needs a week to get the map together. Six, six of those days will be spent drinking. Yep. I was so quick on it, too. How are you gonna ship it? Handcart? <laughs> <laughs> like this. You sir, have been around me too long. I want to just see that how fast you're going to get robbed of that map. I look, man. Henry's a simple guy. All right, he's got that minus one in. He's a simple man. He asks questions about big words that he's never heard, and when you ask him how he's going to move something heavy, well, he's got a handcart. His boss has got a hand. I actually kind of hate you yeah. that you didn't ask what niche means. Fuck, I didn't think about it. He would have just went, <laughs> Good day, Mr. Dalvis. I would have. He, he should have went, Good day, Mr. Dalvis, and just sent you down. What I like to think is those stairs are like that one scene in Casper with the fucking, like, <laughs> the, the, the chair. Oh, I know you're talking. Yeah, uh, that's what I always envision is uh, Othlum's Tower. Two comments to make to this map maker. Mm -hmm. First off, I would have said brick by brick instead of by hand part. Because it's a wall. Walls are made of bricks. And secondly, made of rocks. can it make adventuring maps? No, it doesn't. He's a cartographer. He's a map maker. He makes big yeah, maps for people. I know, but surely he's got some apprentice making adventure maps. No. Arthur no. is a, a recluse. In other words, oh, every adventure oh. Kagara just stumbles in a general direction till they find something to do. If they, like, Othlum makes basically war maps, essentially. And he's stayed away from the war because he's, he's hidden himself away with the stairs so no one can get to him. I would like to call upon the Lady Tiff. Eh, no, not a lot. Tiff probably does know this guy. Nah. She probably doesn't know him, but if she's being pointed at him... Oh, she would well, just, like, she would just dispel magic on the stairs and walk up. <laughs> just, yeah. just, okay, here's a good question. evening. Maps are so rare and expensive. Yes. For the last two campaigns, how the hell have we been getting anywhere? Because Novaria's well, campaign, maps are cheap. David. And before David, you had Harari. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so y'all knew where everything was? Yep. Well, we yeah. lived there. The, at because that point, you the guys place. had yeah. visited us. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. We lived in the place where... Or we worked in the place where we lived, so... 
Arari was literally a messenger guy moving from town to town. Yep. So, Sim and Henry heads back to the Blooming Rose. Yep. With two uh, commissions on his back. Actually, I have one last stop to make, okay. but we actually don't probably don't need to RP this. I had to rip off part of my fucking shirt, so I just want to buy, like, another pair of common clothes. Okay. So, like, wherever in the city I can just buy common clothes. I just want to set. You can just buy them in the tavern you're in. They sell the supplies. The tavern sells clothes? Yeah. Why? The tavern has a gift shop. <laughs> they got to market somehow. That's it. Right. Just as the blooming rose, yeah. or just heart mum. That is just <laughs> blooming rose. Just Blooming Rose um, merchandise t-shirts. Kind of, yeah. Not really. It's just, it's got like the colors of the tavern stripes through it, but that's it. Alright. He's back, and I think I need to make a con save. Mm -hmm. So the question is, does Henry make it back in time to, for food? Mm. Also, how much are common clothes from the inn? Uh, a couple of copper, I believe. Mm, not copper. Damn, I, damn, I still making good progress at finishing that beer. You're halfway done. Uh, All right. Yeah. You're just like. Oh. <laughs> and then back Vankin, to it. Duncan's just like, oh, I think he's gonna do. The Caesar, uh, Henry walking. Good evening, sir. I'm assuming you're the uh, fourth member of this here party. Howdy, Henry. How'd your uh, shopping trip go? I it went all right. It went all right. There's a couple, you know, real strange, real strange people in this town. But yeah, I'm with them. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm Henry. Nice to meet you. This big ass pod hand just reaches out. Nice to meet you. I'm Vankin, proprietor of this fan establishment. I'll shake his hand. Mm -hmm. Big, fucking, muscly grip. Pleasure to meet you. Now, you better get your food in before uh, her mother closes up the kitchen. I, I'll, uh, I guess I'll just have uh, whatever the special is tonight. And, and uh, a meat if you got kind of major one we got uh we got eight taps of the stuff i'll i'll I shout think... to henry don't get the big flagon like spits here it's 50 gold oh no that's the only one i've got don't worry about that right are you are you all right spits was that fell to the top damn right it was spits burped <laughs> They'll say, a lot. <laughs> I'm working on it, Henry. I'm working on it. I so, pay 50 gold for this thing. I'm going to finish it. Duncan pulls out uh, a fine glass goblin. Kind of meet you after. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I was very aware that there were multiple types of meat. Different meteries. I guess I just... Different beer. I guess I'll just go off of your recommendation then. <sighs> Judging by your accent, I know exactly where you're from, and uh, I have something to remind you a little bit at home. And just reaches towards the tap and then reaches underneath the, the counter and pulls out an old dusty bottle that's cold. And just uncorks it and it's still good. And pours out, and it's blue. And just starts pouring it out and just. Aye, that looks like mead that was made with the my mom and pa's bees, honey. Blue bees. Meadows. From the Meadows Meadery. I that'll remind me of home, all right. Yeah. I grew up with them. I could tell by the accent. Meadows used to come here all the time on holiday. Well, next time I see them, I'll let them know that you're all right. Oh, it's not me. I was a kid when they came. It was uh, mother. Uh, she used to, and uh, I think she uh, brought up. She was brought up with them. 
Well, either way, I'm sure they'll be happy to know that you're both are doing well out here. I don't appreciate the award, too. Anyway, and it's just Ma, give him the works. It's one of it's one of uh, the Meadows boys. And she's turning. I know what to give them. And disappears into the kitchen, and the, the sign just goes up. If the food is no longer being served, and she comes back with all the leftovers on one plate, and it's stacked high. <laughs> the works. Disappear. Be a good meal tonight. Yeah. It is just a mountain of food that's just from every pot because she's trying to empty the kitchen so she can clean up. How much do I owe you? Ma! How much for the works? For the boa? And then she goes, um, Three copper. Ma, this is an Jeez. establishment that's trying to make money. Three copper. <laughs> It's going to get thrown out, Vatkin. Um, all right, three copper. Right, well, I don't know if I'd rightfully uh, be feeling all right if I paid only three copper, so how's the silver? At least you take a silver if you got it. Right, Ma's doing me out of business with this. I, I mean, looking at this food, there's no way. Three copper just wouldn't come. Here's a here's a silver for you. Yeah, he, he takes a silver and pockets it and just keeps looking around. Yeah, I I think she takes after the metal. She uses a damn scary looking slipper and it hits you. I'm big, I'm I'm beefy, but damn that thing hurts. Those slippers, there's something to fear, I tell you, in the right hands. I don't I, the army wouldn't stand it. It's just a damn generational thing or something, I don't know. I like to use my fists or my claws. That's it. But a slipper, that's beyond me. Aye. And you just hear clanking, he's like, alright, she's out of earshot, she's kind of deaf anyway, so thank you for that. Yeah. It's no problem. The thank meads are, much. meads on me. Sure your people have made it. I appreciate that. Yeah. But, uh, your boss uh, picked up a job for me, so uh, I'll speak to you in the morning. Nice and early. And, uh, get that sorted. Aye, bit of work never hurt nobody. It's a little I'll bit of work. Lift up the the huge ass plate of food and start like walking it over to the table, set it down, and start eating next to spirits. Yep. So, and the night moves on, and eventually finish your food as the tavern basically empties out. Spitz is still going at it. He's still drinking. You finish up your plate, you've got that big stuffed stomach, and Spitz just Let rounds off the last of the beer. Drink might actually be a good cliffhanger. I'm about to end it on a cliffhanger in a second. Uh, I need one last con save from Spitz. He had a better cliffhanger. Oh, I do. Yeah, you're, uh, you're holding on. You're tipsy. <laughs> Quite tipsy. Oh shit! You're still quite tipsy. <laughs> yeah, of... natural twenty. Yeah. Oh, you're not poisoned. Yeah. You're just drunk and needing sleep. Yes. You're just like, oh, you just stumble up the stairs and <laughs> down you go. But I finished it. You did finish it. <laughs> you uh, get your money back. <laughs> you get your uh, your night's sleep. Well fed, nice, comfortable feather mattresses. First time in a while, you've got a roof over your head. It's not leaking. No monsters that you know of. In the night, the weather doesn't seem to change at all. It's nice, serene, and peaceful. And as you're all days off into sleep, you find yourselves falling into a dark, cramped little jail cell the bars almost tight together and rusted small bench to lay upon and no light coming through that very small slit in the wall you just see yourself looking down into a reflection and it's not your own face but the face of bright looking back 
and the face turns to you. And no longer are you a part of Bright's vision. And you see yourself separated. And then you sink away. I feel a hand come off of your true face and drift into a voidless nothing. Sleep well. And you see a single feather floating in the void. And then flames engulfing and a banner of war appear. And we're going to end tonight's session. And we, we will return in two weeks because I am busy, unfortunately, this weekend coming. But we will return Hi. tomorrow with the Phylactery podcast pilot. Talking about characters. So it'll be good. And, uh, yes, that sucks. It's going to be cool. It. And uh, going to have to announce that we do still have our community Discord up and running. And uh, we'll hopefully get uh, things all sorted out. So I'm going to be running behind schedule for Dungeon Master's Diary, but that'll be okay. Get it sorted out. And, uh, yeah. As always, stay safe out there, adventurers. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Don't yeah. sell people dinner plates for five gold.